We are going to build a simple student management system with web application using Spring Boot, Spring Game UC, Time Leap, Spring Data JPI, and MySQL database. And I'm going to show you how to build a simple student management system application line by line coding in Eclipse STS ID. Alright, and here are the tools and technologies that we'll be using in this course. We are going to use Java 16, which is the latest release of Java as of now. And make sure that you have installed Java 16 on your machine. You can use Java 8, 11, or you know 15 as per uh, java installation on your machine but make sure that you use java 8 plus and we're going to use latest release of spring boot and spring ABC and spring data jp spring data jp internally uses hibernate as a jp provider and we're going to use a mysql database to store and retrieve the data and we are going to use time leap template engine to you know develop the view layer and we use eclipse sts id we are going to build a simple student management system application here we list all the students and then add students so let's go ahead and let's add a student here first name Ramesh last name Patari and email id Ramesh at the rate gmail.com and click on submit and there we go student is successfully added to the list students page let me add one more student here let's say Sam and uh, last name is Jadav sam at the rate gmail.com and hit submit button and there we go now let's update one of the student let's say Ramesh and let me update the first name and email id and also the last name and hit submit button and there we go student successfully updated and we have a delete button here we can delete the student let's jump into spring tools with id and let's start building student management system well in order to create a spring boot project go to the file new and then choose spring starter project and look at here this is a spring initializer website which is integrated in spring tools with id so instead of going into Spring Initializer website and creating a project over there and importing manually in Spring Tools with ID, Spring team has integrated Spring Initializer in Spring Tools with itself so that uh, we can go ahead and we can create Spring Boot project Spring, using Spring Initializer in Spring Tools with ID itself. Okay, so let's go and let's give project name as Student Management System and choose project type as Marvin here. And packaging as a jar java version 16 so java version 16 uh, is the latest as of now you can use java 11 or 8 as per your java installation on your machine and language java and i give group id as net.java guides but you can give any group id that you want and artifact id same as name of the project and description is something like student management system using spring boot and time leap Packaging as a net.javagash.sms. SMS means student management system. And once you are happy with the details, click on next. And here we have a Spring Boot version. So this is a stable and latest series of Spring Boot, which is recommended by Spring team. So let's keep this default Spring Boot version as it is. And now we're going to choose the dependencies. So let's go ahead and let's choose Spring Web Dependency. So we're going to create a Spring MVC application. So let's choose Spring Web Dependency. If you just mouse over on this dependency, you can able to read the description of this dependency. So Spring Web Dependency we use to build web application as well as Spring uh, RESTful Web Services using Spring MUC. And this dependency internally provides Apache Tomcat as a default embedded container. We're gonna use Spring Data JPA to talk with the database. So let's pick up Spring Data JPA dependency. Spring Data JPA is just an abstraction layer on top of JPA and it provides, I mean it internally uses Hibernate as a JPA provider. And we can use Spring Data JPA to reduce a lot of boilerplate code that is required to develop a DAO layer. So I highly suggest you guys to use Spring Data JPA. And next we are going to use Thymleap as a view layer. So let's go ahead and let's pick up Thymleap template engine dependency. And we are going to use MySQL database. Uh, to retrieve and store the data so let's choose mysql jdbc driver and we are going to also use spring boot uh, dev tool dependency so this dependency is very useful so whenever uh, we do some changes in our spring boot application we don't have to manually 
restart our spring boot application so this dependency will take care of you know or live reloading and configurations for announced development experience etc so once you pick up all the you know required dependencies then click on finish all right so maven will take a couple of minutes to download all the you know dependencies from the internet and we're gonna add jdk 16 to our spring boot project so for that right click on the project go to the properties and go to the build path and in a library so look at here by default java standard edition 13 is added but we are going to use uh, you know jdk 16 you can use java 11 8 or 13 as per the java installer installation on your machine but i am going to use java 16 which is the latest release of java so click on gre system library edit and alter gre so i choose jdk 16 apply apply and close okay great now once we create spring boot project next step is we're gonna you know create a, create a standard packaging structure for our spring boot project so right click on base package new and then choose package and let's go ahead and let's create a controller package here so within a controller package we keep all of our spring MUC controllers so let's go and let's create one more package and let's name it as service so we keep all of our you know service packages under service classes under service package next create one more package and let's name it as a repository so we keep all of our spring, uh, spring data jp repository under a repository package next create a one more package and let's name it as entity so we keep all jp entities inside a jp pack entity package okay uh, great so we'll create a few more packages as required uh, you know in a project development in further steps so let's keep keep these packages as of now all right once we create a packaging structure next step is uh, we need to configure mysql database uh, you know details in our spring boot project so we typically configure all you know database uh, related details in application.properties file so before configuring mysql uh, database details in our project first we need to create a database in mysql server so let's head over to mysql workbench so make sure that you have installed mysql server and mysql workbench on your machine so mysql workbench is basically a client which we use to interact with the mysql server so in order to create a database just type create a database and followed by name of the database let's say sms that is student management system and just execute this sql statement and refresh the schemas and there we go sms database is successfully created now let's go back to our sts id and go to application.properties file and here we configure mysql you know details for example just configure jdbc URL now spring dot data source dot url and just provide a property something like jdbc colon mysql so this is a standard jdbc url uh, you know format followed by localhost so here i am giving localhost because our mysql server is located on local machine okay if your mysql server is located in on other machine then you have to provide ip address of that machine here or local you know or host of that machine here okay and followed by uh, the port of this mysql database followed by name of the database that is sms and then we add a few more attributes like use ssl equal to false we are going to disable ssl and let's add a few more properties to this url that is server time zone so server time zone utc and we disable legacy date time code okay pretty simple similarly let's go ahead and let's configure database username and password spring dot data source dot username so in my case the username is root and let's similarly configure password 
dot password root so in my case my database username is root and password is also root but make sure that you will replace username password as per your mysql mysql server installation on your machine okay don't forget to replace username and password as per your mysql you know setup now we're going to configure hibernate properties here so hibernate basically requires a dialect uh, to generate sql sql queries for a chosen database in our case we have chosen mysql database so we're going to add hibernate dialect for mysql database so let me quickly add here spring.jpa.properties.hibernate.dialect and followed by the name of the dialect that is mysql fiu in no db dialect all right great so make sure that whenever you use a database uh, with hibernate and make sure that you will add hibernate dialect for that particular database in our case we are using mysql database so hence i have added mysql hibernate dialect over here similarly let's add one more hibernate property that is auto ddl so we are going to generate our database tables automatically by using hibernate uh, after hibernate uh, you know feature so let's go and let's configure that property here spring.jpa.hibernate.ddl auto i am going to provide a value as update so here i have provided a value as update because we are going to create a tables in a database if they are not exist and we are going to update the existing tables so there are few more values for this property like create hyphen drop or create or validate but this but this update value makes sense for me that's why i have given update here and we are going to also set a logging level to see the hibernate generated queries for that just type the property logging dot level and then org dot hibernate dot sql equal to let's queue debug it's pretty simple isn't it so once we configure all the details in application.properties file let's go ahead and let's create a jp entity for student management application so the you know jp entity in our case is student so right click on entity package new and then choose class and let's use jp entity name as student and let's define the properties inside this class that is private long id and then private string first name private string last name and one more is private string email so to keep it simple i added only these four fields but make sure that you will add you know uh, the fields in a student class as per your requirement now let's go and let's generate get a setter methods to access these private fields right click source and generate get a setters select all and hit generate button here now we are going to create a parameters constructor right click source and uh, generate constructor using fields deselect id here and click on generate so whenever you create parameters constructor and make sure that you will also create a default constructor because hibernate internally uses proxies to create objects dynamically and it needs a default constructor so whenever you create a parameter constructor make sure that you will also create a default constructor in jp entity okay so now look at here student is a simple java class so let's make this simple java class as a jp entity by using uh, jp annotations that is at entity jp annotation and then we are going to map this entity to database table so for that we are going to use add table annotation here just to provide a table related details so let's provide a table name here so table name in our case students now we need to add a primary key for this table so for that we are going to use at id annotation from javax.persistence package and we are going to also use you know primary key generation strategy here 
So in order to provide a primary key generation strategy, we are going to use add generated value annotation here and it has a strategy attribute and we can specify primary key generation strategy uh, here. Okay. So we are going to use identity as a primary key generation strategy. All right, perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to map a column name for these fields. In order to do that, we're going to use add column annotation. So add column annotation has attribute called name and we can use a name to specify column name here, post underscore name. And you can define this column as a not null by using the label attribute. The label also false. Similarly, let's add a column annotation for last name as well. Name equals to last underscore name. Similarly, let's add for email. Name equals to email. Okay, great. So just remember, uh, if you don't add add table annotation to JP entity class, then JP is smart enough to provide a table name as name of the class. And if you don't add add column annotation to map a column name, then JP is smart enough to provide a column name as a field name. Okay, for example, if you don't add add column annotation to first name field, then JP will give a column name as the name of the field like this. All right. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a JP repository. So go ahead and uh, right click on repository package and then choose interface and just give interface name as student repository. Hit enter and let's extend this interface from JPA repository. So look at here JPA repository has two parameters first parameter is the type of the JP entity so in our case we have a student JP entity and second parameter is type of the primary key okay just remember JP repository has two parameters first is the type of the JP entity and second is the type of the primary key all right so if you go inside a student class you can see here the type of the primary key that is id is long and that long data type we have specified here as a second argument okay great now we don't have to add add repository annotation on top of student repository interface because this jpa repository interface has a default implementation class that is simple jpa repository Okay, simple JP repository is an implementation class of JP repository. And if you go inside a simple JP repository, this class already annotated with add repository annotation. Hence, we don't have to add again add repository annotation on top of student repository interface. So just remember these points. Sometimes beginner might you know confuse and add add repository annotation here. Actually, we don't have to add a add repository annotation to you know student repository or any other repository that you create because jp repository already, already take care of it like a simple jp repository is the default implementation class of jp repository interface right and it has already annotated with add repository annotation and again one more important point is jp repository interface by default provides a transaction for all its methods for example simple jpa repository is a default implementation class of jpa interface right jpa repository interface and it has annotated with add transactional annotation and if you can see its method all the methods are by default transaction because look at here add transactional annotations are added to all its public methods it means that jpa repository you know by default provides transactional to all its methods Hence, we don't have to again add a transactional annotation in a service layer. Okay, great. Now let's 
go ahead and let's create a service layer so just go to service package right click on it new and then choose a interface and let's give interface name as student service okay and uh, we're gonna create a one more package within a service package and let's name it as IMPL so typically to you know we use a dependency injection that is being provided dependency injection and in order to lose couple lose couple all the dependencies we're going to use interface and we create a class to implement an interface so for that uh, basically we use a naming conventions in a package like impl is for implementation classes that's why i have created impl package here so go ahead and create a class right click on impl package new and then choose a class here and just give class name as student service IMPL. so this is the naming convention typically we use to you know name to name to the class and this class implements student service interface okay great all right so one more step is we need to create a student controller right click on controller package new and then choose class and let's give class name as student controller and hit enter and let's annotate this class with add controller annotation okay great so we add add control annotation to this class because we need to make this class as a spring mvc class to handle the requests right now if you see here our base is re ready okay our base is ready now we are going to create a features for our student management system so first we're going to implement end-to-end -end list students feature and then we'll see how to implement add student feature and then update student feature and delete student feature and etc so first we'll focus on implementing list students feature okay so in order to implement this feature first we're going to change a backend part and then we'll move to front end part so in order to you know make changes at a backend part we'll go with a student repository so student repository already you know gets all the crude uh, methods to interact with the database so we don't have to change anything in student repository and then next is we move to student service and student service impl so inside a student service we're gonna define a method here that is get all students list of student so make sure that you choose a list from java.util package and the type is student and the method name is get all students okay great save the file and let's go to student IMPL class that is student service IMPL class and just mouse over on it okay and uh, we need to implement the method that just we have defined in student service right so go ahead and click on add implement uh, method so before implementing this method let's first annotate this class with add service annotation so make sure that whenever you create a service class then make sure that you will you know add add service annotation on top of it all right and we are going to also inject the dependency here so we are going to use constructor based dependent injection to inject the dependencies so we are going to use uh, student repository here student repository okay so as we are using a constructor based dependent injection so let's go ahead and let's create a constructor here right click 
source and generate constructor using fields so we have only one field that is student repository and just remember whenever the spring bean has only one constructor then we can you know avoid using add auto add annotation okay we don't have to use add wide annotation uh, here because this spring bean has only one constructor okay great now let's go and let's implement get all students method now so get rid of this comment and here we're gonna call student repository so student repository basically provides all the crude methods okay and we're gonna call find all method so find all method basically returns a list of students perfect now we have done a changes at a service layer now it's time to change a controller layer okay let's move to student controller and within a student controller we are going to inject first the dependency that is student service and as we are using constructor based dependency action so let's go and let's create a constructor for this class and if spring bean has only one constructor then we can you know omit at atoid annotation now we are going to create a handler method handler method to handle list students request and return model and view ok so just create a method here public it returns a string that is a view name as a string and then just give a method name is as a, you know list student something like this and then let's annotate this method with at get mapping annotation and let's provide a url here the url is students okay and let's add a model as a method argument to this method model so make sure that you choose model from org.springframework.ui package perfect now let's add a data to the model model dot just call its method that is add attribute with key value pair here so the key is students and value is we retrieve a list of students from a database just call student service and student service has a method that is get all students method right yeah and next we just return a view from this method return a view the view name is students okay so we haven't created a students view yet we are going to create right away all right so go ahead and just uh, you know expand the resources folder and under resources folder you can see here templates folder so basically spring boot will spring boot will have to configure a view resolver for timelip we don't have to manually you know create a view resolver bin for timelip because spring boot will automatically configure a view resolver for timelip whenever it will find a timelip dependency in a class path okay we have added a timelip starter dependency in a palm.xml so spring boot will automatically configure you know all the uh, view resolver and other dependencies for timelip we don't have to manually configure and one more important thing is spring boot will you know by default find all the timelip templates under templates folder hence we need to keep all the timelip templates under templates folder 
okay understood just note it down these points now let me copy the students view and uh, and just right click on templates border new and then go to others and just search for html file okay and just give html uh, file name as students.html okay uh, let me just export this templates folder and look at here the blue student controller student controller has a list students handler method it returns a view and this view we have just created here and now model has a list of students now we are going to display this list of students in our view that is students.html okay i hope you understood the flow now we are going to design a html table to display a list of students in students.html file let's get rid of this default title and just provide title as student management system and uh, one more important thing is that we are going to use bootstrap css uh, framework to style our web pages css library is very popular for developing you know responsive layouts so we are going to use bootstrap 4 to style our web pages so go to the chrome browser and just type bootstrap css cdn okay bootstrap 4 css cdn so we are going to use cdn links instead of uh, you know downloading and adding bootstrap files to project scroll down and here just copy this cdn link and let's go back to our project and just below title paste this dependency and just format format the page yeah there we go and let's go back to uh, browser again if you are new to bootstrap then i highly recommend you to you know i highly recommend you to read a uh, read about a bootstrap okay go to the components here and just go through these important components in bootstrap and also the content and a layout okay so go ahead and click on tables here and look at here we are going to use bootstrap table css classes to style our table all right great so we are going to use bootstrap table css classes so let's keep open this page as it is because we are uh, going to use a lot of uh, bootstrap css classes now let's go ahead and let's create a div here div and let's add a bootstrap css class to this div that is a container so we are going to map you know wrap up all the HTML code inside this container and after that uh, we are going to create a div again uh, with a bootstrap css class a row and then here we are going to create a heading that is h1 this is a page heading that is list students after that we are going to you know we're gonna create a table now so after the div with a class bootstrap class row we're gonna create a table here and let's add a bootstrap css classes to this table table and go to the browser again and look at here the bootstrap css class table and if you want to you know make uh, you know a pay a table like this then you can use a bootstrap css class table dark and uh, if you want to you know make table like this then you can use bootstrap css class that is table header dark okay and uh, 
so let me copy this bootstrap css that is table stripped and let me paste here and let me copy one more one more bootstrap css class that is table bouldered and let me paste here okay so within a table we're gonna create a table header and let's add a bootstrap css class to this table header that is table hyphen dark and then we're gonna create a row here and then we're gonna define a table column So first is student first name and let's define few more columns that is student last name and then student email and here we define column for actions like update delete and etc okay so this is the table header after that we're going to define table body and then table row here perfect now we need to you know display this table row dynamically because if you see here in a student controller we have added a list of students to the model and we are going to display this list of students in a students uh, file right students view and this list of students we are going to iterate and we are going to display in a table body so for that we are going to use th colon each attribute so just remember this is the time leap attribute which we can use to iterate over a list of students and then just uh, you know access the students variable by using a time leap a notation or syntax that is dollar within a curly braces students so this for each that is th colon each attribute just work as a for each loop and here we need to get a student from students okay and uh, if you can just uh, mouse over on this attribute it says undefined attribute name because we need to refer this attribute from official website of timelip so in order to ignore i mean in order to remove these warnings what we can do is we can add a reference link to timelip official website so go to html here and just add x mlns uh, followed by colon th and then followed by the official website link of timelip and if you can just mouse over here the warning is disappeared okay so these tags or these attributes are typically rep referred from timelip official website now this is this is the th colon each attribute to iterate over a list of students now we're gonna display student name first name last name and email so look at here this students comes from student controller here okay we are going to access this key by using time leap syntax like this now let's go and let's use td here and then th colon text in order to display a text so this is the time leap notation or syntax to display a model data that is student is an, in our case is a model student and model attribute that is first name okay similarly uh, let's display last name and email as well student dot last name student dot email perfect now let's run our spring boot application and let's see how it works so go to our you know student uh, management system application class so this is the main entry point class of our spring project so right click on it and run as spring boot app
so look at here the statements on a console create table student so student table is successfully created by hibernate automatically we don't have to manually create the table and our spring boot application is up and running on embedded tomcat server on port 8080 now let's head over to the browser and let's access this application and the url for our uh, list student sees slash students okay we're going to use this url to access this method handler all right in a browser just type localhost 8080 slash students and hit enter and there we go list students and this is the table student first name last name email and action and there is a no you know records exist in a students table now we are going to add a records to the students table okay great so instead of adding uh, you know records manually in a database what we're going to do is we're going to write a code to you know add a records to the table all right so go to the spring boot main entry point class and we are going to implement here command runner command line runner interface and this provides a method called a run so this run method basically uh, you know it executes when we run our spring boot application so here we are going to write a logic to insert few student records before that we are going to inject student repository object okay student repository and then student repository because we are going to call student repository methods right that's why we are going to inject here perfect now let's go and let's create student object student and this is student 1 let's use a constructor here and first name let's say ramesh and last name let's say fortari and email something like ramesh at the rate gmail.com and uh, just call student repository and then save and just pass student one object to this save method so let's go ahead and let's insert a few more student objects student 2 equal to new student okay uh, and let's add a second student something like sanjay first name and uh, second name as jadav and email id something like sanjay@gmail.com and just call student repository and then it call its method that is save method and then pass student 2 okay similarly let's copy this and paste it here and let's name it as student 3 and give student 3 as tony first name as tony and second name as stark email as tony@gmail.com and just pass student 3 to the save method okay to keep it to keep it simple let's keep these three students as it is and you don't have to restart the spring boot application because we have added spring boot dev to dependency right so whenever we make some changes in spring boot application then this dependency will uh, restart the server now let's head over to the browser again and let's refresh here okay and here we go so look at here all the students are successfully stored in a database and these students we can able to see in a web page it means that we have successfully implemented list students feature now next is we are going to implement add student feature end to end okay great so basically we are going to add a button over here just right below list students page heading and once we click on add student button it should navigate to you know create new student page 
all right so let's go ahead and let's add a button first all right so let me comment out this code because we have already added three records to the mysql database and go to students.html file so let me stop the server okay and just right below this heading we are going to add a button right so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to create one more view here and let me add a bootstrap css class that is a row and then i want to add one more div here and let's say column i want to just use a bootstrap css grid system to size to provide a size for the page and here i'm going to create a anchor tag and i'm going to use th colon href timely attribute to provide a link for this button so remember this is the syntax to provide a link for you know anchor tag using timely attribute so at followed by curly braces within curly braces we provide the url that is students new okay so this is the so this is the request url that we are going to handle in student controller bit later and then let's add a bootstrap css class here that is button and then button primary and then button small okay and margin bottom three and let's give button name as add student okay and we are going to handle this request in student controller for that we are going to write a handler method here just go ahead and create a method public student and this is create student form is a method name and let's annotate this method with add get mapping annotation and just provide the url that is slash students slash new and uh, we're going to pass a model object as a method argument okay and here we're going to create an object of student class here student student equals to new student we are going to create a empty student object here and this is a very important step we create here empty student object to hold a student form data okay create student object to hold student form data okay perfect now we're going to add this data to the model model dot add attribute and the key is student so the key is student and the value is the empty student object okay and just return the view that is create underscore student so this view we haven't created it that we are going to create it right away create underscore student okay so go ahead and create this view now so go to the templates folder right click on templates folder new and then choose other and search for html file and just provide this file name as create underscore student dot html hit enter okay now go to the students dot html file and let's copy this bootstrap css link and also the title okay and just replace title with this copied content and go to students.html again and just copy this link and just paste it here and go to the body and just add a due here and the bootstrap css class that is container and then create a one more div ok 
ओके एंड लेट्स एड अ बूस्टअप सेल्स क्लास दैट इज अ रो ओके एंड देन क्रिएट अ वन मोर ड्यू एंड द बूस्टअप सेल्स एस क्लास so look at here we have added a couple of bootstrap css classes so we have we have added these three classes to support different devices large device mid size device and small device and this is the bootstrap css class to align the form at the center and we are going to add a border to the form that's why i have used card bootstrap css class here okay now we are going to add a heading to this page for that i'm going to use h1 tag here something like create new student and we are going to align this heading at a center for that we are going to use bootstrap css class that is text center and after that we are going to use a div here one once again and let's add bootstrap css class that is card body and within of this div we are going to create a form okay form and uh, look at here we are going to use timely attribute that is th colon action to define the action for this column okay so action is uh, the request url we define here at and then students So remember here at represents uh, the context path of your application and context path is nothing but your application name okay so time leap needs this symbol you know to you know refer to your context path of your application and then within a curly braces we just specify the request url and after that th colon object and here we access the empty student object that we have added in a controller in order to access that object we are going to use time leap syntax dollar within a curly braces student okay so this student object we have provided in a student controller here okay we have added to the model and in, in order to access this empty student object we have used th colon object and then dollar within a curly braces we have provided the object name all right and we are going to add a method that is post all right it's pretty much now what we're going to do is we're going to design the form now so let's add a due here mind bootstrap css class that is form group okay and then add a label here label is student first name and then input field input text field okay type is text and then name equals to first name and th colon field equals to first name and then placeholder enter student first name so remember this is very important th colon field so this is again a time leap attribute that we are going to bind this input text to the post name and this post name should you know equals to the post name field that we define in a student class okay this field first name should match to this post name string okay so basically time leap will bind a value to this model attribute that is a first name and here we are going to provide a bootstrap css class for this this html element that is form control all right great now let me simply copy this and paste it here and let's change uh, the student post name to student last name and here also from post name to last name 
and here also from post name to last name and here also enter student last name okay pretty simple let me just copy this and let's similarly add for email this is student email and name should be email and field field should be email and enter student email okay now right after this div we are going to add a submit button for that div class and here we are going to add a bootstrap css class that is putter body and within that we are going to add a button okay button of type submit and let's add a bootstrap css classes button and button primary and let's give button name as submit okay uh, so this bootstrap css class is not exist i think the box putter is the bootstrap css class name okay just make this small change okay so once we enter all the details in a form and then submit then we need to handle this request right in order to handle this request we need to uh, you know uh, create a handler method so let's go to student controller and here we are going to write a handler method to handle this form request so go to student controller and here create a method public string and let's call it as save student okay and let's annotate this method with at the rate post mapping annotation and let's define the url that is slash students okay and we are going to use at model attribute annotation to directly bind a form data to the object the object is student and we are going to bind to student entity okay okay now what we're going to do is we're going to save this student object to the database for that we're going to call student service and let's call its method save student so we haven't created save student method yet so go to student service interface and here we're going to create save student method save student and we are going to pass student object as a method argument and let's implement this method in student service IMPL class okay get rid of this comment and here we're going to call student repository and then save student that's it and let's go back to our student controller again and here we are going to call student repository uh, not student repository student service and then call its method that is save student and just pass student object to it perfect and now here we are going to return basically we are going to redirect to students page so once user successfully add a student then we need to redirect to students page right so for that we are going to write here the statement like redirect to students students page and students page means here for this request okay so after executing uh, this method it will redirect to this method handler all right guys let me quickly run our spring boot application and let's see how it works Perfect, our Spring Boot application is up and running. Let's head over to Chrome browser and let's refresh. And there we go. Add student button uh, looks good. So just click on add student and uh, I think there is a small issue. Let me see what is the issue. 
post name is not valid okay yeah so look at here the the exception clearly mentioned like we have used dollar and curly braces basically in order to bind the input text we have to use star curly braces okay all right let's head over to sts id and let's fix this issue so go back to create student.html so typically we have to use here star and within a curly braces first name so this is the syntax to bind a data to the model attribute first name and similarly let's do it for last name star and within a curly braces last name and similarly email star within a curly braces email and let's save the file and let's go back to the browser and let's refresh this link and there we go create new student form displays and now we are going to add a student for example let's say john last name something like sina and then student at the rate gmail.com and click on submit and there we go a student is successfully added to the list let me go ahead and let me add one more student let's say ram jadav ram at the rate gmail.com and click on submit and there we go the record is successfully added to the list it means that we have successfully implemented add student feature all right so far we have implemented list students feature and add students feature now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a header to our student management application in order to add a header just go to google okay and we're going to use a bootstrap for now bar okay and hit enter and go to w3 schools all right and just scroll down and uh, scroll down scroll down and look at here this is the collapsing the navigation bar and it supports uh, you know multiple devices okay so let's go ahead and let's copy this uh, code snippet and this is a code snippet that we are going to use and this is how the header looks like okay so go ahead and uh, open students.html file and within a body just you know body tag paste it okay and uh, this is the brand name so let me give brand name as student management system all right and let's add a navigation to navigate to the students page for that let's use timely uh, attribute here th colon href and at student at students all right so here at represents a reference to uh, you know context path of your application in our case this is a project name and followed by slash and then students and here we are going to use student management something like that and let's remove these two links okay and let's copy this you know nav tag and go to create student.html page and just below body paste it here and save it and let's go back to the browser and just refresh and let's see how it looks like yeah it looks good right and go to create new student page and look at here uh, here we need to add some breakpoints so let's go back to our application and inside a create student.html uh, just below just below i know now tag we're gonna add some breakpoint here some break tags save it and let's go back to the browser and just refresh and here we go it looks good now so once you click on student management uh, here link it will navigate to the list students page we have successfully added header let's implement update student feature step by step 
so first what we're going to do is we're going to add here one update button inside actions column once we click on update button it should navigate to update student page and over there we populate this data and uh, then user can able to update this you know update the student it's pretty simple so let's first add a update button inside actions column so let's head over to sts id and let's start coding so go to students.html page and go to table within a table we have table header and we have added actions columns over there and inside table body we are going to add a button so td just type here td and here we're going to provide anchor tag th colon href so this is the time leap attribute to provide a link and the syntax for adding the link at within a curly braces slash students slash edit and then student id and look at here this id we need to get from student model right so student model has id so we need to get id from student object for that here is a syntax id equals to dollar and then curly braces and then student dot id so this is the standard you know standard syntax to get the id just remember this one and let's go and let's add a bootstrap css class that is button and then button primary okay so save the uh, save the file and let's head, head over to the browser and refresh and uh, let me add a button name here that is update and save the file and let's go back to the browser again and refresh and there we go we have successfully added update button now once we click on update button we should open uh, update page right update student page for that we're going to add handler method to handle this request so let's head over to student controller class and here we're going to add a handler method to handle update request so let's write a method here public string and then the method name is edit student form okay and here we're going to use add get mapping annotation and here we need to provide the url so let's go back to students.html file and this is the url we have provided right just copy this url and let's go back to again student controller and just paste it here and after that we're gonna use add path variable annotation to get the id okay we need to bind this id to some java variable right in order to do that we're gonna use add path variable annotation here and this is a long type and this is id and again second parameter is model we need to return a mod uh, we need to return some data to the view right for that we're gonna use a model here perfect okay now we need to get a student by id from the database for that we have to you know add a method to the student service so let's head over to student service student service interface first And in a student service, we're going to add a method called update student student update student and then just pass the argument as student and apart from that, we're going to also need to create a one more method which will get a student by id student get student by id and then just pass the id as a method argument and then once we add these two methods to student service let's go back to student service IMPL class and implement these two methods okay and uh, let's first implement get student by id so it's pretty simple we just need to call student repository it has find by id method and just pass the id here and look at here find by id method returns optional so we need to call its get method here okay 
so this completes get student by id implementation and next let's let's save i mean let's update this student and in order to do that we're going to call student repository object and it has a save method and just pass student object to it all right we have successfully implemented get student by id and update student method in service uh, layer now let's head over to student controller okay and just add a data to the model model dot add attribute and this is the student now we need to get a student from the database by id right so for that let's call student service and then call get student by id and pass the id here that's it and here we need to return the view right that is edit underscore student we haven't you know created edit underscore student uh, view yet that we are going to create right away okay let's copy this edit underscore student string and let's go to the templates folder right click on templates folder new and then choose html here html file and just give html file name as edit underscore student dot html hit enter and this edit underscore student uh, dot html page it should look similar to create underscore student page so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just copy all the content from create underscore student dot html file and i will paste in edit underscore student dot html file and let me quickly do some changes so everything remains same just here update update student and then uh, here we need to provide the action link here so action link is student slash and then id so look at here how we get the id so we have added a student object to the model in a student controller right here so we can get the id from student object itself all right so in order to get the id what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply use a dollar and within a curly braces we can access the object that is student object and then id and just close the curly braces here so this is the syntax to get a id from the student object okay so there is no change all right the update page almost you know looks similar to create student page so we have done only two changes that is we have changed the string from new student to update student and then we have changed the action the form action that's it okay it looks almost similar to create student page now i'm going to create a handler method to handle this request okay let's go to student controller and here let's write a handler method to handle the update uh, student form uh, request okay just create a method public and then string and method name is update student and here we're gonna pass the id that is long id okay and let's annotate this method with add post mapping annotation okay and just provide the url that is slash students slash and then id okay and this is the URI template variable and we need to get this value of this ID and uh, in order to do that we're going to use add path variable annotation here okay so after that here we're gonna uh, you know we want to store the student form data into some uh, some Java object right in order to do that we're gonna use add model attribute annotation here and we just pass the object name that is student and we need to bind this data to the student object here okay and after that uh, uh, we need a model okay perfect now once we get a student here what we're gonna do is we're gonna update this student uh, we're gonna first
okay now what we'll do we'll get a student from the database and we'll update that student with this student uh, you know object and then we'll save into database so first get student from database by id okay student and then call it as uh, existing student okay and when i use student service here and it has get student by id method and pass the id here so once we get the existing student from the database then we're going to simply update its first name and similarly let's update its last name the existing student dot set last name and here student dot get last name and existing student dot set email and student dot get email okay after that we need to you know save updated student object okay in order to do that we're gonna again call student service and it has update student method and just pass the existing student object to it and once we update the student then we need to redirect to the redirect to redirect to students page right perfect all right so let me check if there is anything missing uh, here we need to also add id to the existing student existing student dot set id and just pass the id here yeah that's it so save all the files and make sure that your Spring Boot application is up and running. Let's head over to the browser and refresh. And now we are going to test the update student functionality. So let's go and let's first update the student called Ramesh here and click on update. And there we go. So update student page successfully opened up and now the data is also populated. So let's go and let's update the student first name from Ramesh to you know Ramesh to John and last name to Sina and student email ID something like Sina at the rate gmail.com and there we go so first student is successfully updated now let's see one more uh, uh, one more student so we are going to update second student that is Sanjay so let's say from first name to first let's change the first name from sanjay to uh, sam okay and let's change the email and hit submit and there we go all right we have successfully you know implemented update student feature so far we have implemented list students feature add students feature and then you know update students feature okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna implement delete student feature so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a delete button over here and once we click on delete it should be able to delete the corresponding student okay let's head over to sts id and let's add a delete button in a actions column Let's open students.html page and this is the actions column and go to the table body and here we're going to add a delete button. So delete button almost looks similar to update button. Let me copy this update button uh, code snippet and here what we're going to do is we're going to simply remove edit here and that's it and change the button name from update to delete that's it now let's go back to the browser so yeah let's also change the bootstrap css class from primary to danger and save the file and let's go back to the browser and let's refresh and there we go a delete button we have added successfully you know actions column okay now once we click on delete button we should need to handle this delete request right so in order to do that let's create a handler method to handle delete request so let's head over to student controller and here we're going to add handler method 
handler method to handle delete student request okay create a method here public and then string return type of the method is string and here users queue method name is delete student okay and let's annotate this method with add get mapping annotation and just add the url that is student students and then template variable that is student id and we need to get this id value for that we're going to use add path variable annotation here and then type is long okay all right so we need to delete this student from the database for that what we're going to do is we're going to add a method in student service okay go to student service and here we're going to define the method delete student okay by id and just pass id here okay and save the file and let's go to student service impl class and let's implement this method and just call student repository and then delete by id and just pass the id okay that's it pretty simple now once we implement delete student by id method in service then we can call this method from the student controller so head over to student controller and here we're going to call student service and its method delete student by id and pass the id and then after that once we delete the student then we should return to uh, students page right for that let's redirect redirect to students page perfect okay let's save the file and uh, let's uh, let's see how this delay student uh, functionality works okay once you save all the files then go to the browser and refresh and now we are going to delete first student that is john so just go ahead and click on delete button here and there we go a john student is successfully deleted now let's go ahead and let delete one more student that is sam and there we go and let's uh, delete this last student that is san1 and there we go all right it means that we are successfully implemented delete student feature okay great We will learn how to develop crude full stack web application that is basic employee management application using Angular 10 and Spring Boot. Basically, we are going to develop five features in this project. So we will create create employee feature, list employee feature, update employee feature, delete employee feature, and view employee feature. So these are the five features we are going to develop in our employee management application and we are going to use spring boot to develop restful web services and angular to develop client side application so before uh, you know implementing our employee management application that is full stack application let's quickly have a demo what exactly we are going to build in this tutorial series so this is the user interface of our full stack application that is employee management application so this is the employees list page here we're gonna add a employees and this is the header of our application this is a putter and a header you can see here employees list tab and this is add employee tab let's go ahead and let's click on add employee tab and this is the create employee page and we're gonna use this page to add a new employee to the employees list let's go ahead and let's add one of the employee first name Ramesh last name Furthari and email ID ramesh at the rate gmail.com hit submit yeah here we go my employee is added to the employee list let's go ahead and let's add one more employee let's say john cena and email id as john at the rate gmail.com hit submit 
let's go ahead and let's add one more employee let's say admin and last name admin and email id let's say admin at the gmail.com yeah here we go so we have added three employees to the employee list now let's go ahead and let's see update functionality i'm going to update ramesh for the third employee click on update button and here i'm going to update first name from ramesh to ram and email id from ramesh to ram at the rate gmail.com hit submit button yeah here we go all right guys look at here the employee is successfully updated now let's go ahead and let's delete one of the employee let's say i'm going to delete john cena employee click on delete button yeah so employee successfully deleted now let's see one more employee i'm going to delete ram employee yeah great so here we have details button you can click on details button to view a particular employee details in a separate page and here we have back to employee list button click on this button to navigate to the employee list page so these are the five features that we are going to develop in this project add employee list employee and delete update and did view details employee so these are the five functionalities that we are going to develop in this full stack application let's take a quick overview of angular and spring boot angular is a platform and framework for building single page client applications using html and typescript angular is written in typescript okay and uh, you should have a basic understanding of typescript in order to work with angular and we are going to use angular 10 which is the latest release of angular as of now well angular is a uh, popular especially for developing single page applications angular is modular modular in nature so angular application is divided into multiple modules and each module can have in turn uh, components services directives templates etc and angular provides a built-in features like dependency injection and data binding all right so angular is one of the most popular typescript based framework for building single page applications well spring boot is uh, pretty much popular for developing restful web services and microservices spring boot has taken spring framework to the next level it has drastically reduced the configuration and setup time required for spring based projects you can set up spring project with almost zero configuration and start building the things that actually matter to your application now let's take a look at client server architecture at the server side we have spring boot application which creates and exposes rest api and at a client side we have angular application which we use to develop single page application and it consumes a rest apis which is exposed by spring boot application all right so this is how the client server architecture looks like Let's take a look at our Angular Spring Boot crude full stack application architecture. Basically, we are going to develop two projects, Spring Boot project at the back end and Angular project at the front end. Well, let's first take a look at our Spring Boot application architecture and then we'll move on to the Angular application architecture. So at a Spring Boot architecture, we have different components like Spring REST controller, Spring data JPA. So at a persistence layer, we are going to use Spring Data JPA and Spring Data JPA, it will communicate with a database that is MySQL. So we are going to use MySQL database in this series. So Spring Data JPA, it internally uses Hibernate as a JPA provider and it will expose all the database operations for a particular entity. So for example, we are going to create employee JPA entity in our project and spring data jpa provides all the crude operations for employee entity so we use spring data jpa to reduce a lot of boilerplate code that is required to develop a persistence layer and here spring rest controller we develop using spring amuc to uh, develop and expose rest endpoints and we are going to develop five rest apis uh, for employee uh, resource so this is a simple architecture of our spring boot project at a database layer we are going to use mysql database but you are free to use any relational databases like postgres database 
SQL Server, Oracle, etc. Because Spring Data GP internally uses Hibernate. Hibern out of the box, Hibernate supports all the relational databases. So we just need to change the configuration and underlying code remains same uh, in case of Hibernate. So you are free to use any relational databases. So let's take a look at Angular application architecture. So look at here we have different components in Angular application. We have view templates, components, services, and we may have a direct use pipes, etc. So we use HTML to develop templates and components basically contains a properties and methods so which will which will handle the data for templates and we we can perform two way binding between template and component. So basically we use angular interpolation to bind a properties in templates components will basically handle a user interface data services are angular services where we keep all the common logic and uh, we inject services in required components using angular dependency injection and in our application we write all the rest client code in services to make a rest API call well angular has its own http model so we can use http model to make a rest api call okay great so this is the simple architecture of our angular spring boot crude full stack application now let's quickly take a look at what are the tools and technologies that we'll be using at a front end side we are going to use angular 10 which is the latest release of angular while recording this video and we are going to use typescape to write uh, you know a code in an angular application and we are going to use node.js and npm and we use visual studio code id to develop angular application and we are going to use angular cli to generate angular application its components services classes and lot more things and we are going to use bootstrap 4 css library to make our angular application uh, stylish and responsive next let's take a look at the tools and technologies that we will be using at a server side we are going to use spring boot 2 plus and Spring Data JPA internally uses Hibernate and we are going to use Marvin 3.2 plus and we use JDK 1.8 and we are going to use Embedded Tomcat 8.5 plus and we use MySQL database. Let's open Eclipse SDS ID and let's quickly create a Spring Boot project. In Eclipse SDS ID, go to the file section new and then choose spring starter project so look at here this is a spring initializer uh, website url and spring initializer is integrated in eclipse sts id and we can use spring initializer to quickly create and bootstrap spring based project let's give a name to the project like spring boot backend and keep type as maven packaging as a jar java version 8 language java Let's give group ID as net.javaguides and artifact ID is same as the name of the project and keep version and description as it is and keep package as net.javaguides.springboot but you can give any package name that you want. Once you are happy with project details, click next and here we have Spring Boot version that is 2.3.1 so this is, this is the latest release of Spring Boot as of now now what we'll do we'll pick up Spring Boot starter dependencies let's go ahead and let's pick up Spring Web starter dependency we use Spring Web starter dependency to develop RESTful web services and let's go ahead and let's pick up Spring Data JPA dependency so we use Spring Data JP dependency to develop a repository layer and Spring Data JP internally uses Hibernate as a JPA provider. We basically use Spring Data JPA to reduce a lot of boilerplate code that is required to develop a DAO layer. Alright, and we want to use MySQL database. So let's quickly pick up MySQL JDBC driver. And let's also choose Spring Boot Dev Tool Dependency. Spring Boot Dev Tools Dependency. So we use this dependency because whenever we make some changes in a project, we no need to restart the server again and again. Okay. 
all right guys once you select all the required dependencies hit finish this will create a spring boot project in eclipse sts id yeah here we go once we have created a spring boot project let's go ahead and let's create a database open my sql bench and just type a sql statement like create database followed by name of the database let's give name of the database as employee management underscore system something like this and execute this sql statement and refresh here and look at here the employee management system database is get created once we create a database let's go ahead and let's configure mysql jdbc url username password in spring boot project go to the resource folder within the resource folder open application.properties file and here just type spring dot data source dot url okay let's give jdbc url to connect to the mysql database so look at here we have employee management system database that just we have created in mysql workbench similarly let's go ahead and let's configure username and password let's type the property spring dot data source dot username let's root and let's also configure password it's again root okay so make sure that you will change jdbc url username password as for your uh, you know mysql database installation on your machine now let's go ahead and let's configure hibernate properties we are going to we are using mysql database so we have to configure hibernate dialect for mysql database so look at here this is a property and this is the value so we are using mysql file uh, dialect okay now let's go ahead and let's configure one more hibernate property so look at here so this is a hibernate detail auto property so we use this property to automatically create the tables in a database so hibernate will automatically create a uh, tables in a database we no need to manually create the tables all right guys once we configure jdbc credentials and hibernate properties let's go ahead and let's create a packaging structure right click on root package new and then choose package and let's give package name as model let's create a one more package right click on root package new and then choose package and let's give package name as controller again let's go ahead and let's create one more package let's name it as a repository all right so let's go ahead and create one more package and let's name it as exception all right let's go ahead and let's create a jp entity right click on model package new and then choose class let's give a entity name as the employee all right let's quickly define the instance variables private long id private string first name private string last name and private string email id all right let's quickly create get a setter methods to access these private fields and also create a parameterized constructor right click source generate constructor using fields deselect id and hit generate and let's also create a default constructor 
so remember whenever you create a parameterized constructor you have to create a default constructor because hibernate internally uses proxies to create uh, you know proxy objects all right once we have created employee class now let's go ahead and let's use jp annotations to map uh, you know uh, this model to the relational database table let's go ahead and let's use at the rate entity annotation and let's also use at the rate table annotation to provide a table name let's give table name as employees all right let's define a primary key for our table let's use add id annotation and also let's use a generation primary key generation strategy for that let's use add generator value annotation and it has a property called strategy and let's use generation type as identity and let's use add thread column annotation to provide a column name to the field here basically we map a column name to the field and we can also give a column name over here let's use a name attribute to provide a column name let's say first underscore name and let's copy this and let's similarly give a column name to the last name last underscore name and also give column name to the email id email underscore id that's it guys that is pretty much uh, we have created employee jp entity now what we'll do we'll create a, a repository interface right click on repository package new and then choose interface here let's give a repository name as employee a repository great now what we'll do we'll extend this interface from jpa repository so jpa repository basically exposes database code methods like save find by id find or delete by id delete okay it exposes a lot of methods and it provides out of the box implementation for all the database methods so we no need to write any boilerplate code that is required to you know develop the double layer let's pass employee jp entity and here the type of the primary key let's annotate this interface with at the rate repository annotation all right so look at here jp repository provides a lot of methods like find all and also it provides a sorting support okay and uh, also provides uh, pagination so look at here it internally extends paging and sorting repository paging and sorting repository interface provides support for sorting and pagination and paging and sorting repository extends crude repository so crude repository interface exposes all the crude methods for a entity okay for example save save all find by id exists by id okay so jpa repository internally extends all these interfaces so we can leverage all these methods we no need to create uh, methods over here okay great now it's time to create a restful web services so before that let's go ahead and let's create one custom exception class right click on exception package new and then choose class and let's name this custom exception class as a resource not found exception so whenever a resource not exist in a database then we can throw this exception okay from the api layer rest api basically uh, you know throws this exception that we will see a bit later this exception extends a runtime exception okay and uh, runtime exception internally implements serializable interface so let's go ahead and let's 
quickly add the serial version id here let's say public and here let's pass string message and we simply pass this message to the super class okay it's pretty simple custom exception now let's add it this exception class with at the rate response status annotation use value property and let us say http status not found okay so basically we use this custom exception so whenever a record not exists in database then rest api will throw this exception and uh, uh, we have annotated this exception with at the rate response status annotation so the api will return a not found status to the client okay that's great now let's go ahead and let's create spring mvc controller right click on controller package new and then choose class and let's call controller class as employee controller okay within a controller we create a rest apis so let's add at the rate rest controller annotation and also add at the rate request mapping annotation and let's define a standard url over here slash api slash version v1 so this is the standard we use typically whenever we develop a rest apis like v1 like version 1 so we are releasing all the rest apis as release 1 and uh, this is the api so this is a standard uh, url endpoint that typically we use in our rest apis okay now let's go ahead and let's inject uh, employee repository over here employee uh, repository and let's add at the rate at while annotation to inject this repository by spring container now we'll develop get all employees rest api just type public and then list so this rest api should return a list of employees to the client so let's give return type as list of employees let's give a method name as get all employees all right and just return employee repository dot find all method so look at here find all method returns a list of employees okay let's select this and let's add at the rate get mapping annotation and let's specify a url here slash employees okay so once we hit the url in a browser like localhost 8080 api slash v1 slash employees then this rest api will get called and this api returns a list of employees to the client all right let's go ahead and let's run the spring boot project and let us test this rest api open our spring boot main class right click and run as spring boot app Alright guys, our Spring Boot application is up and running on embedded Tomcat server on port 8080. And look at here, we haven't created create employee REST API in order to create a records in a database. We have directly created get all employees. So what we'll do, we'll insert some records in a employees table in a database. And we call this REST API and we'll retrieve, this API will retrieve all the employees from the table and it will return to the client. Okay let's go back to the mysql workbench and let's insert few records now if we refresh the schemas and if you look at here employees management system database a employees table is created okay so this table is automatically created by hibernate and now right click and select roles 
so if you look at the table there are no records in a table so let's quickly insert few records one email id ramesh at the rate gmail.com first name ramesh last name Kodatari. and also insert one more record tony at the rate gmail.com first name tony last name stark let's keep these two records and hit apply apply and finish all right let's execute this select statement again in order to make sure that the records are there in a table yeah we have two records in a table now let's go back to the browser and let's hit a rest api in a browser tab and we'll be able to get a response as a json array of employees objects okay great all right guys open the browser go to the new tab and just type localhost 8080 slash api slash v1 slash employees and hit enter yeah here we go we got a json array uh, json array as a response from the rest api we can use postman uh, rest client to test our get all employees rest api so open a postman uh, client and in a enter request you will just type localhost 8080 slash api slash v1 slash employees and select http get method all right and hit send button and here you can see we got a json response we got an array of employee objects hey guys it's time to create angular application so before creating angular application make sure that you have installed node.js and npm on your machine so in order to install node.js what you can do is you can just type node.js in browser hit finish and head over to the node.js official website so it will navigate to the official website of node.js on download page so, so this is the download page of node.js official website from here you can download a latest lease up node.js go ahead and download a latest lease up node.js and install on your machine so when you install node.js it will automatically install npm so you no need to manually install npm again well let us check the version of node.js and npm that uh, we have installed in our machine so for that let's go ahead and let's open a command prompt so i'm using windows so i can use a command prompt here but if you are using linux or ubuntu you can just use a terminal to check a version of node.js just type the command node hyphen v so this will tell you the version of node.js that you are using and in order to check the version of npm just type the command npm hyphen v so this will give you the version of npm that you have installed in your machine all right guys once we have we have installed node.js and npm let's go ahead and let's install angular cli if you are unaware with angular cli so angular cli is a command line interface tool which we can use to create angular applications so it's pretty awesome tool that follows the best practices to create application structure file structure naming conventions for components component templates services directives a lot of things all right guys we are going to use angular cli to create and set up angular application and we also use angular cli to create a components services classes and a lot of things let's head over to the browser and let's search for angular cli open new tab in a browser and just search for angular cli and head over to the angular cli official website and look at here these are the commands you can use to you know install angular cli or to create angular project and run the angular project so these are the couple of commands you can use to quickly uh, install angular cli and create angular project and run angular project okay 
so if you want to know more about these commands you can read the description over here all right let's go ahead and let's use this command to install angular cli you can just copy this command and head over to the command prompt paste it here so this command will install angular cli globally well i have already installed angular cli in my machine so what i will do is i will just check the version of uh, angular cli just enter the command ng hyphen hyphen version so once you install angular cli in your machine you can use this command to check the version of angular cli that you have installed in your machine all right guys so look at here once the command completes you can able to see uh, angular cli 10.0.7 here this is the version of angular cli that i am right now using and you can able to uh, also see the node.js version here all right guys all right guys once we have installed node.js npm and angular cli we're gonna need vs code id to develop angular application for that just search for vs code download in a browser and hit finish and head over to the download page of vs code official website and this is the download page so from here we can download uh, you know vs code id installer if you are using windows then check out this button and if you are using mac then check out this button so just click on this button you will be able to download vs code installer once you have installed vs code id in your machine then we are good to create angular application and we are good to develop angular application all right great so go to the file system and create a folder something like angular spring boot crude full stack app and open this folder in a command prompt all right and just type the command code and dot so this will open a vs code id inside this folder hit enter i hope you guys are following the steps yeah great now within this folder we are going to create our angular application well we are going to use integrated terminal of vs code so in order to get an integrated terminal go to the terminal tab here click on new new terminal and at the bottom you can able to see here a terminal is opened well in order to create angular application we are going to use command that is new ng new followed by name of the project so this is the command which we can use to create angular app once we create angular app we can use the command ng serve to run angular app well go to the integrated terminal and just type the command ng new followed by name of the project so i'm going to give name of the project as angular front end you can give uh, any uh, project name that you are happy with but i am going to give a project name as angular front end all right hit enter so this will ask you few options would you like to add angular routing yes which style sheet format would you like to use so i am going to use default that is css so don't choose any option just hit enter and this command take couple of minutes to install packages it will basically create node underscore modules package and it will install all the packages and necessary stuff once the command completes it says packages install successfully and you can able to see angular hyphen front end folder is created and if you expand this folder you can able to see a whole lot of files and folders are created inside this angular hyphen front end folder so this is our angular application and this is the folder structure that is created by angular cli so before knowing few of the important files and folders let's go ahead and let's first run our angular application go to the integrate terminal and just type the command cd and then navigate to the and navigate inside the folder that is angular hyphen frontend 
hit enter so before running angular application using ng server command make sure that you are inside a folder okay and just type the command ng serve hit finish so this will basically run angular application in local development server on port 4200 once ng serve command completes it says compile successfully all right and angular live development server is listening on localhost 4200 let's go ahead and let's open the browser and hit this url in a browser to access our angular application go to the browser and in a new tab just type a localhost 4200 yeah here it is so this is the default uh, as you know template provided by angular so this template or html page contains few links which will in turn navigate to the uh, angular official website documentation angular cli documentation and angular blog site all right all right guys our angular application is up and running on port 4200 let's go ahead and let's explore important folders and files in our angular app generated by angular cli let's begin with package.json file so package.json file contains the name of the project version of the project and a few scripts to run angular application to build angular application and to test angular application and this is the dependency section inside a dependency section we define all the dependencies and its version required to run our angular application so notice here we are using angular 10 which is latest release of angular and look at here we are using dev dependencies so basically package.json file contains all the tools libraries and packages which are required to run our angular application and package.json file which which looks like um, pom.xml in maven project so whenever we use the command npm install it will install all the dependencies and its version in node_modules folder likewise in maven project so pom.xml contains all the dependencies and plugins right so whenever we run the command like maven install uh, maven ins clean install then basically maven will uh, download all the dependencies from the internet and it will store in a local repository so similarly when we run the command npm install so node.js will basically download and install all these dependencies in node_modules folder all right so this is all about package.json and we have tsconfig.json file so this file uh, related to typescript configuration and it internally call tsconfig.app.json and tsconfig.spec.json well so we write a typescript code in angular application right and browser don't understand the typescript so these are the few typescript configuration files that will that will convert a typescript code into javascript so that browser can able to compile and run the angular application so next is node underscore modules folder so this folder contains all the dependencies packages that are required to run angular application and this folder will basically generate when we uh, create our angular app using angular cli and whenever we use npm command to install any javascript libraries or packages so these library and packages are will get you know stored in this local folder that is node underscore modules folder next is src folder so all your development goes inside src folder within src folder you can find main.ts file so this is a very important file and this is the entry point of our angular application next is index.html file so this is a single file which will get served in a browser and we are uh, developing single page application so we should have only one html file and it in turn update uh, the same html file so look at here app root so this is the selector which uh, we have configured in app component and this selector in turn uh, get call app component html template okay great next is app module so app module is a root module of our application and inside this module we configure 
you know components in declare declarations array and other modules dependent modules inside imports array and we configure providers like services and within a, a app module we bootstrap and kickstart app component and app component is our root component well angular application can have any number of modules but it should have at least one module and that is called app module or root module okay and angular application can have any number of components but it should have at least one component that is called a root component or app component understood and next is uh, polyfills so this is related to browser uh, uh, specific uh, to support different browsers so this file will uh, you know take care and styles.css so here we basically globally uh, you know configure uh, css files and this is a test.ts file which is related to test cases in angular application and this is an environments folder so all the environments uh, uh, you know configurations goes inside this folder and assets folder contains a static files like images uh, javascript files css files etc and this is the app routing modules uh, we basically configure a routing of our angular application so this is a pretty much about uh, you know the files and the important files in our angular application now let's see how the control flows in our angular application so look at here main.ts file so this is the entry point of our angular application and the control first comes to the main. and main.ts file in turn bootstrap and kickstart app module using bootstrap module method and app module in turn bootstrap and kickstart app component app component is our root component and app component has a property called title and this title will be uh, you know rendered inside app component html template so it's this is how the control flows in angular application let's go ahead and let's understand what are the components that we are going to develop going forward in our angular application well we are going to create four components and each component represents a functionality for example create employee component we develop to perform create employee functionality we create employee list component to perform employee list functionality we create update employee component to perform update employee functionality and we create employee details component to perform view employee details functionality so each component represents a you know separate functionality okay great now we have employee service so employee service is basically a angular service which holds all the uh, http uh, rest client code and basically we use angular service to you know to keep all the common logic and we can inject employee service in uh, required components so basically we use angular dependency injection to inject angular services in various components and we can delegate a task to the employee service for example we can keep all the logging uh, common logic in employee service and we can inject in required components and we can call uh, you know logging methods so in our angular application we create employee service class which will communicate with server using rest apis and uh, so employee service internally uses http client module to make a rest api call so basically we are going to uh, make a get a rest api call and post the rest api call and put rest api call and delete rest api call so these are the crude operations right so we are going to write a rest client code in an employee service to make this rest api call okay great and look at here we have a router so we are going to configure routing in app routing module angular provides its own uh, routing module so we can use angular provided modules to configure routing in our angular application all right great and also we are going to create a employee employee model so this is basically a typescript class it contains a properties 
and we create this employee typescript class model to hold a response of the rest apis so going forward we'll create all these components service and we configure routing in our angular application so basically we'll begin with employee list component but before that we are going to integrate bootstrap 4 css library in our angular application in next video we'll integrate bootstrap for CSS library in our angular application so that we can make our angular application responsive and stylish so once we integrate bootstrap CSS library in our angular application next we will start creating employee list component and then once we complete employee list component then we will start creating a create employee component and once we complete create employee component end to end then we will start update employee component so once we complete update employee component then we'll create the employee details component to perform view employee details functionality all right guys this is the quick summary of our angular application that we are going to develop on going forward let's go ahead and let's add bootstrap css library in our angular application bootstrap is a css framework which we can use to develop a responsive layouts in our web applications so there are various ways to integrate bootstrap in our angular application we'll see a few of the simple ways so first we'll see how to install bootstrap using npm command and we'll add a path to our angular application for example open new integrated terminal in vs code go to the terminal click on new terminal and make sure that you are in a root folder of your project and here you need to just type the command npm install bootstrap hyphen hyphen save and hit enter so this will install a bootstrap css packages inside a node underscore modules uh, folder and it will add a new entry in package.json file with its version for example if you open package.json file here you can see a bootstrap package is added once bootstrap css package is successfully installed go to the angular.json file and here you can find uh, you know styles array so here you can configure a bootstrap css uh, you know library like this so this is the path to the bootstrap css library that uh, just we have installed so this is the first way and uh, the second way is go to the styles.css file and here we can just import uh, the path of the bootstrap css library that just we have installed so this is pretty simple and i prefer using this way i globally define the css file path over here inside styles.css file and another way is you can download bootstrap css uh, you know remote links from cdn for example go to the browser and in a new tab just search for bootstrap for cdn link and go to the uh, official website of bootstrap and here you can find cdn remote links of bootstrap css library go ahead and click on copy button so this will copy this url so comment out this code and go to the index.html file and go to the header section within a header section just paste the link okay so this is the another way so these are the three ways uh, I have found you know integrating bootstrap CSS library in angular application so you can use either one to integrate bootstrap in you know angular application so to keep it simple I am going to use the CDN remote links like this or you can also use uh, this way so this is uh, the uh, standard way that I prefer so let me delete this and let me use this way so you can go to the styles.css and you can configure this path like this and in order to make sure that 
whether the bootstrap is successfully integrated in our angular application what i will do is i will open app component uh, template and i will just uh, remove all the code and i will add some css to h1 html element like this let me use a uh, double curly braces though this is called uh, interfolation in angular so we can use interfolation to access the properties of component and title is defined in app component so i'm going to just display title in a web page and let's use text center bootstrap css class in order to uh, you know display this title at the center of the page let's go ahead and let's use class property and here i'm going to say text hyphen center let's save the file and let's go back to the browser and let's let's uh, refresh and you can able to see here angular front end so this is the name of the project that is uh, the title that is printed on a middle of the page it means that a bootstrap css library is successfully integrated in angular application if you comment out this code all right and save the file and look at here so without a bootstrap css library how the title aligned here okay you got the difference right so look at here after adding bootstrap css library the title is aligned at the center of the page all right guys we have successfully integrated bootstrap css library in our you know angular application going forward we are going to use a lot of bootstrap css classes to make our web pages responsive and uh, you know uh, pretty we are going to create employee list component which will display a list of employees on a web page all right before that let's recap what we have done so far we have created spring boot project we have created jp entity and jp repository we have created and exposed list employee rest api we have created angular application and we had a quick overview of angular application and in previous video we have added bootstrap 4 in our angular application in this video we will create typescript class for employee so we create an employee typescript class which will hold a response of list employee rest api and we also create angular list component angular list employee component to display a list of employees on a web page in next video we'll connect our angular application with list employee rest api and we will get a list of employees from list employee rest api and we populate a list of employees on our web page all right guys let's go ahead and let's create typescript class for employee and we'll also create angular list employee component let's switch to the vs code id and let's create typescript class using angular cli make sure that you are in a project that is a root folder of project angular hyphen front end and let's go ahead and let's use angular cli to create typescript class let's use the command ng g g for generate and then class and name of the class let's say employee so this command will create a typescript class hit enter so this command created two files employee.ts and employee.spec.ts well expand app folder within app folder you can see these two files are created all right so let's go ahead and let's define some properties in our employee typescript class so basically we are creating employee typescript class which will basically hold a response of rest api okay let's go ahead and let's define some of the properties id so the type of the id is number so in typescript we have number as a type and then define first name property and this should be string last name this should be string and then email 
ID and again this should be a string it's pretty simple and these properties should match the JPA employee entity that we have created in our Spring Boot project all right great now let's go ahead and let's create the employee list component we are going to use angular CLI to generate the employee list component go to the integrated terminal and make sure that you are in a root folder of your project and just type the command ng and then g for generate c for component and let's type name of the component let's say employee hyphen list hit enter so notice here this command created four files and also updated one of the file that is app.module.ts file well if you go to the apps folder expand app folder and expand employee hyphen list folder so this command created employee list folder as in within a folder it has created four files and it also updated app.module.ts file okay so angular cli will take care to update newly created component in app module so we no need to explicitly add a newly created component in declaration section of app module okay so look at here we just created employee list component right and angular cli will automatically added employee list component to the declarations array and this component belong to this module so as i mentioned earlier each module have multiple components and we can have as many as modules in our angular application well so look at here inside the employee list folder we have four files this is the employee list component.css file this is a component private css file which will be applicable to employee list component template this is the employee list component template it has some default text which is provided by angular cli and this is the employee list component which will basically handle the data and it will process the data and this is the employee list component test class so this is related to test cases and we are not going to focus on test cases in this series so let's get and let's open employee list component.ts file so it has an employee list component basically this is a typescript class which is annotated with add component decorator so look at here basically add component decorator that marks this type typescript class as an angular component and provides the configuration metadata that determines how the component should be processed intensated and used at a runtime all right and at at the rate component decorator has three attributes selector template url and style urls so we use selector as a custom html element and this selector will be replaced with this employee list component template at a runtime and this employee list component.css file this is a component css private file which will be only applicable to employee list component.html file now what we'll do let's go ahead and let's copy this selector and let's open app component template and here we're going to use a selector as custom HTML, HTML element like this and if you save the file and if you go back to the browser we will be able to see a employee list works text printed on a web page okay so look at here employee list component template has employee list works paragraph so this is the paragraph printed on a web page now we can we can you know add a html code to display a list of employees on a web page so let's go ahead and let's create a html template which will display a list of employees on a web page let's replace this default content and let's go ahead and let's add a html code here i'm going to create s2 html element and let's say employee list so this is the header of our page and then i'm going to create a table 
and let's add a bootstrap CSS classes to the table table and then table stepped table header inside a table header let's go ahead and let's create a table uh, a row here and inside a row we are going to create column let's say first name employee first name and this is employee last name and similarly let's create a one more column and this is gonna employee email id okay pretty simple and let's create a table body inside a table body let's use a table row here and then inside a table row we're gonna use ng for inbuilt angular directive to iterate over a list of employees so look at here this is the important step let's use star ng for so this is the inbuilt angular directive which we can use to iterate over a array of elements or a list of elements so ng4 which works similar to for loops which we use in programming languages like in java c c plus plus etc but the difference is ng4 directive we use to iterate over html elements so in this case we are going to iterate over a table row if we have 10 elements in an array then ng4 directive will create a 10 uh, you know html elements all right that we will see once we create once we write this code okay and here within a double quote let's create a variable javascript variable let and then employee of employees okay so employees basically this is an array which we need to define in a component so go to the employee list component and here we are going to define a property called employees and this is the type of employee array and make sure make sure that you import employee typescript class at the top import and then employee from the employee okay great so once we define employees you know property in a employee list component and this property we can access in employee list component template using ng directive like this now we are iterating over our employees array now let's go ahead and let's use a td html element here and then use double curly braces so this is called interpolation in angular so we can use interpolation to access uh, properties from our object in our case we have employee and then let's go ahead and let's call a property of the employee object like first name so look at here the array type so the array type we have a employee right so this employee class has properties id first name last name and email id so we are using these properties to access a employee first name last name email id all right so here so just we have called first name similarly let's go ahead and let's use a last name employee last name last name property and let's call email id okay great let's save the files and let's go back to the browser yeah here we go the html table is looking good and the bootstrap css classes are also successfully added to the html table now what we'll do we'll add some dummy data to the table and in next video we'll make a rest api call and we'll populate a rest api response data in a table let's open employee list component and inside in the init method we are going to add few records to the employees array so look at here this is employees array and uh, we have added two objects employee objects to the employee array 
well let's save the file and let's go back to the browser and look at here we can able to see two employees are displayed in HTML table well let's go ahead and let's add some bootstrap CSS class like container to the div so that we can align this table in a proper format let's open app component template and here let's go ahead and let's create a div and let's add a bootstrap CSS class that is a container and let's enclose this app employee list uh, you know element inside a div and let's save the file and let's see how the table looks in the browser so look at here now our HTML table looks good right all right in next video we will make a rest API call and we will populate a real data on a table In previous video, we have created an employee list component which will display a list of employees on a web page like this. And we have created some dummy data and we have populated a dummy data on a web page. In this video, we are going to create an Angular service which will make in turn a REST API call and we will populate a REST API response data on a web page. Alright, so before implementing Angular service in our Angular application. Let's quickly have a overview of Angular service. We use Angular service to share the data among various components in Angular application. Sometime we want to write a similar piece of code in various components. So instead of repeating same code in various components in Angular application, we can keep a you know common code in an Angular service, and we can inject that angular service in required components so that we can reuse the same code so to achieve this we can use angular service and angular provides a dependency injection feature so dependency injection feature make the testing and debugging very simple a component can delegate certain tasks to the services such as fetching data from the server validating user input or logging directly to the console so validating user input and logging so these are the common code which required to reuse in different components so this common code we can write in angular service and we can inject that service in various components to call these services and inside angular service we can write a rest client code which in turn make a rest api call and we can inject angular service in angular component so that angular component can delegate uh, you know this task like fetching data from the server to the service now service is responsible to fetch the data from the server well to define a class as a service in angular we use add injectable decorator to provide the metadata that allows angular to inject into a component as a dependency all right so we'll see about we'll see more about add injectable decorator once we create angular service in our angular application so look at here in this video we are going to create an angular service which in turn use http client module to make a rest api call and we inject employee service in different components and different components will call a methods of employee service Alright guys, let's go ahead and let's create employee service in our Angular application. So switch to the integrated terminal and make sure that you are in a root folder of your application. And let's use Angular CLI to generate Angular service. Just type the command ng and g, g for generate, s for service followed by name of the service. Let's give a service as employee hit enter so this command created two files all right if you expand app folder within app folder you can see employee.service.ts and employee.service.spec.ts so these are the two files created by this command angular cli command go ahead and click on employee.service.ts 
and look at here this is the employee service so basically this is the typescript class which is annotated with add injectable decorator so this add injectable decorator marks this typescript class as a, you know as a provider and it can be injected into various components all right and this service is provided at a root level now let's go ahead and let's use http client module to make a rest api call so before that make sure that your spring boot application is up and running and you are able to access a rest endpoints let's go ahead and let's uh, access one of the rest api in a browser just type localhost 8080 slash api slash v1 slash employees so this will gives you a array of employees as a response well our application is up and running and we can able to access the you know employee list rest api now let's go ahead and let's use http client module to call this rest endpoint so just follow the steps so first step is go to the app module and app module is depends on http client module in order to use http client here just type http client module all right and make sure that http client module is imported at the top just type the statement import within a curly braces http client module from at angular slash common slash http all right so http client module is present in package angular slash common slash http all right so this is the first step so make sure that we import http client module in imports array of app module now second step is go ahead and inject http client in employee service so go back to the employee service again and here in the constructor we are going to inject http client module private and then http client and this is http client and make sure that we import http client from the angular package and let's go ahead and let's import http client at the top http client from it should be from angular package angular slash common slash http great now we have imported http client module and we have injected in employee service using constructor now let's go ahead and let's define the property here private and let's say base url and we are going to define a base url for our rest endpoints go to the browser and just copy this url so this is going to be a base url of all the crude rest apis copy and paste here and save the file let's go ahead and let's create a method let's say get employees list followed by colon and just call observable so make sure that observable you know imported from rxjs library at the top and then we need to provide a type here type is array of employees because this rest endpoint uh, you know api returns array of employee object so for that we need to pass the employee array like this now let's go ahead and let's return this dot http client and then call get so we are going to make a get request right for that we are going to call get method and we are going to pass a parameter to the get method that is base url so look at here we need to use a backstick here not a single quote okay and then dollar within the curly braces this dot base url okay and here uh, the return type is employee array right so let's just pass this array of employee to the get method like this yeah here we go so this looks good right 
so this is observable and we are going to subscribe for this observable object in component if you look at the documentation of get method so get method basically you know it constructs a get request that interprets the body as a json object and returns the response body in the given type and if you look at the return type of the get method it returns observable of the http response okay it returns basically observable object now let's go back to the component employee list component and let's go ahead and let's inject employee service in employee list component go to the constructor and here type private and then employee service employee service and make sure that we import employee service at the top import within a curly basis employee service from employee service okay so once we inject employee service in employee component we can call employee service methods so in previous video we have created some dummy data right here inside ng on init method so let's go ahead and let delete this data and let's create a method here this dot get employees okay and just define this method here let's say private get employees and here we're going to call employee service and then get employee list method so this method returns observable object right so we can go ahead and we can subscribe to this method so basically it does a synchronous call and this subscribe will call once it get the data and to the subscribe method we are going to uh, handle the you know response of the rest api and data followed by error syntax and here we're going to assign a response to the employees property it's pretty simple right so this is the response data and we assign this response data to the employees property so this employees property is array of employee objects all right guys let's save the file and let's go back to the browser and let's see whether we get a successful response from the server or not here if you refresh you can see here admin uh, youth employee is successfully populated on the employee list page so this is the rest api that we have invoked from the angular service and same response we have printed on a in a table now open mysql workbench and let's add a few more records to the table so that we will see few more records in a web page let's say id 30 and post name ramesh so this is the email id right ramesh at the rate gmail.com post name ramesh last name Parthari and id 31 email id sina at the rate gmail.com post name john last name sina and apply apply and finish okay let's go back to the browser and let's go ahead and let's refresh and here we go so Ramesh and John so these are the two employees we have just inserted in database and it's the same employees record we have successfully got from the rest API and we have populated on a web page all right guys we have successfully created a list employee uh, feature hey guys we have completed end-to-end -end list employee functionality in this video we are going to configure routing and navigation in our angular application well going forward we will be creating a lot of components in our angular application and uh, hence in this video let's go ahead and let's configure routing and navigation in our angular application all right so configuring and you know routing and navigation is pretty simple in angular project you just 
follow the steps I'm going to implement in this video. Well, when we create an Angular application using Angular CLI command like ng new followed by name of the project. So this command will ask a question for us like would you like to add Angular routing. So if we have a requirement, uh, you know, to configure routing in our Angular app, then we say yes. Otherwise, we say no, right? Let's say we want to configure routing in our Angular application and we say yes then angular cli will automatically configure routing for us and we need to only configure routes that are required to navigate to specific uh, url path to specific component so that we will see a bit later if you don't uh, specify uh, you know angular routing option here if you say no for this question then you need to manually configure routing step by step and let's go ahead and let's understand what are the required steps required to configure routing in angular application first step is open index.html and here inside header tag you can find a base tag base href equals to slash so this base tag is required so that the application knows how to construct the URLs while navigation. So this is the first step. And second step is you need to create app routing dot module dot ts. So we have already you know configured routing using Angular CLI. So Angular CLI already created all the necessary steps that are required to configure routing in Angular application. But if you don't configured routing while application creation using angular cli command like nginew then you need to manually configure routing like this so first step is you need to uh, you know provide a base tag in an index.html like this and second second step is you need to create app routing.module.ts file like this and we create a app routing module and it is annotated with at ng module decorator and here we specify a router module from uh, angular slash router package and router module has a method for routes and for route method takes routes as an array and so look at here we have defined a constant routes array and inside array we configure routes and each route we uh, configure as an object all right and this routes is type of routes uh, module which is from angular slash router package all right so this is the second step and the third step is go to the app module.ts file and here you can see app routing module so you need to import app routing module and you need to provide app routing module inside imports array so that our application needs to know we have configured routing in our angular application all right so this is a third step and fourth step is we need to configure routing in our app routing model so here inside routes array we need to define a routes all right inside a routes array Let's create a JavaScript object and so uh, a route definition is a JavaScript object here I will define a path so path in our case is employees and then component component is employee list component all right so look at here this route is a definition of javascript object okay and each route typically has two properties first property is path so it's a string and it specifies the url path for the route and second property is component it specifies what component your application needs to display for this particular path it's pretty simple right now let's go ahead and let's configure one more route so we need to configure route to redirect 
uh, URL from empty part to slash employees. So let's go ahead and let's configure route to redirect from empty uh, empty path to employees. Okay. Let me show you how to do it. Let's create a JavaScript object inside an array, and this is path, and path is empty, and then we have redirect to property. this should be employees and then we need to define a path match so this should be a full all right so when we enter a empty path in browser like localhost 4200 it should redirect to employees a path and employees path uh, has a component like employee list component and this is the path match uh, strategy so it is recommended to use path match full strategy when we configure a empty path all right so this is a pretty simple routes we have defined in routes array and this routes array we pass to for root method of router module and this router module we we get from angular slash router package it's pretty simple right you understood the flow right so first we configure base uh, tag uh, with href equals to slash in index.html and then we create app routing module and inside app routing module we provide uh, we import router module from angular slash router package and this module has for root method and we pass routes to this for root method and then we uh, we import app routing module inside our root module that is app module uh, here so this is third step and we configure uh, routes in our routes array in app mo app routing module so this is the fourth step and fifth step is we need to configure a router outlet directive so go to the app component dot html template and here we have provided app employee list selector as a custom HTML element. So let's replace this with the directive called router. Router outlet. So router outlet is Angular provided directive. Okay. So we need to use this directive in order to update our templates to dynamically load a component based on the URL path. Let's save all the files. Let's go back to the browser and let's verify how our routing works. So if you type the URL localhost 4200, it should redirect to the employees path. So look at here. When I enter localhost 4200, it is redirecting to slash employees so this is what we have config we have provided route here so when we type uh, empty path then it should redirect to the employees and the corresponding component that is employees component will get rendered okay great and when we use the url path localhost port 200 slash employees this should render the employee list component Alright guys, we have successfully configured routing in our Angular application. Now let's go ahead and let's see how the navigation we can configure. Currently our application supports two routes, right? However, only way to use uh, these routes is uh, for the users to manually type the URL path in the browser's address bar. But sometime we want to click on some link or button, then we should uh, you know navigate to the corresponding component. This is called the navigation and let's see how to configure navigation uh, in our angular application. So open app component template and now what we'll do we'll implement header and footer for our application and also we'll provide a navigation links uh, in header section. Okay for that let's go ahead and let's first write the code for the header. This is the navigation 
tag and here we going to add some bootstrap css classes okay and inside this navigation bar we'll configure the urls and provide a bootstrap css class like this so this is the unordered list so let's also define a list here and let's go ahead and let's provide a bootstrap css class that is navigate uh, now hyper item and let's go ahead and let's configure hyperlink here and bootstrap css class like now link and then let's say the employee list so once we click on this hyperlink that is employee list we should be able to navigate to the employee list page now let's use a angular directive that is router link to provide a navigation path url path here for example a router link so router link is a angular provided directive and here we provide a url path so this is the employees so that we have configured in app routing model here all right so this is the angular directive that will basically connects the routes to a specified uh, template files okay now we want to identify the act active route right so for that we can use angular directive called router link active so we can use this directive to identify the active route and this active is basically provided by uh, bootstrap so we can use active class here so this is a simple header and here i have just added a single link so going forward we'll add few more links to our header section now let's go ahead and let's add a footer footer section to our angular application let's write a code here just use footer html element and the css class let's say footer so this is the custom css class that will uh, you know add a style to this css class bit later and inside footer we're gonna add a do here and let's add a bootstrap css class that is container and inside a do let's specify spam and inside spam let's write the text like all rights result 2020 at java guides it's a pretty simple footer let's open styles.css file and inside this file let's create a footer css class with some uh, you know css properties like position absolute width 100 percent height 70 pixel background color blue text align center color white okay let's save all the files and let's go back to the browser and let's see how it looks yeah here we go so look at here our angular application looks good now so let me recap what we have done in this video we have configured routing for our angular application for example if we enter a url localhost 4200 it should redirect to slash employees url and we have uh, added header with some navigation links and we have also added footer to our angular application let's create add employer rest api open employee controller and here just uh, let me write the comment create employee rest api all right just create a method first public and the employee so this rest api returns a employee object as a json so let's keep employee as a return type and the name of the method is create employee and just pass employee object as a method argument okay and this method returns
employee object right so let's call employee repository dot save method so save method return a employee object so let's pass employee object as a method argument to the save method now we have created a method okay let's use annotations to make this method as a rest endpoint let's use at the rate post mapping annotation so this method will handle http post request hence we are going to use at the rate post mapping annotation and let's configure url over here slash employees and post request contains a json request body right and json request body we are going to directly map to the employee object so let's use at the rate for that let's use at the rate request body annotation that's it guys very simple rest api now what we'll do we'll start the tomcat server that is we will just run our spring boot project and we will test create employee rest api using postman rest client now look at here our spring boot application is up and running on embedded tomcat server on port 0880 now let's go back to the postman rest client and let us test the api so look at here the http method is post and this is the rest endpoint url localhost 8080 slash api slash v1 slash employees and in a header just type content type as application slash json and in the body select a raw and give a json request uh, you know uh, body like this first name tom last name cruz email id tom at the gmail gmail.com hit send button so look at here we got a successful response with http status 200 okay all right guys we have successfully stored a record into a database let's go ahead and let's verify open mysql workbench and just execute select query on employees table so look at here a new record is successfully inserted into a database all right now what we'll do we'll add one more record let's give post name as amir and last name as khan and email as amir at the red gmail.com and hit send button so look at here we got a response and let's verify a record in a database table here we go so look at here record is added to the database it's pretty simple all right great we have successfully created add employee rest api so we are going to create create employee component and we are going to create create employee form through which uh, we can add a employee all right before that let's quickly uh, you know look into the two-way binding all right consider we have a form with first name last name email id and similarly here we have a component class it has a property employee so employee is basically a typescript class it contains the properties first name last name and email id so when we create the employee property of employee typescript class in component we access its properties in html template using employee dot first name employee dot last name employee dot email like this whenever i enter something in first name last name and email id input controls then the corresponding properties will get automatically updated in component class and whenever i do some changes in model uh, properties in component class then the corresponding properties will get updated in html template so this is how the two way works in angular so look at here here we have data binding and event binding so whenever we define properties in component class and we bind that properties in component template then it is called property binding or data binding so we basically use in, uh, angular interpolation to bind a uh, properties in html template and when we perform some uh, events on html template it should be bind in component class using uh, methods or functions 
So Angular provides a nice feature that is two-way binding and Angular also provides ng model directive. So we can use ng model directive to achieve two-way binding in our Angular application. Let's head over to a VS Code ID and let's quickly create a component. So make sure that you are in a project, a root folder of project, Angular happen front end. And just type the Angular CLI command. ng g for generate c for component and just followed by the name of the component let's say create employee hit enter when this command completes it created four files and app module is also updated well if you expand app folder within app folder you can see here create employee folder is created and within a create employee folder four files are generated and if you open app module angular cli has automatically added create employee component to declarations array all right now let's go ahead and let's configure route for our newly created component that is create employee component let's go ahead and let's open app routing model module and here we're going to configure a route so let's go ahead and let's create a javascript object within a routes array let's specify path and then let's say create employee as our path followed by components property so once we enter a path like create hyphen employee then corresponding component will get rendered so the component name is create employee component it's pretty simple right so once we configure route now we can able to provide a links in a header section of our angular application let's open app component template and here we are going to configure a link for add employee page so let's go ahead and let's copy this list and paste it here and let's change the link name accordingly so this is going to be our create employee or let's say add employee uh, link and here we are going to change a router link create employee so this is the path that we have configured in a route here okay let's save the file and let's go back to the browser and here you can able to see add employee link is added in a header section if you click on add employee you should be able to navigate to create employee path all right so our routing is perfectly working if you click on employee list it should navigate to the employees list page and if you click on add employee it should navigate to create employee page let me summarize what we have done in this video we had a quick look on two-way binding in angular so basically uh, we are going to use ng model directive to achieve two-way binding in our angular application and we have created create uh, employee component and we have added a route to create employee component and we have also added add employee a uh, link in a header section so that once we click on add employee it should navigate to create employee page in next video we'll create a form that is create employee form through which we can add a new employee to the employees list now let's open create employee component and let's define a property that is employee of type employee class and we are going to create object of employee class and initially all the properties of employee class should be empty all right let's head over to create employee component template and let's design a form here let me replace the default code and let me write the title of the page using s3 tag here and let's say create employee and after that let's go ahead and let's create a form and inside the form here we are going to use ng submit event to listen uh, you know form submission event 
well look at the syntax here within a parenthesis we have ng submit and let's assign a event handler to this ng submit event let's say on submit now like so this is the ng submit event which is enclosed in parenthesis and we have assigned a event handler to this event and this event handler will define in component class let's open create employee component and here we're gonna define an unsubmit function like this let's go back to create employee component and let's use a bootstrap css classes to design our create employee form let's create a div with class and then add bootstrap css class that is form hyphen group after that create a label and let's give name to the label like first name and after that uh, create a input field input type as text and then add bootstrap css class form hyper control and then id equals to first name and then we're gonna use eng model directive for two-way binding so look at the syntax here eng model and includes ng mod directive in parenthesis and after that enclose this in square brackets okay so this is the syntax to use ng directive in input element and let's assign a property to the directive let's say employee dot first name so this is the employee we have defined in a component and employee property is of type employee and this is the first name last name email id so these are the properties of employee class that we are using in the form all right next give a name to the input element like first name it's pretty simple right so the important point here is ng model so this is the directive that we are we are using for two-way binding so as soon as we enter something in this input text the corresponding property will get updated and as soon as we update this property in component class then this input text box will get updated well let's go ahead and let's add this input text box to the last name and email id as well let me copy this do and paste it here and let me change the necessary stuff this is the last name and id should be last name just copy this and name should be last name and property email uh, employee dot last name well let me again copy this and let's define for email id let me change the label this should be email id and let's go ahead and let's change the id here this should be an email id and name email id and property em uh, employee dot email id and just save the file and let's add a button here so when we enter uh, something in these input text fields then we need to submit the form right for that we are going to create a button over here and then let's add a bush of css class like button button success and the type of the button is submit and let's give a name to the button as submit let's save all the files and let's head over to the browser and let's see whether it is working or not so look at here we got an error it says like can't bind to ng model directive since it is not a known property of input well ng model directive is you know present in a separate package uh, in a separate model that is forms model so in order to use ng model directive we have to import forms module in our app module all right let's head over to the vs code id again 
and go to the app module and here we're going to import forms model from angular forms and just copy the name of the model and here after HTTP client model just paste it here let's save the file and let's head over to the browser so look at here the error is resolved so remember whenever you want to use ng model directive you have to import forms module in app module okay great so look at here the form is scattered so let's go ahead and let's align this form properly go to the create employee component template and let's go ahead and let's add a div here div and add a bootstrap css class like column mid and uh, let's say 8 and let's add offset offset bootstrap css class like offset mid and then define three and let's close this due at the end save the file and let's go back to the browser and look at here we have successfully aligned our form at the center not properly at the center so let's let's go ahead and let's change the css class again let's change from column eight to six and let's save the file and let's go back to the browser yeah now the form aligned at the center all right great now go to the create employee component and here what we'll do we'll just put some logs here and just we're going to print the employee object to the console let's use this keyword to access the properties let's save the file and let's go back to the browser and now what we'll do we'll enter form data and we submit the form data and we'll be able to see the form data will be available in on submit a method so let's enter first name ramesh last name further email id ramesh at the gmail.com and let me go to the dev tools of chrome browser go to the console here and just uh, clear the console and then hit submit button and let's see yeah here you go the employee object is successfully printed on a console with proper data first name ramesh last name further email id ramesh at the rate gmail.com all right guys great now the form data is available in on submit method in next video we will make a rest api call to send this form data to the server and at the server rest api will process this data and it will store in a mysql database In previous video we have created create employee form and once we submit this form we are able to get a form data inside on submit method so here we have create employee component right and we have defined on submit method inside create employee uh, component so once we submit the data the form data will be available inside this method so look at here we just uh, provided a console log and we have printed employee object to the console in this video we will make a rest api call and we will send the form data to the rest api and rest api internally will process uh, this request and it will you know save the employee form data in a mysql database so first we need to create a method inside employee service so here we are going to create a method which will make a rest api call and will send a data form data through REST API and REST API internally store data into MySQL database. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and let's create a method. Let's say create employee and let's pass a employee object as an argument to create employee method. And this is the type of employee TypeScript class followed by colon followed by observable and here we're gonna pass object as a type or you can pass any so if you don't know the response of the rest api you can just pass object or any uh, type okay like this 
all right let me provide an object here and return this dot then http client and then we are going to send a http post request right for that we are going to call a post method here and then backstick let's use dollar and then curly braces and just call base url okay and comma and just pass employee object that's it it's pretty simple right so this is the post request so we have to send the data in a body of the post method like this now we will head over to the component and we will make this method call over there so basically we inject employee service in a create employee component and we will call employee service method all right great let's head over to create employee component and let's inject using constructor let's say employee service and this is employee service and make sure that employee service is imported at the top okay great now what we'll do we'll create a save employee method here and inside save employee method let's call this dot employee service and then call its method that is create employee and let's pass the employee object as a method argument to this method and this method returns observable so we can subscribe to this method so that we can process a synchronous response here and it has the data as a response object and error syntax and we can able to print the error response like this and here I'm gonna just print the success response to the console data so once we submit the employee form successfully then we should be able to navigate to the employees list page right for that we are going to use a router here so i'm going to create a separate method let's say uh, go to employee list and here let's use a router to navigate to the employee list page let's first inject a router from angular uh, you know router package go to the constructor and here let's inject a router and make sure that router should be imported from angular slash router package okay now we can use this router to navigate to the corresponding uh, path so here i'm going to use a router this dot router dot navigate and then we pass the path of the route that we want to navigate so router provides a navigate method and through navigate method we can pass a path to which we are going to navigate now we call this save employee method from on submit let's go ahead and let's call this dot save employee method from on submit method and let's go ahead and let's add our employee information and submit the form let's say I'm going to add a employee like uh, let's say Ram and power and email ID as Ram at the gmail.com hit submit I guess we got some error let me see what is the error inspect and go to the console We got a success response but uh, we are not able to navigate to the employee list page okay so let me head over to the vs code id and let me see what is missing yeah here we go so basically we need to call this method from here this dot let's call go to employee list method and save the file and let's see how it works now uh let me go to the employees list and let me add one more employee now let's say prabhas and then let's say jadav email id as prabhas 
at the rate gmail.com hit submit so look at here Prabhas employee is added to the employee list it means that we have successfully made a rest pay call and we have successfully stored a employee form data into MySQL database and we were successfully able to navigate to the employee list page all right great so let me update this title let me head over to the vs code id again and go to the app component.ts file and here this is the name of the angular project so let me update this to let's say angular 10 spring boot crude full stack app something like this and let save the file and let's head over to the browser and you can able to see the title is updated angular 10 spring boot crude full stack app now our application looks good so let me summarize what we have done in this video we have created create employee method which in turn make a rest api call and we have you know pass the employee form data to the rest api and we inject employee service in create employee component and we use its method that is create employee method and we pass employee form object to the create employee method and we process the response and we also just printed a error object if there are any exception in uh, you know processing this request so after a success response of the rest api we navigate to the list employee page using uh, you know a router here okay it's pretty simple all right guys uh, we completed you know create employee functionality end to end in next video we'll create few rest apis and then we'll create update employee component to perform update employee functionality get employee by id rest api get employee by id rest api okay just type a method public and this method returns the employee object to the client so let's view return type as employee and let's view method name as get employee by id all right and uh, we are going to pass id as a method argument right long id let's annotate this method with at the rate get mapping annotation and let's configure the rest endpoint url over here employees slash id okay so this is the path variable now we want to map or we want to store this id value into uh, you know the java variable so for that we are going to use at the rate path variable annotation to map this id with this variable so let's use at the rate path variable annotation now let's retrieve a employee object from the database for that we are going to use employee repository let's create employee object here and let's use the employee repository and we will call uh, find by id right find by id method and just pass id uh, id to the find by method so look at here find by id returns optional as a return type so here what we'll do we'll use at the uh, add dot or else throw method so if record not exist in database then we are going to throw resource not found exception for that let's use or else throw method over here and basically we need to pass a lambda expression to this method because this method internally uses uh, functional interfaces okay and we use lambda expression to implement a functional interface let's use lambda expression syntax here and just pass object of the custom exception that is resource not found exception 
resource not found exception and just pass the custom message over here employee not exist with id and just pass the id over here let me break this statement okay great so what we have done we have, we have called find by id method so this method basically returns optional uh, object as a return type and optional provides or else throw method so if we record not existing database then we just simply throw resource not found exception like this now let's return a employee object to the client so what we will do we, are, we need to also return uh, http status right for that we need to use a response entity class let's use return type as response entity and uh, this is the generic class so let's type let's pass employee as a generic type and here let's return response entity and we are going to return a ok status that is 200 status so let's choose ok and just pass the employee object in a body that's it it's pretty simple right all right guys this is pretty simple uh, rest api that is uh, you know get employee by id rest api now let's go ahead and let's test this rest api for that what we will do i will start the application go to the spring boot application main class right click run as spring boot app now look at here spring boot application is up and running on embedded tomcat server on 4080 now let's go back to the postman rest client and let us test this rest api open a new tab and just type localhost 8080 slash api slash v1 slash employees and here we are going to retrieve a particular employee so let's go back to the database so i am going to get a employee ramesh with id 1 so let's pass id 1 as a path variable slash 1 and choose http get method over here and simply hit send button so this will retrieve a employee object with id 1 if you want to retrieve employee with id 2 just pass id 2 over here and just hit send button so this will retrieve a employee with id 2 all right guys we have successfully created get employee by id rest api and we have tested uh, using postman rest client now let's create update employee rest api go to the employee controller within employee controller let me just write the comment here update employee rest api okay so just follow the steps public and response entity and just pass type as employee and let's give a method name as update employee okay uh, make this e as caps and we are going to pass id as a method argument along with that the object of the employee class so basically client sends updated employee object in a request body for that we are going to use employee object here now what we'll do we'll use uh, annotations over here so let's use put mapping annotation for update operation so this method will be basically handles a put request for that we are going to use at the rate put mapping annotation let's configure our rest endpoint url over here slash employees slash just fast path variable here that is id now let's 
map this path variable with a java variable by using at the rate path variable annotation and also we are going to directly map a request json object into a java object for that we are going to use at the rate request body annotation pretty simple right great so to update a employee first we need to retrieve our existing employee from the database for that what we will do we will reuse this code just copy this code so this will basically uh, you know retrieve a employee by id if the employee is not existing database then it simply throws resource not found exception so look at here uh, this is the duplicate local variable employee uh, here just pass this as um, let's rename this uh, object as employee details now what we will do we will update this retrieved employee object with a request employee object okay just change the first name employee details dot get first name similarly let's also change last name employee details dot get last name employee dot set email id and let's get a email id from the employee details object and set to the employee object now once we set all the information that we want to update to the employee object we simply save this employee object to the database let's go ahead and let's save this updated employee object to the database let's use save method and just pass the employee object as a method argument and here we store the updated employee object in a separate employee variable and we simply return this object to the client for that just use return response entity dot ok so this is 200 status and in a body just type updated employee alright I think that is pretty much so what we have done we have retrieved a employee from the database and we have added all the updated information to the employee object and we have stored that employee object into a database and we have just returned an updated employee object to the client pretty simple rest api now let's run the spring project and let's test this rest api using postman rest client all right guys Spring Boot application is running on Tomcat's server on port 8080. Let's go back to the Postman REST client. Go to the new tab and just type localhost 8080 slash api slash v1 slash employees. And this is the update REST API. So select put HTTP method and go to the header. And we are sending JSON as uh, request body right so for that let's use content type as application slash json and i can go back to the body in a body where you're sending a json right so let me copy the json object from the uh, post request and let me paste in a body and what we'll do is simply update a employee that is a remesh employee let me show you that go back to the MySQL workbench. So look at here. This is the table. It has four records. We are going to update the employee with ID one. Okay, that is a Ramesh employee. So let's pass ID here to the URL as a path variable, and I am going to update a first name from Ramesh to Ram, last name from Patari to something like Jadav, and email ID from Ramesh at the gmail dot com to or Ram at the gmail dot com. So look at here first name is Ramesh last name for the email id Ramesh at the gmail.com right so I am going to update these details with these details okay so once you configure all the details hit send button 
yeah here we go so look at here the response we got a updated record in a response and we have successfully updated first name last name and email address let's verify in a table so let's uh, let's query the select statement here so look at here a record first record is get successfully updated all right guys we have successfully created update rest api and we have also tested it using postman rest client well in this video we create update employee component and we will configure route for update employee component and we create a update button correspond to each employee once we click on update button it should navigate to the update employee page let's head over to the visual studio code id and let's create update employee component go to the integrated terminal make sure that you are in a root folder of our angular application that is angular hyphen front end and let's go ahead and let's type the command ng g for generate c for component and then followed by name of the component that is update hyphen employee hit enter once the command completes it created four files and updated app module right so if you go to the app folder within app folder update employee folder is created and within update employee four files are generated all right and angular cli will automatically add a newly created component to app module so we no need to explicitly add a newly created component to app module okay now once we created update employee component let's go ahead and let's configure a route for update employee component open app routing module and go to the routes array within the routes array create the object and we have path property and let's give a path as update employee and then slash colon id so we are going to update a particular employee right so this id represents the particular employee id okay and we basically pass this id to the rest api to get a particular employee from the rest api well after that we have a component property and here we specify the particular component name that is update employee component so whenever we hit this url in browser the corresponding component will get rendered so this is a very simple routing for update employee component now let's go ahead and let's add update button so we'll add update button corresponding to each employee so that whenever we click on update button we'll we'll able to navigate to the update employee page let's open the employee list component template and here we have a table right and let's create actions column first actions under actions column we have a table right uh, we have a button let's create a button over here so inside a button we handle a click event so this is the syntax of angular to bind a click event to the button and then here we specify event handler in our case we have update employee event handler and then within a parenthesis we provide id we pass the id all right pretty simple followed by let's add a bootstrap css class like button button info and then give a name to the button like update now we'll define this event handler in uh, employee list component here so once we click on button it should navigate to the update employee page right so let's go ahead and let's define this event handler here and we are going to use a router to route this request to the update employee page for that let's go ahead and let's inject a router here private router and make sure that a router is imported 
from the package angular slash router okay now let's go ahead and let's use this router here this dot router dot navigate and update employee uh, event handler uh, should have id right so look at here this id we have passed it in a button this is the id right okay so to the navigate method we're going to pass a array of elements so first is the path path of the route that is update employee followed by id so update iphone employee so this is the route that we have defined in app routing component right here so this is the syntax uh, you know to call update employee page using a router it's pretty simple now let's go ahead and let's uh, test this from the browser so look at here update button is uh, appear correspond to each employee and once we click on update button it is navigating to update employee page and look at here the route this is the route we have configured right so update hyphen employee slash 29 29 is id of particular employee and this is the update employee page now let's go back to the vs code id and let's design update employee page in previous one of the video we have created uh, you know create employee form right and i have explained you step by step how to design a create employee form and update employee form which uh, which looks similar to a create employee form so let me just copy the whole whole content of create employee component.html page and let's open update employee component.html and here i'm going to just paste it and let's go and let's change accordingly so let's change a page title from create employee to update employee well you can use a single component to perform create and update functionality but to keep it simple i am going to use separate update employee component to perform update employee functionality well so this is the input field to handle first name and this is the input field to handle last name and this is the input field to handle employee uh, e email id and this is the button let's save the file and let's go back to the browser and let's see how this page looks like yeah here we go update employee page once i click on update button it should navigate to the update employee page and this is how the update employee page looks like well create employee and update employee page both looks same and uh, yeah so you can use the same component to perform both the operations but to keep it simple i have created a separate update employee component to perform update employee functionality well in case of update we need to populate a particular employee data in the form so that user can able to update the employee right so basically we make a get employee by id rest api call and we pass this id to the rest api rest api basically uh, you know fetch the particular employee by id from the database and it will send that employee data employee data in a response and we populate that uh, response employee data in the update employee page well in next video we will make a get employee by id rest api call and we'll fetch a particular employee by id and then we populate that employee in the update employee page so that user can able to update that particular employee in previous video we have created update employee component and we have configured a route for update employee component and we have added update button correspond to each employee in employee list page and once we click on update button it should navigate to the update employee page and we have also designed update employee form in this video we'll make a get employee by id rest api and we populate that particular employee in the update employee form so that user can able to update the employee all right let's go ahead and let's write the code to make a rest api call and we populate 
the response of the REST API in the update employee page. Let's head over to the VS Code ID. Let's open employee service and here we're gonna write a REST client code which will make a get employee by ID REST API call. Let's give a method name as get employee by ID something like this and then we need to pass ID to this method and this is the type of number followed by observable and then we know that this this rest api returns a employee object so let's go ahead and let's pass a employee as employee model as a type to the observable class like employee and then just simply return this dot http client and then call a get method so we are making a get http request right and then we know that this uh, rest api returns the employee object so let's go ahead and let's pass the employee model as a type followed by let's pass a parameters to get method notice here we are using backstick within a backstick uh, we use dollar within a curly basis we're gonna use this dot base url followed by slash dollar and within a curly basis just pass the id that's it it's pretty simple right now you're gonna call this method from the update employee component well let's go and let's first inject employee service in update employee component open update employee component and go to the constructor just in inject employee service over here and make sure that employee service is imported at the top and let's go ahead and let's create an employee property employee equals to new employee and here we're gonna make a method call here employee service and then get employee by id so look at here this is important so get employee by id method expects uh, id right and we need to retrieve id from the route so let me show you how to do it we'll use activated route uh, module to retrieve id from the route for example in a browser you can just search for activated route in angular and go to the activated route api so basically activated route provides access to information about a route associated with a component that is loaded in an outlet and this activated route provides a couple of methods like couple of properties snapshot and params so we use these properties to access id from particular route let's first uh, you know inject activated route private let's call it as route and then activated route and make sure that activated route should be imported from angular slash router and we're going to use a route here so first i will create a property here id id should be a type of number and then here i'm going to assign id from route to id property here let's use this dot route and then we have snapshot and then we have params pass a key here to get uh, id value that's it so this is how we get id from particular route uh, using this syntax so we use activated route it has snapshot and params properties and we use these properties to access id from the route well now we can able to get id and we can pass this id here all right and just subscribe to this method so it returns observable so we can subscribe to it and then handle the response data here data arrow syntax 
and then just assign a data to the employee property here this dot employee equals to data and here we can also handle error response we just print the error response here like this okay great and this employee property we have used in update employee page here employee dot first name employee dot last name and employee dot email id well as soon as this employee property is populated with data that data will be reflected in the form now let's save all the files and let's go back to the browser and let's see how it works yeah here we go the browser automatically refresh and it internally made a get employee by rest api and it will populate employee data in the update employee page it means that we have successfully made a get employee by rest api and we have populated the response of get employee by rest api in update employee page so let's go back to the employee list page and if i click on update button of particular employee let's say ramesh employee yeah, here we go the employee particular employee data is you know updated successfully on update employee page now user can able to update a first name a last name and email id and once user sub, uh, hit on submit button we again make a rest api call that is update employee rest api call we submit this updated employee form data to the rest api rest api internally store this data into mysql database so in next video we will make update employee rest api call and we will send this updated employee form data to the rest api and rest api will internally store this data into mysql database all right guys in previous video we have made get employee by id rest api and we have populated a particular employee data in update employee page in this video we will make a update employee rest api call and we will send update employee form data to the update employee rest api and update employee rest api internally store this update employee data into mysql database let's go ahead and let's write a rest client code to make update employee rest api let's head over to vs code id and let's open the employee service and here we are going to create a method let's say update the employee and this method takes two parameters one is id of the particular employee and second argument as the employee updated data and this is the type of employee typescript class followed by colon and then observable and here we can pass object as a type and then we simply return this dot http client and then this is a put http request so let's call put method and use backstick and dollar within a curly basis let's call base url and then uh, slash and then dollar and let's access id using dollar curly braces like this and let's pass second argument as employee object that's it guys pretty simple now i want to call this update employee method in update employee component let's head over to the update employee component here and we have update employee form right and once we submit the update employee form it will uh, you know call on submit event handler so let's first define this on submit event handler in update employee component here within on submit method we're gonna call user service and then we call update employee method of user service object and update employee method expect two arguments one is id and another is employee object so let's go ahead and let's pass id here so id how can we get id and we can get id like this this dot id comma this dot employee so this id we already got from the route using this syntax and this is the employee object right 
and this employee object will automatically populated uh, by angular using ng model directive and we're gonna subscribe to this method because it this method uh, returns observable so we can subscribe and we can handle the asynchronous response and followed by handle a response inside subscribe method like this this arrow syntax so once the employee updated successfully and we got a success response from the rest api then we will navigate to the employee list page right so for that we need to write a route here so that we should navigate to the employee list uh, page so go to the create employee component and here we have already written a code let me just uh, reuse this code just copy and uh, go to the again update employee component paste it here and first we need to inject a router here inside a constructor so private router and then it's a router so make sure that router is imported at the top all right and we use navigate method of router and then we pass a path a particular route uh, which it navigate okay for example this is the path we have configured in app routing module this is and it will render a corresponding component that is the employee list component now let's go ahead and let's call this method here this dot go to employee list and here we can handle the error response like we can print the error response to the console all right pretty simple right so we just call update employee method of employee service class and then we pass id and the updated employee object to the update employee method and this is a synchronous call so it returns observable so we subscribe to it and we can handle the response asynchronously and once we got success response from the rest api we can call you know uh, go to employee list method it right? internally uh, you know it will, or it will route to the employee list page well let's save all the files and let's go back to the browser and let's see how it works well go to the employee list page let's go ahead and let's update one of the employee i'm going to update admin employee click on update button and let's update first name from admin to administrator and email id from admin to administrator and hit submit button yeah here we go the employee is successfully updated the first name and email id is successfully updated right all right guys we have successfully made update employee rest api call and we have sent updated employee form data to the update employee rest api and update employee rest api internally store this data into a mysql database all right guys we have successfully implemented update employee functionality Let's develop delete employee REST API. Go to the employee controller. Within the employee controller, we are going to develop delete employee REST API. Delete employee REST API. All right, just follow the steps. Just create a method first, public. So we are going to return a deleted employee with status uh, message, right? For that just type just return a map as a response just give key as string and value as boolean and let's give method name as delete employee and let's pass id as method argument long id and let's use at the rate delete mapping annotation so this method will handle or delete HTTP request for that we will use add the delete mapping annotation and let's go ahead and let's configure the rest endpoint URL employees slash ID as a path variable and now we are going to map this ID with the Java variable right that is a long type for that we are going to use add the rate path variable annotation it's pretty simple so in order to delete the employee first we need to get a existing employee with ID right 
so let me reuse this code so first we'll retrieve a employee with the id if employee with this particular id is not existing database then you will simply throw the resource not found exception and it's pretty simple again we just simply pass a employee object to the delete method so here we're going to use the employee repository and we're going to call a delete method and we pass a employee object to the delete method so this will return this will uh, delete a particular employee and look at here the return type of delete method it is a wide okay now what we'll do we'll simply create a map object to simply return uh, like a message uh, deleted as a true uh, key as a string and value as boolean so we need to notify to the client uh, something like the delete uh, record is deleted successfully right for that we are going to just return deleted as true or false okay and just give reference as response and this is of course a hash map and response dot put so let's put our entry here so we're gonna say key as deleted a response as uh, the value as true okay and return response entity dot okay and just in a body just pass a response so again uh, we have to specify response entity as a re uh, return type here all right that is pretty much what we have done let me stop the server we have retrieved a uh, employee with id particular id from the database if record is not exist then we simply throw the resource not found exception and we have called a delete method of employee repository and we pass the employee object to the delete method this will delete a you know employee and the delete method does not return anything so we simply create a map with a entry as deleted true and we simply return that map to the client it's pretty simple REST API. Now let's start our Spring Boot project and uh, let us test delete employee REST API using Postman REST client. Alright guys, our application is up and running on embedded Tomcat server on port 8080. Now we'll delete a particular employee. Let me show you uh, here in our MySQL workbench. So look at here we have four records in a table. So we are going to delete a record one. Uh, uh, the record with ID 1 okay we are going to delete this particular record go back to the postman rest client and go to the new tab here and just type localhost slash 8080 slash api slash v1 slash employees and we are going to call a delete rest api for that we are going to choose a delete http method here and we are going to delete a record with ID 1 so let's pass 1 here as a path variable and hit send button so look at here the status 200 and record is successfully deleted and we got a deleted true as a response let's verify it in a database so let me quickly run this query select query and look at here a particular record is successfully deleted from the table let's delete one more record so we are going to delete a record with id 2 let's go back to the postman rest client and just pass 2 here and uh, hit send button yeah here we go we got a success response let's verify let's execute select statement here we go the record is deleted successfully all right that is pretty much about delete employee rest api we have successfully developed delete employee rest api and uh, we have tested it using postman rest client In previous video, we have created delete employee REST API. In this video, we are going to implement a delete employee functionality in Angular application and basically we consume delete employee REST API in our Angular application. 
So in a employee list page, we add a delete button in actions column. Once we click on delete button, it will make a REST API call to delete a particular employee from the database. Well, let's go ahead and let's first add a delete button to employees list page here inside actions column. And then once we click on delete button, it should make a delete employee REST API call. Let's head over to the Visual Studio Code ID and go to the employee list component.html and here we're going to add a button. So we have already added a button that is update button similar to that. Let's add a button that is delete button and let's bind a click event to this button and here we have an event handler name that is delete employee and within a parenthesis we, we need to pass id that is employee id and then add some bootstrap css classes like button and then button hyphen danger give name to the button like delete here uh, remove this hyphen so this class is different and button hyphen danger class is different and also add some inline style here that is margin left 10 and let's save the file and let's go back to the browser so look at here now it it looking good right so look at here the putter uh, you know height is quite uh, high so let me uh, reduce the height of the putter so go to the styles.css and this is the height is 70 pixel let's go and let's give 40 all right and let's save the file and let's go back to the browser yeah here we go the height of the putter is reduced for now and it looks good right now once we click on delete button it should make a rest api call right for that let's go ahead and let's write a rest client code to make a rest api call so this uh, delete event handler we're gonna define in a employee list component here and it expects id of type number well so first we're gonna make a rest api call for that we are going to write a rest client code so inside a employee service we write the rest client code right here so first write a rest client code which make a delete employee rest api so let's go ahead and let's create a method like delete employee and then pass id to this method like id colon number followed by colon and then observable and you can pass object as a type and then simply return this dot http client followed by call delete method so we are making a delete http request so let's call delete and backstick dollar within a curly braces just call the base url and followed by slash dollar and within a curly braces just pass the id it's pretty simple right and save the file and let's use this delete employee method inside employee list component so this is the delete event method you know uh, event handler right so this we have already bind in a button in employee list component here so once we click on this button delete button it will call delete employee event handler and this event, uh, delete employee event handler we have defined in employee list component inside a delete employee event handler we're gonna use this dot employee service and we call a delete employee method and just we pass the id and then we subscribe to this method as it returns observable and we can handle response asynchronously and handle the data here response data like this so after successful deletion we're gonna navigate to the list employee list page right for that i'm going to call get employees method it's pretty simple 
all right and this data we can simply log here all right now let's go ahead and let's test our delete employee functionality from the browser let's save all the files and let's go back to the browser and let's go ahead and let's delete one of the employee let's say prabhas so hit delete button yeah so prabhas employee is successfully deleted let me delete one more employee let me delete this ram employee yeah so ram employee is also successfully deleted let me delete one more employee john yeah here we go it means that our delete employee functionality is working as expected all right guys so far we have implemented create employee list employee update employee and delete employee in next video we'll implement view employee details functionality all right guys so far we have implemented four functionalities employee list add employee update employee and delete employee in this video we're going to implement view employee details functionality so basically we add view button in actions column once we click on view button it will navigate to the view employee details page over there we can able to see a particular employee details all right let's head over to the vs code id and let's quickly create a view employee details component and let's design a view employee component template to show a particular employee details all right let's head over to the vs code id inside the integrated terminal make sure that you are in a root folder of our application that is angular hyphen frontend and just enter angular cli command ng followed by g g for generate c for component followed by name of the component let's say employee details hit enter so this command created four files and it also updated app modules file all right so if you expand app folder inside app folder you can see the employee details folder is created within employee details four files are generated and also uh, app module is also you know updated with newly created component in declarations array so whenever we create a component using angular cli angular cli automatically configure a component for that particular module so in our application we have only one module that is app module all right now let's go ahead and let's configure a route for employee details component go to the app routing module and here we're gonna create a javascript object within a routes array and we configure a route for employee details component let's create a javascript object with property path and let's give path as employee details and we need to get a id right idea of particular employee so we're going to show a particular employee details right for that we're going to need id of that particular employee and then corresponding we define corresponding component here that is employee details component that's it guys it's very simple so once we configure route next we create a view button inside a employee list template let's head over to the employee list folder within the employee list folder we have employee list component template and here we have a table right within the table we have actions column and within actions column we have already defined update and delete button so along with these buttons we'll also create a one more button that is view button let me copy this existing delete button and paste it here and let me change it accordingly let's give button name as view and let's change uh, event handler name here so this is 
the on click event handler and here we're gonna change the event handler name something like employee details it's pretty simple and once we click on this view button this event handler will get called and let's go and let's define this event handler in employee list component employee details and then we need to get the id right id of type number and then once we click on view button we should be able to navigate to the view employee details page right for that we're going to use a route and we have already defined a route uh, in one of the previous video for uh, you know for update operation let me just copy the existing line of code paste it here and let me change the route name right name a route name we have the employee details right employee details it's pretty simple so this is the route path we have defined in app module app routing module this is and this is the id and that id we passed here all right great now let's save the file and let's head over to the browser and look at here view button is added let me change the bootstrap css class for view button so instead of danger let's say info and save the file let's go back to browser yeah so once we click on view button we should navigate to the view employee details page all right and look at here the url so this is the path we have configured in app routing module right and this is the id of that particular employee well now what we'll do we'll design a view employee details page and we'll make a rest api call and we pass this id to the rest api rest api will return a employee object of this particular id and we'll populate that employee object on this page all right great go to the employee details component and let's go and let's define a properties inside a component that is id of type number and then define the employee property of type the employee type script class now inside a component we need to retrieve id right id of that particular employee for example so look at here this is the url and we need to get this id inside a component for that we are going to use a route so in one of the previous video uh, i have shown you how to use activated route to get this id so similarly let's go ahead and let's use activated route to get this id from the route let's inject activated route in this component activated route and using route we can get the id from the route id equals to this dot id equals to route and then snapshot and then params and here we can pass the id so this will give you the id of that particular route okay so once we got the id we can pass this id to the rest api and rest api will return our employee object of this particular id so within an employee service we have already created get employee by id rest uh, method right which will internally make get uh, get employee by id rest api let's go and let's call this method to get a particular employee by id all right let's go and let's inject the employee service in the employee details component then a constructor private employee service and then employee service now let's use employee service here so first we're gonna define the employee object right new and then employee and here let's use this dot 
employee service and we'll call the method get employee id and let's pass the id here and this method returns observable so let's use a subscribe method to subscribe to the observable and inside this subscribe method we can handle the response this is our basically our synchronous response now let's assign a response of the rest api to the employee object now once we got a response of rest api and we populate that response in the employee object let's go to the employee details component template and here we're going to design view employee details page let's say header of the page like view employee details something like this and then followed by the due and let's create one more due and let's create a label and this is the bold element html element and then let's give label name as first name and then let's use angular interpolation to access the property of the component so this is the employee dot first name so this is the employee property we have defined in a component right employee details component and this employee property we are going to access in a component template like this okay now similarly let's go ahead and let's display employee last name and email id as well let me copy and paste twice here and let me change the label last name and here let's change the property employee dot, uh, employee dot last name and this is email id right email id and this is the email id it's pretty simple let's save the files and let's go back to the browser and let's see how it works yeah it is working let me go to the employee list page from here if i want to see a john china employee details then i can click on view button and i can able to see a John Cena employee details here. All right, all right, guys. We have successfully implemented we employee details. Let me quickly add a employee here, Ram Power Ram at gmail.com. Hit submit, and let's say I want to view Ram employee details, and I can click on view button, and I can see uh, all the details of ram employee in a separate page and if you want to navigate to the employee list you can click on employee list here all right guys we have successfully implemented view employee details functionality in this video let's quickly have end-to-end -end demo of our angular spring boot code full stack application and let me recap what are the functionality we have implemented in our employee management application in this series well we have implemented employee list add employee update employee delete employee and view employee features all right let me uh, you know clean all the records from the employee list i mean i will delete all the records and let's have a end to end demo Now let's go ahead and let's add a employee to the employee list. Click on add employee link. And here I'm gonna add employee that is a Ramesh employee. First name Ramesh, last name Fartare, email id Ramesh at the gmail.com, hit submit. Let's go ahead and let's add one more employee. Click on add employee tab. And let's go ahead and let's add one more employee. First name John, last name Sina, and John at the gmail.com, hit submit. Let's go ahead and let's add one more employee. Let's say admin, last name admin, email id admin at the gmail.com. Yeah, here we go. Let's go ahead and let's add one more employee. Let's say ram and then power ram at the gmail.com. Hit submit. Great, we have added four employees to the employee list. Now let's go ahead and let's update one of the employee. I'm going to update Ramesh employee. 
click on update button and let's change first name from Ramesh to Rama something like this and last name from Kadathari to uh, Jadav okay and email id from Ramesh at the rate gmail.com to Rama at the rate gmail.com hit submit so look at here the Ramesh employee successfully updated earlier the first name was Ramesh now it is updated to Ram and similarly last name and email id also updated right well add employee and update employee functionalities are working as expected now let's see the delete functionality I'm going to delete this RAM employee click on delete button yeah here we go RAM employee successfully deleted let me delete Johnson employee click on delete button yeah John employee is also successfully deleted now let's go ahead and let's see the view employee details functionality let's say I want to view admin employee details click on view button yeah here we go we can able to see all the admin employee details in view employee details page well if you want to navigate to the employee list page you can click on employee list tab over here and if you want to see RAM employee details you can click on view button you can able to see all the details of this particular employee in view employee details page well these are the five functionalities we have implemented in this employee management application so here is our high level project requirements we need to create a web application for user registration account where users should able to perform these operations so users should be able to register to the application and users should be able to log into the application using a registered credentials so first we'll have a look into the demo and then we'll implement this application step by step so this is the login page so before you log into the application you should have to register to the application so in order to register to the application click on a register here link so this will navigate to the registration page and here we need to enter our details like first name I am going to enter Ramesh last name Fadatare email address Ramesh at the red gmail.com and password so you can enter any password I am going to enter password 123 ok and I will click on register button here so once user registered successfully you can see here the success message we have successfully registered to our awesome app okay so now the user is successfully registered to the application now we can able to use a registered email and password to log into our application so click on login here link so this will navigate to the login page again and here we are going to enter ramesh at the gmail.com that we have just registered right and password is password123 and hit login alright here we go so this is the home page once you logged in successfully to the application then you will see this page so this is basically a home page and here you can see the uh, the text and this is the logout button you can hit logout button to log out from the application so click on logout so look at here this will navigate to the login page again so this is the uh, registration and login model that we are going to implement in this video tutorial series all right great let's take a look at our application flow and how the request uh, will process so first we'll begin with a browser so whenever we hit a link in a browser then the HTTP request will first come to the user registration controller this is basically a spring MEC controller which will handle HTTP request such as get and post and then request will move to the user service and from user service to user repository and then finally hit to the database okay and again user uh, repository will retrieve a data from the MySQL database and user service will use a user repository to get a data from the user repository 
and user registration controller will get a data from the user service and finally user registration controller will return a view that is timely html template to the browser for a rendering okay so user registration controller will return a html page that is the timely template that will be rendered on a browser so this is the typical uh, flow in spring mc web application let's have a look into our application architecture so at a front end we are going to use time leap and we also use bootstrap css framework to make our web application responsive and at the back end we are going to use three layer architecture this is the controller layer service layer and this is the repository or a DAO layer at the controller layer we are going to use spring msu to develop uh, spring msu controllers which will handle http request and at a service layer we keep all our business logic and transaction related stuff and in a repository layer we are going to develop uh, jpa repositories uh, to you know to interact with the database so basically we are going to use spring data jpa to develop a repository layer and spring data jpa basically we use to reduce a boilerplate code that is required for developing uh, you know code operations for database okay so basically repository layer is responsible for establishing a connection with the mysql database and it will expose database code operations all right and at a database part we are going to use mysql database so this is a pretty much high level architecture of our spring boot application all right great let's have a look into the tools and technologies that we are going to use in our spring mc web application so we are going to use latest release of spring boot that is 2.3 as of now and we are going to use spring mc and spring security modules from the spring framework and spring boot 2.3 internally uses spring framework 2.5.2.6 plus and we are going to use marvin 3.2 and we use marvin basically for dependency management and project build tool and we are going to use java 8 and we use spring data jpa uh, for developing a repository layer or a DAO layer spring data jpa internally uses hibernate as a jpa provider we basically use spring data jpa to reduce a boilerplate code that is required to develop a DAO layer or a repository layer and finally we are going to use timelip to develop our view layer i am in eclipse sts id in order to create a spring boot project go to the file new and then choose spring starter project so look at here the service url so this is a spring initializer uh, you know url so basically we use spring initializer to quickly create and bootstrap our spring boot project and spring initializer is integrated in spring tool suit id and we are going to use spring initializer to quickly create and bootstrap our spring boot project you can use spring initializer from the web browser you can access this link and you can create a spring boot project from there as well so in a browser you can just type start.spring.io and then this is the spring initializer user interface through which you can create a spring boot project okay great so we are going to use spring initializer which is integrated in spring toolsuit id to create our spring boot project okay so let's give a name to our project so let me give a name as a registration login spring boot security time leap so we are going to use spring boot spring security time leap hibernate and mysql database right uh, hence uh, this makes sense this name makes sense for the project so i have given a name to the project like this and choose a project type here either marvin or gradle so if you are interested in gradle you can choose gradle and we are going to use Marvin in this video tutorial series so I am going to choose Marvin here and packaging as a jar and Java version 8 you can use L1 14 if you have installed Java L1 or 14 you can use Java L1 or 14 I am going to use Java 8 language Java Kotlin Groovy so we are going to use La, uh, Java so let's choose Java and group ID net.java guides 
so you can give any group id that you want and artifact id is going to be our application name so let's keep artifact id as it is and version default keep as it is description demo project for spring boot and spring boot time leap all right and hibernate and package as net.javagets.springboot you can give any package name that you want once you are happy with the details click next and look at your spring boot version this is the latest release of spring boot as of now and we need to choose the appropriate spring boot starter dependency from here so we are going to develop spring mvc web application so we are going to choose spring web starter dependency all right and we are going to uh, develop a repository or a DAO layer for that we are going to use you know spring data jp so, so we use spring data jp to develop our repository layer and spring data jp internally uses hibernate as a jp provider and we use Spring Data JP basically to reduce a boilerplate code that is required for develop, you know, implementing a DAO layer or repository layer. Okay, great. Now uh, we are also going to use a time leap. So let's go ahead and let's choose a time leap dependency. And we are going to also use MySQL database, right? So let's go ahead and let's pick up MySQL GDB driver and we are going to also use spring security okay let's choose spring security and what else remaining uh, we are going to also use spring and dev tools okay spring dev tools right spring boot okay great so this is the tool it is very useful whenever you make some changes in application you no need to restart spring boot application again and again so spring boot dev tools dependency will take care of that so once you select all the required dependencies then hit finish so this will create a new spring boot project in eclipse sts id so look at here okay let's wait for a moment marvin will download all the spring boot dependencies and it will set up a you know environment for us so this is the default structure of our spring boot project so whenever you create a new project using spring initializer then this is the default structure of our spring boot project open the application dot properties file and here i've just entered jdbc url username and password here so look at here this is the jdbc url to connect to the mysql database and this is the username and password and this is the hibernate dialect to connect and to generate a queries for mysql database and this is the ddl auto property so hibernate will automatically create and update database tables using this property okay great so this is a pretty much database configuration we required in our Spring Boot application. You can also provide a log levels uh, for Hibernate. Let me also configure log levels for Hibernate so that we can monitor Hibernate generated SQLs on a console. Okay. So this is the debug log for Hibernate. Okay so we have just configured debug and trace log for hypernate all right let's go ahead and let's create a database in mysql uh, server so open mysql workbench so mysql workbench is popular client to interact with the mysql server so inside mysql database server we are going to create a database let's write the statement create database let's give a database name as demo and execute this statement 
and refresh here so look at here the demo database is created and this demo database we have configured in our spring boot project right let me show you that so look at here this is the demo all right so make sure that you have you have entered uh, you know correct database name and username and password as per your mysql database installation on your machine let's take a look at our entity relationship diagram so we have a user table and a role table and whenever we implement many to many relationship between these two tables then third table will be created and this third table will basically maintains the details of these two tables for example user table has id as a primary key and this primary key becomes a foreign key in a third table that is users underscore roles table and look at here role table also has id as a primary key and this primary key becomes a foreign key in roles underscore users underscore roles table okay so remember whenever we maintain many to many relationship between two tables then third table will be created and third table basically maintains the mapping between these two tables okay great we basically create user and role jp entities and we establish many to many relationship between them using jpa annotations all right so let's go and let's first create a package and let's name it as a model okay so inside model package we are going to create jp entities so right click new and then class and let's give a class name as user all right so let's right click on a model package new and then again create a class let's name it as a role okay open user class and let's define few instance variables private collection of roles so one role one user can have multiple roles right for that we are going to create collection of roles here and let's quickly create constructor And let's also create a getter setter methods to access these private fields. Okay. Now we have created a simple user pojo. Now let's make this class as a JP entity. So we use JP annotations to make this class as a JP entity class. So let's go and let's add at the rate add entity annotation to make this class as a JP entity. And next we'll add at the rate table annotation to provide table details. For example, let's give a table name as users or just give a user. And here we also define unique constraints. So in our application email is going to be unique so for that we are going to define a unique constraints for email field okay we have column names attribute and here we just give column name as email so this is going to be a unique constraints okay email is unique constraints in user table now let's add at the rate id annotation to make this id as a primary key and again let's use at the rate generated value annotation to provide a primary key generation strategy so let's give identity okay uh, now what we do we'll give a column name for some fields and uh, let's go give a column name as first underscore name and let's copy this 
and let's also give a column name for last name field last name last underscore name here okay great so if you don't specify at the column annotation then by default the name of the column is the field name and here again if you don't specify at the table annotation then by default the, na uh, the name of the table is the name of the class okay great so this is our user jp entity now it's time to create a role jp user entity now let's define few instance variable here uh, private uh, long id private string name okay now what we'll do we'll quickly create a getter setter methods to access these private fields okay now let's make this class as a jp entity by using jp annotations use at the rate entity annotation and again at the rate table annotation and just give table name as role okay and let's let's create a primary key let's use at the rate id annotation to make this id as a primary key and again let's use at the rate generated value annotation to provide a primary key generation strategy okay so look at here we have a user jp entity and role jp entity in place it's time to establish a many to many relationship between these two entities so in order to maintain a relationship between these two entities we are going to use jp annotations all right so as i mentioned earlier we are going to establish many to many relationship between these two entities so we are going to use at the rate many to many jp annotation and again notice here we are going to use a unidirectional many to many mapping so many of the cases we retrieve a user along with its roles right so this is uh, is going to be a unidirectional many to many mapping hence we have a user and here collection of roles and we need to add at the rate many to many annotations over here so let's use at the rate many to many annotation here let's apply fetch type so fetch type let's say eager so whenever we retrieve a user along with a user we are so re retrieve a roles right so for that we just give here eager so basically roles are retrieved eagerly so if you want to retrieve roles on demand then you can just specify lazy but we are going to give eager here because whenever we retrieve user along with user we also need to retrieve our roles okay it's associated roles and similarly let's add a cascade type here so let's add a cascade type as all so whenever we perform operations like persist merge remove refresh and detach on parent entity then this will be applied to the its child entities all right got it so whenever a parent entity will perform these operations like persist merge remove refresh and detach it also applicable to its childs okay in our case we have a user as a parent and roles as a child now as i mentioned earlier we are going to use a many to many right so in case of many to many we need to create a third table so let's use at the rate join table annotation to create a third table to maintain a mapping between these two tables so let's give a name to the third table let's say users underscore roles okay and in a third table we are maintaining a primary uh, the foreign key column side so let me summarize what we have done we have added at the rate many to many mapping annotation to maintain a many to many mapping between role user and role 
and this is a patch type eager so whenever we uh, want to retrieve roles eagerly then we can specify fetch type eager and if you want to retrieve a roles on demand then you can specify lazy here and cascade type all so whenever we perform all these operations like persist merge remove detach and refresh on parent entity it also applicable to its sales okay and here we have created a third table using at the rate join table annotation and third table has a uh, user id and role id as a columns and user id is a foreign key from user table so user table basically has a primary key as id so this id becomes a foreign key in a users underscore roles table and again this id is a primary key in a role table and this id becomes a foreign key in users underscore roles table so this is a pretty much many to many mapping between user and role okay now what we'll do we'll run our spring boot project and we'll see whether this these tables are created in a database or not okay let's go and let's run the spring boot project and let's verify our tables in a database all right so look at here the logs printed on a console so basically three tables are created role user and users underscore roles okay now let's switch to the mysql workbench and let's verify these tables in a database so let me refresh the database and here we go role user and users underscore roles so three tables are created and this is the third table it maintains a mapping between user and role table okay so this is the many to many mapping between user and role all right so first uh, we'll begin with a repository layer so before creating a you know repository we first need to create a package so let's go ahead and let's create a package let us say a repository okay under repository package we quickly create an interface right click on a package new and then choose interface and let's call interface as user repository all right and we are going to extend this repository from gp repository so gp repository basically exposes database crude operations on user entity and here we just need to pass type of the primary key as a second argument and now we just need to annotate this interface with add the repository annotation okay now we can able to leverage a crude database operations for user jpa entity great now it's time to create a service layer right click new and just create a package first service package and then right click on the service package new and then let's create first interface let's name it as user service okay so inside user service we basically create a save user method and we pass a dto object all right so first we need to create a dto object for that i am going to create a new package over here let's say web package so basically inside a web package we keep all spring mvc controllers as well as dto classes so inside a web package again let's create a one more sub package let's call it as dto so dto basically stands for data transfer object and this is a design pattern okay and we use dto object to transfer a data between server to client and vice versa okay instead of passing a single piece of information we can use dto object to pass a bulk amount of information from server to client so i have created a complete video tutorial on dto design pattern and i have published on my youtube channel already if you want to know more about dto design pattern then you can just look it out 
okay now we have created a detail package so inside detail package we are going to create a detail class so let's say user registration detail okay so let's quickly create a few fields like private string first name private string last name private string email private string uh, password all right and let's quickly create a getter setter methods to access these private fields and also quickly create a parameterized constructor Now let's quickly create a method inside a user service interface user and let's give a method name as save and here now we have created you know DTO class so let's pass the DTO class over here all right so this is the method that will basically save uh, user registered data okay great now let's quickly create a class right click on a service package new and then choose class let's give a class name as user service impl and this class implements user service interface and here we quickly override the method let's first annotate this class with at the rate service annotation so basically we use at the rate service annotation to annotate a service classes and at the rate service annotation internally uses at the rate component annotation okay now what we'll do we'll first again inject user repository interface so let's use at the rate uh, at the rate annotation to quickly inject private user user repository okay and this is user repository so this is the field base injection you can use either a constructor or setter base injection and field base injection is not recommended so we can use a constructor based injection over here so let me quickly create a constructor okay all right now let's let's create a user object here let's pass our data user a registration dto dot get first name and this is again uh, registration dto dot get last name and this is a registration dto dot get email a registration dto dot get password and here we pass a role okay so look at here what we have done we have created a class object user object and we have first post name last name and email address password and this is the role so the registered user role is role user okay you can create an enum to define the constant and also you can you know uh, you can retrieve a role from the database table and you can simply pass over here to keep it simple i'm going to just pass a role like this okay and basically we keep an password in an encrypted format in a database table so for time being let's keep a password 
as a text in a database table because we are not going to use a spring security right now okay so once you we use a spring security then that time we will use by crypt password encoder to encode you know this password and we will store encrypted password in database now for timing we will keep a password as a text okay great and now what we will do is simply save a user object to the database let's call save method and just pass user object okay it's pretty simple nothing fancy uh, what is the error over here uh, basically we need to create a constructor in a role class right so quickly create a constructor okay all right so we have completed service layer what we have done we have basically created a save method which will save a user registration data to the database now it's time to create a controller layer so we have already created a web package so let's go ahead and let's create a class over here let's name class as user registration controller and let's annotate this controller with at the rate controller annotation so this is the spring MUC provided controller annotation we can annotate this class so that uh, spring will you know recognize that this is a spring MUC controller and it it is able to handle HTTP requests now let's add uh, at the rate request mapping annotation and here we just pass the URL like registration okay and here we are going to quickly inject uh, user service interface implementation okay so we are going to use constructor base dependency injection here all right So now we are going to create a handler method which will handle HTTP POST request. So basically a registration form when a user will submit the registration form then that will be the POST request and that should be handled in a controller. So for that uh, we are going to create a method handler over here public and string and method name is a register user account okay and here we are going to use at the rate model attribute annotation and we pass a user object so basically this object contains a form data okay and we bind this form data to the DTO object that is user registration DTO and this is a registration DTO so I, I will show you how this uh, data comes from the uh, UI layer that uh, once we implement front end part okay now let's call user service dot save method and just pass this DTO object to this method and here we return a view okay so look at here we are just uh, redirecting to the registration uh, page with success message okay so here we just return the registration uh, view so basically once user registered successfully then we are going to show a success message right for that we are going to pass this success uh, you know flag that we will see once we implement a front-end part for a registration feature okay so this completes a backend implementation for you know a registration feature so we are going to use timelib so first we are going to create a timelib template engine so look at here this is a resource folder under that this is a templates folder inside templates folder we need to create a timelib templates okay 
so remember whenever spring boot finds spring boot time leap starter dependency and a class path then spring boot will automatically configure a view resolver for time leap template engine so we no need to manually add view resolver uh, configuration okay great now let's right click on a templates folder a new and then choose a HTML file okay and let's give a name to this file as registration dot HTML okay now we have a registration uh, time leap template so basically to handle this uh, you know view we need to create a handler method in controller okay so basically whenever we hit a url like localhost colon 8080 uh, slash registration then then we need to have a method handler which will return uh, you know a registration dot html page okay for that let's go ahead and let's create a method handler over here uh, let's say public string and let's call method as show registration form and this method returns the view so view name is a registration dot html so let's say registration okay we can skip dot html extension because this will be automatically handled by spring muc now let's annotate this method with at the rate get mapping annotation so this is going to be a http get method right okay great so look at here this is uh, the http post request oops we forgotten to add a post mapping annotation to this method so let's go ahead and let's add at the rate post mapping annotation because this method handler will handle post http request and this method handler will handle http get request now let's go ahead and let's design our registration page okay so first of all we are going to use a bootstrap css framework to make our web pages responsive and we again use a bootstrap css to style our web pages for that we are going to just add a bootstrap css library to our html page we are going to add cdn links just in a google search bootstrap 3.3.7 cdn okay so i am going to use bootstrap uh, 3 because i am most familiar with bootstrap 3 and yeah so you are free to use bootstrap 4 as well uh, just click on bootstrap 3.3.7 release and here you can find a cdn links okay bootstrap cdn links and here i'm just going to copy this and go to go to the again uh, our id and in a header section just paste okay great uh, let's change title over here let's replace this with a registration okay so here first what we'll do we'll create a navigation bar okay this is basically header navigation header and after that we are going to create a form create html form so basically this is the registration form okay great So let me add a code snippet so we are going to use bootstrap so it's pretty simple to use bootstrap provided uh, you know navigation bar or a header so let me quickly add a snippet here all right so look at here this is 
the navigation uh, fix top bar so this is basically a fix header and these are the bootstrap css classes and this is a container and this is the navigation bar header and this is the button for and uh, here we have a registration and login module text so this is basically this will navigate to the home home page so pretty simple you know navigation bar this is the code snippet it, it is available uh, on a booster app official website as well we can just search and we can just copy and paste it over here okay so this is the pix navigation top bar now let's go ahead and let's design a registration form okay so now we design uh, the registration form step by step so first let's add a new container over here new class container so container is a css class provided by bootstrap okay and here we add a uh, one module and class so we basically add a row row is again a css class provided by bootstrap and again we create one more div and again add a bootstrap css classes like we need to render a form in the middle so let's add a bootstrap grid css classes okay so this is a column 6 so please go through the bootstrap css grid system how it works and uh, basically a grid system is divided into 12 columns and we are going to align our registration form in a center so for that we have added offset here okay now once a user registers successfully then we need to show the success message right for that here we are going to add a snippet uh, this will show a success message so here I am going to just write the comment so that it will be easy for you to understand so look at here I am just going to add a message like you have successfully registered to our awesome app ok and this is the time leap uh, attribute this is the if condition uh, if if the attribute is success then we show this message okay so let me show you where this comes from so this comes from here from the controller so look at here once a user successfully registered then we just redirect to the registration page with success so this is the flag all right this is the flag indicates that a user is successfully registered and this flag we are just uh, you know uh, retrieving here success param dot success and if this is true then we just show uh, this text okay understood great now let's create a form let's add a h1 tag first and let's say registration the registration now let's go ahead and let's create a form form and let's make this action as time loop attribute so this is the action uh, basically we add here a url slash registration so at means that at here is that uh, it is a context path of our application and this is the url so once user submits a registration form then this request will go to the controller over here and this is the post request so this will call this method handler okay and here again we provide a method method is post all right so again look at here this is the important part th colon object so this is a timely part we would and here we need to provide a provide a object and this object basically uh, you know timely we will get this object from the controller 
okay so we basically create a one more method here which returns a empty uh, user object okay so we need to create a default user registration DTO constructor here so notice here this is the important step we are using at the rate model attribute annotation uh, to annotate this method okay and this method returns a new object of user registration DTO all right and this is the user so we are using this user object in a form so look at here here so whenever user enter a form data that data will be stored in a user so it is indirectly st uh, stores uh, in user DTO user registration DTO object all right so remember family basically gets a user object from here okay so this is a very important step just uh, uh, just try to understand so whenever timely wants to store a form data then this object will be uh, you know available from the controller from here so instead of this you can also pass the empty object uh, here so you can just create a model okay like this and uh, simply you can pass model dot attribute and here we can pass user and here you can pass object of the user registration DTO class this also works okay so to keep it simple I am going to use this approach so let me remove this okay great now let's again go back to the our HTML page now here we will create a input fields let's create a div class and let's add a bootstrap class form group okay and here we create a label and to the label let's add a classes uh, control label and here we have for attribute and let's say first name and label is first name right and inside a label uh, outside a label we just create an input field and let's I add an ID here so ID is first name and let's also add a class this is a CSS class uh, bootstrap CSS class form control and then we add a timely attribute to bind a field uh, to the user object so this is very important this is the first name so first name uh, it basically refer to the uh, the field that we have defined in a user DTO so here okay so the field name and the the this field name should equal okay and here what we'll do we'll add a validation required and auto focus okay great and let's uh, add a self closing tag so this is our input field for first name let's similarly add to the last name email and password let me copy this snippet and let's change accordingly last name this is the last name as I already mentioned this should be equal to uh, this right now where it is so just copy this last name 
go to the HTML page and here paste it here okay now again just copy this let me format uh, let, let me copy this and we are going to add email right email field so let's change accordingly this email and id email this is also email all right let's copy again and let's add a password field password and for password we don't want to show the password so for that we are going to use type here type equal to password all right and let's change this okay great now we have first name last name email and password field now let's go ahead and let's add a, a register button okay so look at here we have added a register button and after that we have added a login here a hyperlink so whenever we click on this link this will navigate to the login page so this will uh, this will implement in further videos okay great now let's go ahead and let's format this form and yeah we have done pretty much okay now let's go ahead and let's run the spring project and let us see how it looks right click on our main interpret class and then run as spring boot app Alright, our application is up and running on default embedded Tomcat server on port 8080. Now let's go to the browser and let's access this application. So in a new tab, just type localhost 8080. Okay. And we need to give a URL like registration. So this is the uh, URL to get a, a registration form okay so look at here how it looks like it looks good right so again we need to slightly modify our html page uh, go to the html page again and here we need to add a break tag save it let's go back to the browser and refresh here we go now it looks good right and look at here this looks responsive we have added bootstrap css classes to make our web page responsive so look at here how it looks like it looks good in mobile devices as well as uh, you know laptop desktop all right it, it will support basically in all the devices okay great now what we'll do, we'll fill up the details and we'll, uh, you know, register a user to see whether this functionality properly works or not. For that, let's go ahead and let's add a new user. Let's say Ramesh, first name, last name, further a email address, Ramesh at the gmail.com, password, give any password like password123, something like this. And hit register button. So look at here you have successfully registered to our awesome map so let's verify the data in a database so go to the mysql workbench refresh uh, database and let's let's select uh, records from the user table so look at here a uh, user ramesh user is successfully registered let's also verify the rules yeah look at here role user so we have provided a default 
roll to the user and let's also see the mapping yeah here we go here we go so it means that a user is successfully registered to our application and data is also successfully stored in a database table it means that our now let us see the validations if we don't give a first name here so look at here the validation please fill out, fill out uh, this field and if I give first name and if I again hit a register button this gives a uh, fill out this field so we have used a default HTML provided uh, you know uh, validations we haven't implemented server side validations all right so I'm not going to cover server side validation uh, I, uh, you can just take it as exercise and you can implement server side validation for this form okay if you struck anywhere then you can uh, refer my website uh, tutorials where I have shown you how to you know uh, implement server side validation for forms uh, in Spring MSC web applications I will provide a link in the video description just have a look into it all right so this completes our uh, registration feature in great so let's have a look into first a uh, spring boot auto configuration for spring security so whenever spring boot you know finds spring security started dependency on a class path then spring boot will auto configure spring security so spring boot basically uh, provides a default user and password and also provides a default login page all right so spring boot will you know provide a encrypted password and it will print on a console let me show you quickly let's go and let's run our spring project and we are able to see a encrypted password that is generated by spring security and it will print on a console uh, here we can see mm, yeah here we go so look at here this is the generated security password and it is in an encrypted format all right and spring security also provides a default login page uh, let me show you go to the browser and in a tab just type localhost 8080 so look at here this is the default login page provided by spring security and yeah so you can either use a default login page or you can also provide your custom login page for your you know application so it's uh, depends on you and as per the requirement so in this uh, uh, project uh, that is registration and login tutorial series we are going to create our own custom login page and uh, we are not going to use a default spring security provided login page all right great so this is how default uh, auto configuration uh, provided by spring boot apart from that uh, you can also use some predefined properties here so look at here these are the two properties provided by spring boot to you know to default configure user and password all right so also it provides a uh, roles spring yeah here we go so you can also configure role for this particular user okay great so either you can use a default spring security configuration provided by spring boot or you can also customize your own spring security and in this video tutorial series we are going to customize our spring security uh, that is we are going to provide our own custom login page as well as we are going to authenticate uh, username and password with the database so we are totally focusing on uh, you know custom implementation so for that we are going to remove this part okay let me stop the server let's go ahead and let's create a package so right click on main package new and then choose package and let's call package as config and we are going to create a spring configuration class so for that uh, let's go ahead and let's create a class let's name it as spring uh, that is uh, security configuration all right all right so let's use add configuration annotation to make this class as a spring configuration class so let's add add configuration annotation 
and also we need to add at the rate enable web security configuration so this will basically integrate spring security with spring muc and it will also enable web security support okay and again here we need to uh, extend web security configure adapter class all right so basically this provides this class provides convenient base class for creating web security configure instance the implementation allows customization by overriding methods so basically this class provides a overloaded config methods to provide our own custom configurations so we basically override couple of config methods and we will configure spring security all right let us see how to do it let's override config method so look at here we just uh, overridden config method and here in inside this method we provide uh, all the configuration spring security configuration like uh, accessing uh, static resources and the urls and for example so let me quickly write the code to configure the urls so here basically we provide access to some uh, urls for example registration uh, js files css files and images so we are going to permit right so let's call permit all method and again we are going to authenticate any request right mm, any request dot authenticated all right and then we are going to use uh, form login right for that let's call form login and then the login page So we are going to create a custom login page and we need to configure url to access custom login page for that just provide a url here like this and then permit all so we are uh, we are permitting this url uh, basically all all the users can able to access this url and then and log out invalidated invalidate uh, http session true and then clear authentication also true all right and then uh, we provide a logout url configuration So once user click on logout button then user should able to navigate to the login page with a logout as a message okay and then finally uh, we need to permit access to these links right so let's call permit all method so what we have done would we have overridden config method and we have provided access to the different uh, urls like a registration a jss file js files css and image and also we have given uh, access to the custom login page and logout all right it's pretty simple configuration now let's go ahead and let's create a password encoder okay so look at here we are using java based configuration hence uh, here I have provided at the rate bin annotation and we are going to use a uh, bycrypt password encoder to encode a password okay great and notice that we are we are using spring data jpa and hibernate right so in order to integrate spring data jpa and hibernate in spring sec with spring security we need to provide a uh, 
bin over here that is DAO authentication provider all right and so look at here this is a password encoder bin so just we are providing as a dependency to the uh, DAO authentication provider so look at here so this DAO authentication provider provides a method called set password encoder and here we are just setting a password encoder all right and we are we are uh, using by crypt password encoder to encrypt the password and here we need to provide a user details service implementation so basically spring security provides user details service interface it has a load user details method so basically we need to implement this interface and we need to provide as a dependency to this bin okay so for that what we do we'll quickly uh, inject user service interface over here user service and user service okay now look at here the error uh, you this interface should implement user details service interface all right so now what we do we'll go to the user service interface and let's extend user details service interface and again inside user service implementation class we need to override a method here load user by username and we need to provide the implementation here we have a bin in place that is password encoder authentication provider now we need to pass authentication provider to the config method so let's override one more config method and just pass authentication provider to that let me quickly do that so look at here just uh, have overridden config method it has authentication manager builder class as a parameter and here i am just passing authentication provider uh, as a dependency to the authentication provider uh, method uh, it's pretty simple uh, spring security configuration so let me recap what we have done we have added spring security starter dependency to the pom.xml and next we have created a class spring security spring configuration class which annotated with add configuration annotation and add enable web security annotation and this class extends web security configure adapter and then we have overridden couple of config methods and so this is the config method and here uh, we provided access to different urls like registration js css and image and also login and logout and inside this config method we just provide authentication provider okay and as we are using java based configuration hence we need to create a bins like this okay this is a spring bin uh, we have used at the red bin annotation to create a bin if you are using annotation based configuration then you need to use at component annotation okay all right so this is all about spring security configuration in our Spring Boot project. And we need to provide one more method in a user repository. Let me quickly. So here, uh, basically, we write a method, uh, and uh, this method will retrieve a user object by email address. Okay. So look at here, find by email method. So this method will basically retrieve a user from the database uh, by email okay so, th so this is the method naming convention that we need to provide for spring data jp so spring data jp basically uh, create a database query based on the method names okay so this is the method so this method will basically retrieve a user object by email address now let's go back to the user service IMPL class let's go ahead and let's uh, write logic here okay so let's first retrieve a user object from the database user user 
and then here user repository so inside a user repository just we have created a method right that is find by email and here we need to pass email address so username is nothing here and nothing but email address over here so from the login screen we pass an email address and password so here we need to retrieve a user object by email okay now what we'll do we'll just check whether if user equal to equal to null and then we simply throw user not found exception user not not found exception and let's give a user defined message over here that is invalid username is username or password something like this okay and here we just return a user object so notice here this is the important so this user object is basically belongs to spring security okay so this is the user object that we need to return all right so user details is the interface and user is the class which implements user details interface and user user object is basically belongs to spring security and here we need to just provide a, a data user dot get email and then provide user dot get password and here we need to pass the roles so let me create a separate method to retrieve our roles for timing i'm just pass null here okay and here what we'll do we'll create a method which will map uh, roles to the authorities let's say private and here we have collection and this should extends granted authority and let's call method name as map rules to authorities and here we simply pass collection of rules okay so what we are going to do here is we are going to simply convert role into authorities so spring security expecting uh, authorities right Mm, return null and here we simply map a role to the authorities so let's use stream api for example roles dot stream so we are going to leverage java features here and then map and we are going to simply iterate over stream of roles right so here role and here let's use lambda expression and this is a simple granted authority and here we simply pass the role name that is role.get name and finally we simply collect the result and here let's say collectors collectors dot to collection right collection is not there so just pass to list okay and let's remove null here we have just created an object so let's return this it's pretty simple right so what we have done we have you we have just converted roles into stream on top on top of stream we just map a role and uh, we converted a role into simple granted authority object which is the spring security provided class and we just pass a role name to the simple granted authority class and finally we collected a stream into a list okay finally we converted stream into list and just we return this list here okay and here we have passed null right previously now we have created a method so let's go ahead and let's uh, pass method instead of null over here so here what we'll do we we'll simply get a roles from the user object that's it it's pretty simple right what we have done 
we have retrieved a user object uh, from the database using find by email method and we have just checked whether user is null or not if it is null that we, we simply throw the user not found exception and if user is not null then we just create a user object that is provided by spin security and we pass email and password and roles to the user object and here we have just mapped uh, roles to the authorities so authority is basically a uh, spring security term and we need to create a simple granted authority object so basically collection of simple granted authority objects okay we have used a stream api over here we converted roles into stream and stream provides a map method so here we simply map a role uh, to the simple granted authority and finally we collect the result as a list and we just return okay it's pretty simple uh, implementation all right guys we have almost completed a login uh, you know uh, backend part i guess we need to con create one more uh, method handler so basically we create spring muc controller so go to the web package and new and then create a class let's call uh, this class as a main uh, controller so this spring mvc controller will basically serve uh, time lip templates let's annotate this class with at the rate controller annotation and inside this class we are going to create a method called log public this returns string and login okay so let's return simply a login page and let's annotate this method with at the rate um, get mapping annotation and here we need to provide a url like login okay so this method handler will uh, return a login page so whenever we access a url a login url from the browser localhost 8080 slash login then this method handler will get called and then this method handler will simply return a login time lip template so let's go ahead and let's quickly uh, auto wire private um, this is by kept password encoder okay now let's use encode method of this this class here so look at here a encode method so password encoder that is by kept password 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 encoder object provides encode method we can use encode method to encode the password in encrypted format so look at here this algorithm sha1 algorithm it uses internally all right and we simply pass a password to the encode method like this so this will basically generate an encoded format for password and then it will be stored in a database all right, all right guys this completes a back and forth for login feature in So go to the templates folder within a templates folder right click new and choose a html file if it is not there go to the other and here choose html file let's give a name to the html file as login.html page okay uh, let's simply replace the title over here just your registration and login app okay great so look at here this is a registration.html page so this page we were uh, you know developed in previous videos and we have we are also going to use spring uh, we are we have also used bootstrap css framework to make our web pages responsive and uh, look at here this is the cdn link for bootstrap uh, CSS library so I'm going to just copy this link and again go to the login page and in header section just paste it all right school now what we'll do we'll simply create a navigation bar right so look at here in registration.html page we have created our navigation for using using spray, uh, bootstrap CSS framework all right so this is the fix 
navi navigation bar that you know bootstrap css framework provides so let's quickly copy this and go to the login page again and let's paste it here so you can create this common piece of code as a separate file and you can just include it okay and now what we'll do we'll let's design a login page now let's create a do do class and here just use bootstrap css class like container and inside a container again we are going to create a one more do and let's use a row css class and again inside uh, this video again we are going to create one more view and let's use a class we're going to align our login page in the center for that we are going to use offset offset css class and this is the bootstrap css grid system if you don't know bootstrap css grid system then please go through it okay now inside this view i am going to create a h1 tag and let's say login i'm going to call it as user login page something like this okay and here what we'll do we'll create a form and here we're going to use timelib attributes so this is the timelib action attribute and here let's use at so at is basically a context path of our application and here we provide a request url so once we click on a submit button then this this request will be handled and again this is the post method right great now what we do we'll add a due here uh, basically whenever user enters invalid user and password then we simply print here a error message okay so let me quickly add a do here so look at here if user enters enters invalid username and password then uh, we just check whether uh, if, there, if there is any invalid username and password if it is there then we simply print invalid username and password like this okay great so let me add one more do here so whenever user click on logout button then user should be able to navigate to the login screen with a logout message right let us say logout message for example if user click on logout button then user will navigate to the login screen and in a login screen we pop up you have logged in successful message okay so basically this param dot logout comes from here let me show you go to the security configuration and look at here once user click on logout button then uh, success url so look at here user should navigate to the login screen with logout message all right so this message we receive here okay if it is true then this message will be popped up all right and now it's time to create some input fields to receive a username and password okay let's create a do class and this is a form group and this is the css class that is provided by uh, bootstrap css library so inside a do we simply create a label okay and it has four attribute and here we simply say username okay so let's call it as username or you can just give uh, you know uh, email address and after that let's have an input field here type as text and class as form control and then id equals to username okay and name equals to username 
and let's say face holder username let's say enter email id okay and this is auto focus all right so this is the input field for username so similarly let me quickly add a input field for password so look at here same uh, code we need to just replace from username to password here okay and here input type is password id name and again placeholder password enter password all right so once we have user and password fields next to create a submit button let me quickly create a submit button so look at here same code so this is a div with css class form group and we have created a row inside that we have created an input input type type as submit so this is the button so once user enters username and password and you it hits a button this login button then this request will be uh, processed by spring security all right now what we'll do we'll add a link over here so whenever a user first time comes to the application user should have to register to the application right before login so we provide a navigation link over here so after this due just add a button called a registration so if user is new new to the application then user should click on register here link so this will be handled by registration method handler which is written in uh, here user registration controller okay great now this completes a uh, front end part for login feature now let's go ahead and let's quickly test this one okay uh, let me run the spring boot project quickly all right so let's go back to the browser and let us access uh, login url in a browser just type localhost 8080 and then login all right look at here the login screen so let me quickly fix this issue so look at here header is uh, just overlapping by navigation bar go to the login.html page and here let's uh, add some back points back text and again go back to the browser save this file and go back to the browser and refresh yeah here we go the page looks good right now what we'll do first we'll register and then we'll use our register credentials to login so let's click on a register here button and here i will say first name is john and last name sina and email address john at the red gmail.com and password let's say password and hit register so look at here uh, user is registered successfully now we'll use a registered uh, email address and password to login to the application go to the login page again and enter join at the red gmail.com and password as password and hit login uh, oops we got some error here so let me see the console so look at here we got some exception like no default constructor for entity user we have created a parameters constructor but we haven't created a default constructor so it's important remember whenever you create a parameters constructor you have to create a default constructor because hibernate uses proxy internally and uh, hibernate accepts default constructor for jp entity okay so let's create a default constructor for user or jp entity all right so similarly let's create a default constructor for role all right so let me quickly rerun the application now let's go back to the browser and just type login localhost800 login username is 
john at the at gmail com and password is password and hit login so user is successfully authenticated but uh, after successful login user login then we don't have a home page okay that's why we got 404 not found error we will we'll, we'll implement a home page all right and once user successfully authenticated then we navigate to the home page let us see how to do it So what we first will do, we'll create a handler method to handle a home page request. So here go to the main controller class and here we are going to write a handler method. Let's set public string and let's call method as home. And here we simply return a time -lip template name as index. So index index.html is our home page. Let's annotate this method with add the get mapping annotation and here what we'll do is simply slash. So this is our home page method handler. It's pretty simple, right? Now what we'll do we'll just copy this method name. Let's stop the server. okay copy this index and go to the templates folder within a templates folder create a new stmo file let's call it as index.stmo file okay great now what we'll do we'll simply replace the title with a registration and login app okay and as we are using bootstrap css library let me quickly copy the link so this is the cdn link for bootstrap css library let me paste it in a header section and uh, now what we'll do we'll also copy a navigation uh, snippet so this is the fixed navigation bar uh, snippet uh, which we can get from bootstrap official website so let me just paste it in a body section all right now what we'll do we'll add some break tags over here and after that we just create a due and let us say let's give a class CSS class as container all right so we we'll simply uh, print the message over here once user successfully logged in then we simply uh, print the message on a home page like uh, registration and login with spring boot spring security time leap have been written mysql like this okay Spread. now let's run the spring boot project and let us see how home page works right click new and spring boot app let's go back to the browser in a browser just type localhost 8080 slash login okay and uh, previously we have registered a user called john so let's use john at the gmail.com as a username and password as password and hit login yeah here we go so once user authenticate successfully then user should navigate to the home page so this is the home page just that just we have uh, developed all right now what we'll do we'll simply print a um, username over here okay so whoever logged in so let us say john user is logged in right now what we'll do we'll simply print a john email on the home page all right so what we'll do we'll add a code snippet here to just print a user email id on a home page so this is a very important step uh, so just remember whenever we want to print uh, you know user that username that is provided by spring security on a time leap then we need to perform these steps so first we need to add spring security time leap integration dependency so let me quickly show you how to do it go to the palm XML and here let's add time leap 
Spring Security Dependency. So this dependency will provide integration with Timelip and Spring Security. All right. So this is the important dependency that you need to have a look into. So whenever if you want to use Spring Security related uh, attributes or you want to paint something related to Spring Security on a time lip, then you need to use this dependency. Okay. Once you use this dependency, then what we will, we will do, we will simply print a user email address on a home page. So look at here, this is uh, the time lip attribute related to Spring Security and principal dot username. So Spring Security will provide a uh, username like this. So this is the syntax to retrieve a username from the Spring Security object. So this will print a email address of logged in user. Okay. Now in order to avoid this warning, so this is the warning, right? So what we'll do, we'll add a, a attribute to the HTML element, like so. This is the time lib uh, URL that we need to add to the HTML element in order to avoid the warnings okay now let's go back to the browser and let us see the username should populate it on a home page or not so let me again log in john at gmail.com and password password and hit login so welcome user okay we haven't uh, printed email address let us see what is the issue so let me restart the server and let us see the changes so changes are not reflecting on timelip uh, html page so let me just quickly restart the server and let us see the changes okay go back to the browser again so just refresh the login url uh, give username as john at gmail.com and password as password and hit login so look at here welcome john at gmail.com all right so logged in user uh, email address is printed on a home page okay so once you change timelip template then you you may restart the spring boot application then you can see the uh, you know the time lip template is reflected with username okay so this is the important step so whenever you want to uh, populate spring security related stuff like username uh, roles etc then you need to add spring security with time lip dependency like uh, just we have added in a pom.xml right so this is the dependency you need to add and then you need to provide a uh, attributes like this okay great now what we'll do we'll add a you know logout implementation so once user logged in successfully then user will navigate to the home page so on a home page we'll provide a logout link so whenever user want to log out from the application so user simply click on log out button to log out from the application all right it's pretty simple let me show you how to do it so here inside a navigation snippet so here what we'll do we'll add a logout link here so look at here this is the do just i have added and this is the link logout okay so you can add any other tabs here like home uh, about us uh, or services etc so for timing we keep a logout tab over here okay so once user click on logout then see this request will be handled in a security configuration class so look at here so once user hit the logout link then that a request will be navigated to the login page with logout message okay so look at here logout success url all right great uh, let me go back to the home page again 
and this is again a time leap attribute related to spring security if user is authenticated then only i i can able to see the log output okay it's pretty simple nothing fancy here so let's restart the server again and let us see how the logout works i hope you are getting the stuff so it is pretty important stuff whenever you use time leap with spring security then this these are the necessary steps you need to do server is already started so let me stop the existing server and restart again all right cool now let's go back to the browser and let's access login page all right let's again login with the user john at the rate gmail.com and password as password and hit login button so user is successfully logged in and username is created on a home page and look at here login logout link all right so this is the logout uh, link that we have just given in a home page right now once user click on logout then user should be able to log out from the application so let's go ahead and let's click on logout link yeah here we go so look at here user is successfully logged out from the application and user should navigate it to the login page with the error message uh, with uh, a message like uh, you have logged out okay it means that logout functionality is working properly go ahead and let's uh, have a demo end to end okay first i will do what i will do i will register a user uh, with my name ramesh last name for the and email as ramesh at the rate uh, gmail.com at the rate 24 further at the, at the rate gmail.com password as password all right and hit register so now ramesh user is successfully registered now what i will do i will just log into the application go to the login page and enter a email id as ramesh24 at the rate gmail.com password as password and hit login yeah here we go welcome ramesh all right so this is the home page and click on logout so user should be able to log out from the application So here is our high level project requirement. We are going to create a web application for employee management system where users should be able to perform all these operations. So users should be able to get all the employees, users should be able to add a new employee, users should be able to update an existing employee and users should be able to delete an existing employee. So these are the features that, that we are going to develop in this video tutorial. All right. So let me show you what exactly we are going to develop in this video tutorial. We are going to develop employee management system application and look at here these are the basic crude operations that we are going to implement in this video tutorial. We are going to implement add employee, update, delete and list employee features. So let me add a new employee here. So first name is John, last name Sina, employee email john at the rate gmail.com and hit save employee button so look at your new employees added to the employee list and similarly i can able to update an existing employee so let us say it's a john and let's update it john123 and let's update email address from john at the rate gmail.com to cena at the rate gmail.com and hit update employee button so look at here i can able to update an existing employee similarly i can able to delete the existing employee so look at here this employee i'm going to delete click on delete button so look at here john123 employee is deleted from the employee list all right so this is the code operations that we are going to implement in this video tutorial all right great now let's take a look at our big picture 
So we'll start with our web browser and then request first will come to the employee controller and then it sends to the employee service and it goes to the employee repository and then it hits to the database. Then the employee repository will retrieve a data from MySQL database and again the data will be sent to the employee service and then employee controller. Employee controller will basically you know return a view that is the timelip template and that template will be again rendered on a web browser. This is the typical flow in our Spring MVC web application. This is the high level architecture of our Spring Boot project. So probably you know about front end and back end right. At a front end we are going to use timelip template engine to develop a view layer and at the back end we are going to develop three layer architecture controller layer, service layer and DAO layer. At a controller layer we are going to use Spring MUC to develop a Spring MUC controllers which will handle all the HTTP requests. And employee service so basically we keep all business logic in employee service and we do a transaction related stuff in employee service. And the employee repository basically uh, it has a responsibility to establish a connection with a MySQL database and it exposes crude database operations for employee entity. Okay. And at a database, we are going to use MySQL database. So, this is a typical application architecture. Now, let's have a look into the tools and technologies that we'll be using. We'll use Eclipse ID to develop our Spring MUC web application. We use Spring Boot 2.2.6. This is the latest release of Spring Boot as of now. And Spring Boot 2 internally uses Spring Framework for you. We are going to use Marvin for dependency management and project build tool. And we're going to use Java 8. We're going to use Spring Data JPA to develop our repository or DAO layer. Spring Data JPA internally uses Hibernate as a default JPA provider. And we use Spring Data JPA basically to reduce a boilerplate code that is required to develop a DAO layer. And we're gonna use Timelip to develop our view layer. All right. I'm in Eclipse STS ID. Let's go ahead and let's quickly create and set up our Spring Boot project. Go to the file and new, and then choose Spring Starter Project. You can also use Spring Initializer website. You can access from the web browser. So this is a Spring Initializer website through which we can quickly create and bootstrap Spring based projects. All right. You can use either Spring Initializer from the browser or you can use Spring Initializer in a Spring Toolsuit ID. And Spring Initializer is integrated in Spring Toolsuit ID. So I am going to use Spring Initializer to quickly create and set up our Spring Boot project. All right. Here, let's give name to our project as Spring Boot Time Leap Crude Web App. So we are going to develop a simple real-time project using Spring Boot and Time Leap. And we are going to use Marvin. So let's keep type as a Marvin here. And I'm going to use packaging as a jar and keep Java version 8 language java and group i'm gonna go give group id as net.java guides but you can give any group id that you want and the artifact id is going to be our project name let's keep version and deep for a description as it is and package as net.java dot springwood you can give any package name that you want all right once you are happy with the details click on next and let's keep Spring Boot version as it is because this is a stable and latest release of Spring Boot version and this is recommended by Spring Boot team. So let's keep this Spring Boot version as it is. And this is the you know uh, latest and stable version of Spring Boot as of now. And here we're gonna select uh, Spring Boot starter dependencies. All right. So let's go ahead and let's pick up Spring Boot web starter dependency all right uh, spring web dependency okay so we use spring web dependency to build web applications as well as restful applications and spring web starter dependency internally provides 
Apache Tomcat as embedded default servlet container. Okay, and let's go and let's pick this dependency. And we're gonna use Spring Data JPA. All right, to develop a repository layer or a DAO layer, we're gonna use Spring Data JPA. And Spring Data JPA internally uses Hibernate as a JPA provider. So basically we use Spring Data GPA to reduce a boilerplate code that is required to develop a DAO layer. And we're gonna use Thymeleap template engine. So let's type Thymeleap. So we use Thymeleap to develop our view layer. All right. And we're gonna use MySQL database. So let's go ahead and let's choose MySQL JDBC driver. Let's type MySQL here. So this is a MySQL JDBC driver. And we also use Spring Boot Dev Tools. Okay, so this is the cool uh, feature provided by Spring Boot. So whenever we do some changes in our Spring Boot project, so this dependency will automatically restart the application. So that we will see in a application development. All right. So these are the dependencies that we need to develop our real-time project using Spring Boot and Thymeleap. All right, let's hit finish. So this will create a Spring Boot project in Eclipse STS ID. All right, look at here. This is the default structure of Spring Boot project. So whenever we create a Spring Boot project using Spring Initializer, then this is the default structure of our Spring Boot project. This is the main entry point class of our Spring Boot project. And look at here, this is a Spring Boot application annotation. This annotation triggers auto configurations and component scanning. All right, and this annotation is equivalent to declaring add configuration, add enable auto configuration, and add component scan annotation. So instead of adding these three annotations, we can simply add add Spring Boot application to trigger auto configurations in Spring Boot project. Okay, this is application.property file where we configure all the application level properties. And this is a templates folder under resource uh, directory. So under templates folder, we keep all the time lip templates. This is the pom.xml file where we keep all the Marvin dependencies and plugins and build related things. All right. Now what we'll do, we'll create our packaging structure. So let's go ahead and let's create a packaging structure as per our project architecture. All right, so we're gonna see how to create three layer architecture. For that, we create a package. First, we create a controller package. Next, we create a service package where we keep all the service classes. And under controller package, we keep all the Spring MUC controllers. Okay, let's go ahead and let's create one more package. Let's name it as repository. Under repository, we keep all the JP repositories. Let's go ahead and let's create one more package and let's name it as model. So we keep all the domain models under model package. Okay. So this is the typical uh, packaging structure for our Spring MEC view application. Now we have created a project packaging structure. Now we will configure a database. Open the application.properties file and here we configure MySQL database. So look at here, this is the GDBC URL for MySQL database and we're going to use demo as our database and this is a username and password and this is a MySQL dialect for Hibernate and this is this is a property which we can use to automatically create a tables in a database and we also enable debug logs for Hibernate okay so this will simply print a logs onto the console so this is uh, the you know uh, database compilation in application.properties file 
Now we'll create a database in MySQL database. Open MySQL Workbench and here just type the statement create database and let's give our database name as demo. You can give any database name that you want and just execute this statement. This will create a demo project in MySQL Workbench. Okay, so MySQL Workbench is a client which we can use to connect to the MySQL server. Alright, this is one of the popular MySQL client. Alright, once we configure MySQL database and once we create a MySQL database, then what we'll do, we'll create a JP entity. Right, we need to create a domain model, right? So go to the model package, new and then choose class. Let's give a domain model name as employee let's create few fields private long id private string first name private string last name and then private string email all right let's go ahead and let's quickly create a get setter methods to access these private fields great now we have a simple java class let's make this java class as a jp entity by using jp annotation let's use entity annotation here let's also use a table annotation to provide table details let's give a table name as employees you can also give a schema name by using schema attribute here all right So look at here this is a schema attribute you can give a schema name here but we can skip as of now let's use at id annotation to provide a primary key of our entity let's use add generated value annotation to provide a primary key generation strategy all right strategy generated generation type dot add entity okay and here we can use add column annotation to map a column name to this field okay so here we can use name first underscore name let's go and let's copy this and we can also give a name to the last name like last underscore name and email okay so we if you don't give add column annotation then by default the column name is the field name all right and if you don't specify add table add table annotation here then by default the table name is the class name okay this is a very simple jp entity all right now what we have done we have created a spring boot project we have created a packaging structure and we have configured MySQL database in application.properties and we have also created a database and we have created a JP entity. Now we're gonna implement list employee feature step by step. Okay, first we'll start with a repository. So let's go ahead and let's right click on a repository new and then choose interface. And let's give a name as employee repository all right and let's extend this interface to jpa repository okay so basically jpa repository exposes screw database operations for employee entity okay and here id is nothing but the type of the primary key let's annotate this interface with add repository annotation all right great now we can able to get a uh, crude database operations for employee entity by using jpa repository now let's go and let's create a service right click new and choose class so first we'll create a interface right click new and then choose interface let's name it as employee service okay 
and let's quickly create a method list list of employees right let's call this method as get all employees okay it's pretty simple method now we're gonna create a class which implements this interface let's name this class as employee service impl okay and this class will implement employee service interface and then we're gonna override the method here and we simply first auto wire employee repository okay so here we are just injecting employee repository using at auto wire annotation now here we return a list of employees right so return employee repository dot find all method so find all, find all method basically returns a list of employees so look at the return type of find all method okay great now we have created get all employees method all right so this will basically uh, return a list of employees to the controller now I'm gonna create a Spring MVC controller. Right click new and create a class. Let's name it as employee controller. Let's annotate this employee controller with at the rate controller annotation. So what we'll do, we'll create a method handler which will display list of employees. All right and here i'm just going to write the comment display list of employees all right let's create a method handler public and we need to supply a list of employees to the view layer for that we need to use a model here And let's annotate this method handler with at the rate request mapping annotation or we can also use at the rate get mapping annotation all right now what we'll do we'll add data to the model let's use at attribute and uh, method here add attributes with q value pair right so here i will give a list employees and here i'm gonna call so before that we need to inject service class right let's use add auto add annotation and here just inject employee service And let's call this employee service here dot get all employees and here we just return the view name that is let's call it is an index let's call home uh, time lip template as an index okay so what we have done we have you know we have retrieved a list of employees and we have added to the model here and we just return the index so this is the you know time lip template that we will uh, design right now so look at here this is the templates folder under resource directory and we need to create all time lip templates under templates folder because spring muc needs a view resolver right in order to resolve the views so whenever spring boot finds a time leap starter dependency on a class path then it will automatically configure a view resolver for time leap template engine so we no need to manually add a view resolver for time leap template engine and by default spring boot will pick up 
timelib templates from templates folder hence we need to create timelib templates under templates folder all right let's right click on it new and then choose html file and here we need to give a name as index so this is our home page which will display a list of employees let's design time leap template so let's replace title with the employee management system so our project name is employee management system right and here let's create a div and let's align this div to the center align center and here we create a h1 tag and here we simply call as employees list and then we create a table and then we create the table header all right and this is the table body under table header we create a row here and then here th and let's call it as employee first name all right so you can start coding with me so that you will get a hands-on experience and then let's say employee last name let's create one more header and this is employee email okay and in the body we create again a row let me quickly add time lead code here So look at here we are using time leap uh, directives here so you are just uh, iterating over a list of employees so this list employees we got from the controller from here okay and here we just uh, iterate over list employees using you know uh, time leap directive and here we are using time leap expression to render by employee first name last name and email all right this is pretty simple time lip template for home page to render list of employees okay great now we have completed end-to-end -end, you know uh, list employee feature mm, what else remaining I think uh, we have done it so what we'll do we'll run the application and we'll see the demo so before that uh, what I will do I will insert some records into a database okay so first we'll run the Spring Boot project then Hibernate will automatically create a employee table in a database and then we'll insert our employee records okay so in order to run the Spring Boot project go to the main entry point of our class right click run as Spring Boot app or Spring Boot project So look at here the logs. We have basically configured log levels for Hibernate in application properties file, right? Hence, there are a lot of logs are printing on a console here. Uh, oops, we got some error here. Oops, we forgot to add annotation to the service, I guess. So here, basically, we need to add at the rate service annotation and also we need to provide at the transactional annotation so we can skip this annotation because spring data gpa internally will handle the transactions so we can skip this annotation now what we'll do we'll run our spring boot project once again spring boot app no errors in our application setup 
now our application is up and running on embedded Tomcat server on port 8080 now let's go to the browser and let, let's access this uh, employee list page in a browser tab just type localhost colon 8080 so this will give uh, this will display the page looks like this so let's open index.xml file here and uh, we just provide a border for our table border one okay and then again refresh so here you here you can see we have just provided a border for table now what we'll do we'll add few records to the employee table in a database go to the mysql workbench here refresh it and you can see in a demo database employee tables is created let's insert few records let's apply apply and finish now we have inserted three records in a employees table so basically we insert these records by using uh, add a new employee page that will implement in further videos okay go to the web browser again refresh it yeah here you can see we can able to see three employees just that we have inserted in a employees table right in database Ramesh, Sina, Tony Stark all right so this is how we have implemented end-to-end -end employee list feature now what we'll do we'll add some bootstrap css and we will style our web page now what we'll do we'll add a bootstrap css to the uh, our html page for that we need to add a bootstrap css library right so what i will do i will get some bootstrap css uh, from the cdn site so you can copy this uh, link you can just search for cdn bootstrap then you can able to get this link okay so instead of downloading and adding to the project i can use this cdn provided bootstrap css file okay now once we have bootstrap css file we can able to add a classes right so let's go ahead and let's add some classes css classes to the table here mm, class And this is a table table stripped and table responsive okay now let's go to the browser and let's refresh again now you can see uh, some changes happened on our web page right we have just added bootstrap css uh, classes so that uh, our table looks good right so let's go ahead and let's add few more css classes and let's make this web page beautiful uh, what we'll do we'll add a container here class container so this will basically add a div container now again refresh again you can see here now our web page looks good right so we can get this h1 tag here at the top I remove this align center this is not required because we have added uh, you know container here now again let's go ahead and let's refresh it now our web page looks like looks good right all right so this is how we have implemented end-to-end -end list in five feature now what we'll do we'll add a button here through which we can able to add a new employee all right let's let's first uh, do, you know complete uh, uh, backend part so first what we'll do we'll create a method so in a repository we can get a you know save uh, method but uh, in a service layer we need to create a save employee method right 
so here I'm gonna call save employee method and here we need to pass the employee object right as a method argument and you know employee service I MPL let's override this method and here just call employee repository and then save the employee here all right great now we have created a save employee method which will save a employee to the database now what we'll do we'll add a link to the index.html page so look at here uh, this is the code basically which displays a list of employees and here we're gonna create a link this is actually a hyperlink th colon href so look at here this is the time leap uh, directive and here we provide at this is new employee form something like this okay a uh, new employee form let's call it as a show new employee form okay and here uh, let's say add employee okay so look at here if you mouse over on this tag it says undefined attribute name okay so in order to ignore this what we can do here is we can just add time leap uh, link here okay now you can see it will identify this attribute now okay local host 8080 so look at here we have just added a link so let me add some bootstrap css so that we can make this hyperlink as a button so first thing you need to do is just copy uh, we have already added bootstrap you know uh, link here bootstrap css link and now what we'll do we'll just add here okay i have just added bootstrap css here now let's refresh yeah look at here add employee button okay now it looks good now what we'll do we'll implement a method handler to handle this request let's copy this url and let's go to the employee controller and here we'll write the method handler to handle show employee form request okay uh, public and then string let's give a method name as show new employee form and this is get mapping and here just provide this url here and we are going to return some model so let's get a model object and here we create an employee object okay so let me add a comment here so we create a model attribute to bind a form data so here we, what i will do i will that add a employee here and then i will just assign employee to employee so this is a key and this is the value and we use this model to bind form data that we will see a bit later now let's go and let's return a view that is new underscore employee so this is the thumbnail template name that we will create a bit later okay now what we have done we have created a method handler which will handle show new employee form uh, request so this request comes from index.html page here okay 
now what we'll do we'll create a time leap template from which we can add a new employee so right click on templates folder new and then other and here choose a demo file let's name it as new underscore employee dot html now let's design this page now just replace the title with employee management management system and here let's create a div all right and we will be using bootstrap css right for that what we can do is we can just copy from the index.html so this is the cdn link for bootstrap css file let's add it inside a header okay and here what we'll do we'll add h1 so this is our project name right employee management system and then here add horizontal line here okay and then h2 so let's call it as save employee all right now what we'll do we'll create a form form so this is the action th colon action and again in order to avoid this undefined attribute name error or warning what we can do is we can just copy this and we can paste it here okay and action is uh, we can give a, a URL like this save employee all right so we'll implement method handler for this bit later again th object this is employee and here we have a method right method is a post okay so we can remove this and this is the action this is basically a time lip tag and you can assign action to hash here all right now let's create a input fields input is type type is text th and this is field look at here the important part syntax first name so here we use star curly braces to refer uh, attribute of the employee object so first name is attribute of employee object right so to access property of employee object we're gonna use syntax like this okay understood and let's add a placeholder here let's call it as employee first name and let's add a bootstrap css form control and column 4 okay let me format it okay let me quickly copy this and let's do it for other fields and this is for last name and this is for email okay it's pretty simple and let's also change placeholder employee last name and this is employee email great now let's add a submit button here type submit and then add some bootstrap css here and then let's call it as same employee all right great now we will write a method handler to handle this request 
okay save employee request let me just copy this link again go to the controller that is employee controller and here just type public string save employee okay and let's use add post mapping annotation here post mapping and here we will provide a save employee okay now we need to handle the form data right for that we are going to use add model attribute annotation here so here is the employee so all the form data will be binded to the employee now let's get this employee here employee employee all right now what we'll do we'll save employee to the database save employee to database for that we're going to call employee service and then save employee and here we just re redirect So here we just redirect to the home page here okay so this completes our end-to-end -end add employee feature so let me recap the steps so first we completed the backend part by adding this method save employee method to the employee service and employee service I am pure next we have added a button here inside a uh, index.html page and then we have added method handler to handle this request that is show new employee form here inside employee controller all right next we have created a new employee time lip template and we have designed this uh, you know time lip template and look at here the form action save employee and we have written a method handler to handle this save employee request inside an employee controller here okay so this is pretty simple flow now what we'll do we'll run the spring boot project so we have already you know the project is already running now what we can do is we can access a link from the browser so in a browser just uh, refresh it and click on add employee oops we got some error here new employee dot html so look at here of the exception the exception is we need we have given an invalid expression for time leap uh, directive okay so look at here in our object attribute we have given a value like this this is not a valid expression we need to provide syntax like this okay save it and again refresh now you can able to you know get the add new employee page all right so here just type first name uh, Ramesh and last name for the day and email Ramesh at the gmail.com hit save employee button great so look at here new user is added let me add one more employee let's call it as admin 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 at the gmail.com hit save employee button so look at here admin employee is added to the list all right basically we add one more column over here and we add a update employee button correspond to each employee okay great so first we need to change a backend part and then we will move to the front end part so first let us verify what are the changes required at a backend and then we'll move to the front end so let's begin with the repository at the repository we no need to change anything because jpa repository exposes crude 
database operations and let's see in a employee service so here basically we need to add a get employee by id method to retrieve our employee and this employee basically we pre-populated on a web page for editing right so let's go and let's create a method here let's call it as get employee by id and let's pass long id here and let's implement this method in an employee service i employee class okay this is the optional so find by id basically returns an optional object so here we need to get optional here employee repository dot find by id here we need to pass the id okay and here what we will do we will declare the employee object okay and what we will do we will get a uh, employee from the optional optional provides uh, is present method so if it is present then what we will do is simply uh, get a uh, employee from the optional optional dot get if it is not present then what we will do we will simply throw the exception throw new runtime exception Let's call it as let's give a user defined message here employee now not found not found for ID let's mention ID here and simply return the employee all right great now we have created a get employee by ID method and this method we will call from the controller okay now what we will do we will add a button to the index.html page so look at here the ui we have three columns right employee first name employee last name employee email okay and what we will do we will add one more column let us say actions and here we will add a update button let me quickly write the code here so here we have given a hyperlink so this is the link basically once we click on update button then this will navigate to the show form for update method handler so we will provide a method handler for this a link and look at here we are just retrieving a employee id and basically this employee id will be plugged in this id okay so this is the syntax for getting a binding id in timely and this is the bootstrap css class okay now save it and go to the browser again and refresh so look at here update button is added okay now what we will do we will add a method handler in controller to handle this request open employee controller over here we are going to write a method handler to handle you know uh, uh, this request show form for update request okay so let's create a method public string and let's give a method name as show form for update and let's annotate this method with at the rate get mapping annotation and this is the request right and what we'll do we'll get a path variable so this is basically id that uh, we bind here okay so basically this employee id is replaced here and this id will be available in here and to bind this id what we will do we will use at the rate path variable annotation so this id will be bind to the this parameter okay uh, one more thing is we need to get a model so we basically add a data to the model and then we we pass this model to the template 
so let me write the comment here get employee from the service the employee the employee equals to the employee service and then call get employee by id call pass the id here and what we'll do we'll simply so here we set a employee object to a model to pre-populate the form data okay so here call the model dot add attribute and then here employee and pass employee object to the add attribute as a value here and then here we simply return update underscore employee all right so this is the view that we are returning okay great so we basically created a method handler to handle show form for update request and next step is we need to create update underscore employee timelip template and then this employee object will be free populated in this form so let's go ahead and let's create a html page let's name it as update underscore employee dot html so basically this is a time lip template now here what we'll do we'll design update employee page all right so one more important thing here is you can also use new underscore employee dot html page so you can use a single page to handle save employee and update employee features okay but for simplicity i am going to create a new html page over here for updating the employee so so that uh, you know uh, we can simplify this one so you can also create a single page this will handle both save employee and update employee feature so what you need to do here is you need to just add a hidden input field which will pass id to the controller and uh, that's it okay so it's almost similar so what i will do i will just copy this code from the new underscore employee.html page and i will add to the update underscore employee.html page over here so i will just make some changes instead of save i will say update employee okay it's gonna almost similar so just remove the placeholder let's call it as update employee okay so look at here this is the form and this is at symbol it basically represents to the call you know the uh, context path of our application and this is the save employee so this request basically handled in a controller so look at here we are using existing save employee method handler which we have implemented in previous video and then this is the employee object so this object basically we get from the uh, here okay from the controller uh, here okay model dot attribute and next so look at here this is the important so this is the syntax to refer to the property of the employee object so basically remember uh, when this page loaded first time then they will call a uh, getters method okay and then by using getters method they will populate the data uh, in a input field okay so this is very important so remember whenever the first time this page will loaded then this will call a getter method to get a data and that will be pre-populated on each input field okay understood it's pretty simple nothing fancy yeah, and it's similar to new employee uh, here we need to just add a hidden field over here let me quickly add here okay nothing fancy and look at here uh, this uh, actually shows undefined attribute name so to avoid this warning we just add a time lip link over here inside a html element okay great now what we do we'll test this update employee feature 
so one more thing is we haven't added bootstrap css file over here so let's copy this as you know bootstrap css file from the and here just paste it inside a header and let's also change the title and let's call it as employee management system so this is our application name right now let's go to the browser so from browser refresh it now what we'll do we'll update our employee so let's employ this uh, let's update this employee sanju power hit update and then i'll say from sanju to i will call it as sanjay sanjay123 and power123 and sanju123 at the end gmail.com hit update employee so look at here the employee is successfully updated okay so let's go and let's update one more employee uh, let's update this one Ramesh SS so let's remove this Ramesh and let's say Ram and let's also change the email ID I hit update employee so look at here this employee is updated all right so we have successfully implemented update employee feature so let's see what are the features that we have implemented so far we have implemented employee list feature and add employee feature and update employee feature so let's go ahead and let's add an employee here and let's say Ramesh further a and Ramesh at the gmail.com and hit save employee button so look at here we have added employee now let's go and let's update the employee let us change from Ramesh to John for the third to Sina. Okay, and email address Sina at the gmail.com and hit, hit update employee button. So look at here the Ramesh employee is updated. So these are the features we have implemented so far. Now what we'll do we'll implement delete employee feature. So just follow the steps that uh, I am doing right now. So first step is we need to add a delete button right so look at here uh, beside update button we need to add over here a delete button so that we can able to delete a corresponding employee okay great now in the index.html just copy this hyperlink so and paste it here so this is almost similar to update button so here just change a text delete and then we'll change the bootstrap css class from primary to danger save it go to the browser refresh the url so look at here delete button is added successfully so this is the first step now second step is we need to provide a method handler to handle delete request right so let's go ahead and let's implement a method handler so before that look at here this is the delete request so let's change it and delete the employee okay and look at here this id so basically we get a employee id from the employee object and we plug in a id so this is the syntax to bind the id in a time loop and look at here add symbol so add symbol basically represents a context path of our application okay so this is the delete button now what we'll do we'll create a method handler to handle a delete employee request it's pretty simple go to the employee controller over here and let's simply create a method public string and method name is delete employee and let's use at the get mapping annotation so this is not a rest api to use at the delete mapping so this is the web application so simply use get mapping annotation over here and here we need to basically pass id right so ID we need to pass as a path uh, variable so here we need to provide ID like this and we use at the path variable annotation to bind path value to the variable here uh, this is value value is going to be ID and then long ID okay great now here what we'll do we'll call a delete delete method from the service so call delete employee method okay so before moving further what we'll do we'll create a method 
delete employee by id method inside a employee service okay so open employee service interface and here we're gonna create a method delete the employee by id okay and just pass long id as a parameter and go to the employee service IMPL and let's override this method here so what we'll do we'll just call the employee repository and then call delete by id and pass id over here that's it okay and we no need to add uh, add the transaction annotation over here because the repository will internally provides a transaction management for all these good database operations okay great now what we'll do we'll call this method from the controller now so here simply call this dot employee service and then dot delete employee by id and then pass id here okay that's it now once we delete the employee we need to redirect to the home page right so what we will do i'll simply redirect to the home page so home page basically contains a list of employees so this will redirect to the uh, this method view home page method so look at the url here slash right and we are redirecting to the slash that is the home page all right so these are the simple steps so now let's go ahead and let's test our delete employee feature now in a browser let's refresh it refresh the url and now let's hit a delete button so i'm going to delete john cena employee hit delete so look at here john cena employee deleted and now let's delete this this one ram jado all right so we have successfully deleted the employee so this is how we have implemented you know a delete employee feature We will learn how to develop a full stack web application that is basic employee management application using ReactJS and Spring Boot. So look at here this is our user interface of employee management application. This is the employees list page. Here basically a list of employees are listed in this page. Here we have add employee button. So we can use add employee button to add a new employee to the employees list. Let's go ahead and let's click on add button here we here we go so this is the add employee page through which we can add a new employee let's go ahead and let's add a new employee first name Ramesh last name Fadatare email id Ramesh at the gmail.com and hit save button so this will add a new employee to the employees list let's go ahead and let's quickly add another employee let's say John Cena email id John at the gmail.com hit save button here we go here we go so we have added two employees to the employees list let's go ahead and let's update one of the employee i'm going to update ramesh employee click on update button and here i will update from ramesh to ram and email id from ramesh at the red gmail.com to ram at the red gmail.com and hit save button here we go so the employee is successfully updated now I can use delete button to delete a corresponding employee. Let us say I am going to delete a RAM employee. Click on delete button to delete the employee. Now let us take a quick overview of React and Spring Boot. React is used to build user interfaces on the front end. So basically React is one of the popular JavaScript library to develop single page applications. And React is not a framework. Unlike Angular, React is not a framework, it is just a JavaScript library to build user interfaces. Okay, React is an open source project created by Facebook. Alright, Spring Boot is getting more popularity especially for developing RESTful web services and microservices. Spring Boot has taken Spring Framework to the next level. It has drastically reduced the configuration and setup time required for Spring projects. You can set up Spring project with almost zero configuration and start building the things that actually matter to your application. Alright guys, we are going to use React to develop user interface and Spring Boot to develop RESTful web services. 
we are going to understand Spring Boot React Full Stack Application Architecture. All right. So if you can see here the architecture diagram, at the front end we have a React application architecture, and at the back end we have Spring Boot application architecture. Okay. So let's first understand Spring Boot application architecture at the back end and then we'll move to a React application architecture at the front end and then we'll talk about how to integrate React and Spring Boot application together as a full stack application. Okay, great. Let's come to Spring Boot application architecture first. In a Spring Boot application, we have three layer architecture, controller layer, service layer, a repository or a DAO layer. So controller layer holds all the Spring MVC controllers. Okay, basically controller uh, process the request that is a web request and uh, it will validate the request and then it will send a that request data to the service layer and from the service layer it goes to repository layer and then finally it's saved in a database. Well, controller layer basically holds Spring MVC controllers and service layer holds all the business logic okay we keep all our business logic in service layer apart from business logic if you have any call to the third party rst apis then you can also keep that logic in a service layer and repository or DAO layer so basically we keep you know database related logic or persistence logic in this layer and repository or DAO layer is basically responsible to talk with the database so this is you know the pretty simple uh, architecture at a backend with Spring Boot. Okay, so this is the typical architecture we use, uh, you know, Spring Boot applications. All right. Now let's move to React application architecture. So in a React, we have different layer like router, components, and services. So different different develop developers follow different different you know architecture or a project structure uh, in a React applications. But typically, I see that. There are different components like components layer and service layer and uh, router layer. So in a router, we typically configure a URL uh, corresponding to components. And in components, uh, we basically keep all the uh, component related logic that is uh, UI logic. And there are different uh, components are there in a React that is a functional component or a class component. And we can use a React hooks in the components. All right. And we have a service. So we keep typically all the REST API calls in a service uh, uh, service layer and we inject service layer in a components and we call its method from the components. Okay, and if you use a Redux, then you may have different layers in a React application. And to look at here in a service uh, component or service class, we need to use a third party library to make a REST API call because React is not concerned with HTTP. We have to use third-party HTTP library to make a REST API call from the React application. So Axios is one of the popular HTTP library that we can use uh, to make a REST API call from the React application. All right, so this is uh, how the typical uh, you know, structure in a React application. Now in, in terms of integration, so from the Spring Boot application, we expose the REST endpoints and the React application basically consume the REST APIs. And as I mentioned earlier, React is not concerned with HTTP. So in order to make a REST API or AJAX call from the React, we have to use third party library, for example, Axios library. Okay. Or we can also use a JavaScript fetch API. Okay. So this is how basically we integrate a React application with Spring Boot by using third party HTTP library or a fetch API. All right. So this is pretty much about Spring Boot or React full stack application architecture. Now let's quickly have a look into what are the tools and technologies that we'll be using at the front end side. We use a React JavaScript library to develop a single page application and we are going to use modern JavaScript and we are, we are going to use Node.js and NPM to install and create the project and libraries and we are going to use Visual Studio Code ID to develop a React application and we are going to use Create React App command line tool to quickly create and run React application and we are going to use Bootstrap CSS library to style our web pages and we are going to use Axios HTTP library to make a REST API call. Alright guys, now let's quickly take a look at 
what are the tools and technologies that we are we are going to use at a server side we are going to use spring boot 2 plus and we are going to use spring data jpa it internally uses hibernate orm framework to develop a DAO layer and we are going to use maven 3.2 plus as a build and project management tool and we are going to use jdk 1.8 and we are going to use embedded tomcat server that is 8.5 plus and we are going to use mysql database and to develop spring boot application we are going to use eclipse sts id let's open eclipse sts id and let's quickly create a spring boot project in Eclipse STS ID, go to the file section, new and then choose Spring Starter Project. So look at here, this is a Spring Initializer uh, website URL and Spring Initializer is integrated in Eclipse STS ID and we can use Spring Initializer to quickly create and bootstrap Spring based project. Let's give a name to the project like Spring Boot Backend and keep type as Maven packaging as a jar java version 8 language java let's give group id as net.java guides and artifact id is same as the name of the project and keep version and description as it is and keep package as net.java guides.springboot but you can give any package name that you want once you are happy with project details click next and here we have Spring Boot version that is 2.3.1 so this is, this is the latest release of Spring Boot as of now. Now what we'll do we'll pick up Spring Boot Starter Dependencies. Let's go ahead and let's pick up Spring Web Starter Dependency. We use Spring Web Starter Dependency to develop RESTful web services and let's go ahead and let's pick up Spring Data JPA Dependency. So we use Spring Data JP dependency to develop a repository layer and Spring Data JP internally uses Hibernate as a JPA provider. We basically use Spring Data JPA to reduce a lot of boilerplate code that is required to develop a DAO layer. Alright, and we are going to use MySQL database. So let's quickly pick up MySQL JDBC driver. And let's also choose Spring Boot Dev Tool Dependency. Spring Boot Dev Tools Dependency. So we use this dependency because whenever we make some changes in a project, we no need to restart the server again and again. Okay. All right, guys. Once you select all the required dependencies, hit Finish. This will create a Spring Boot project in Eclipse SDS ID. Yeah, here we go. Once we have created a Spring Boot project. Let's go ahead and let's create a database. Open MySQL Workbench and just type SQL statement like create database followed by name of the database. Let's give name of the database as employee management underscore system something like this and execute this SQL statement and refresh here and look at here the employee management system database is get created once we create a database let's go ahead and let's configure mysql jdbc url username password in spring boot project go to the resource folder within the resource folder open application.properties file and here just type spring dot data source dot url okay let's give jdbc url to connect to the mysql database so look at here we have employee management system database that just we have created in mysql workbench similarly let's go ahead and let's configure username and password let's type the property spring dot data source dot username it's root and let's also configure password it's again root okay so make sure that you will change jdbc url username password as per your uh, you know mysql database installation on your machine 
Now let's go ahead and let's configure Hibernate properties. We are going to we are using MySQL database, so we have to configure Hibernate dialect for MySQL database. So look at here, this is a property and this is the value. So we are using MySQL for you uh, dialect. Okay. Now let's go ahead and let's configure one more Hibernate property. So look at here so this is a hibernate detail auto property so we use this property to automatically create the tables in a database so hibernate will automatically create a uh, tables in a database we no need to manually create the tables all right guys once we configure jdbc credentials and hibernate properties let's go ahead and let's create a packaging structure right click on root package new and then choose package and let's give package name as model let's create a one more package right click on root package new and then choose package and let's give package name as controller again let's go ahead and let's create one more package let's name it as a repository all right so let's go ahead and create one more package and let's name it as exception all right let's go ahead and let's create a jp entity right click on model package new and then choose class let's give a entity name as employee all right let's quickly define the instance variables private long id private string first name private string last name and private string email id all right let's quickly create get a set of methods to access these private fields And also create a parameterized constructor right click source generate constructor using fields deselect ID and hit generate and let's also create a default constructor so remember whenever you create a parameterized constructor you have to create a default constructor because hibernate internally uses proxies to create uh, you know proxy objects all right once we have created employee class now let's go ahead and let's use jp annotations to map uh, you know uh, this model to the relational database table let's go ahead and let's use at the rate entity annotation and let's also use at the rate table annotation to provide a table name let's give table name as employees all right let's define a primary key for our table let's use add id annotation and also let's use a generation primary key generation strategy for that let's use add generator value annotation and it has a property called strategy and let's use generation type as identity and let's use add thread column annotation to provide a column name to the field here basically we map a column name to the field and we can also give a column name over here let's use a name attribute to provide a column name let's say first underscore name and let's copy this and let's similarly give a column name to the last name last underscore name and also give a column name to the email id email underscore id that's it guys that is pretty much uh, we have created employee jp entity now what we'll do we'll create a, a repository interface right click on repository package new and then choose interface here let's give a repository name as 
employee repository great now what we'll do we'll extend this interface from jpa repository so jpa repository basically exposes database code methods like save find by id find or delete by id delete okay it exposes a lot of methods and it provides out of the box implementation for all the database methods so we don't need to write any boilerplate code that is required to you know develop the double layer let's pass the employee jp entity and here the type of the primary key let's annotate this interface with at the rate repository annotation all right so look at here jp repository provides a lot of methods like find all and also it provides a sorting support okay and uh, also provides uh, pagination so look at here it internally extends paging and sorting repository paging and sorting repository interface provides support for sorting and pagination and paging and sorting repository extends crude repository so crude repository interface exposes all the crude methods for an uh, entity okay for example save save all find by id exists by id okay so jpa repository internally extends all these interfaces so we can leverage all these methods we no need to create uh, methods over here okay great now it's time to create a restful web services so before that let's go ahead and let's create one custom exception class right click on exception package new and then choose class and let's name this custom exception class as a resource not found exception so whenever a resource not exist in a database then we can throw this exception okay from the api layer rest api basically uh, you know throws this exception that we will see a bit later this exception extends a runtime exception okay and uh, runtime exception internally implements serializable interface so let's go ahead and let's quickly add the serial version id here let's say public and here let's pass string message and we simply pass this message to the super class okay it's pretty simple custom exception now let's annotate this exception class with at the rate response status annotation use value property and let us say http status not found okay so basically we use this custom exception so whenever a record not exists in database then rest api will throw this exception and uh, uh, we have annotated this exception with at the rate response status annotation so api will return a not found status to the client okay that's great now let's go ahead and let's create spring mvc controller right click on controller package new and then choose class and let's call controller class as employee controller okay within a controller we create a rest api so let's add at the rate rest controller annotation and also add at the rate request mapping annotation and let's define a standard URL over here slash API slash version v1 so this is the standard we use typically whenever we develop a rest APIs like v1 like version 1 so we are releasing all the rest APIs as release 1 and uh, this is the API so this is a standard uh, URL endpoint that typically we use in a rest APIs okay 
now let's go ahead and let's inject uh, employee repository over here employee repository and let's add at the rate at the while annotation to inject this repository by spring container now we'll develop get all employees or stfa just type public and then list so this rest api should return a list of employees to the client so let's give return type as list of employees let's give a method name as get all employees all right and just return employee repository dot find all method so look at here find all method returns a list of employees okay let's select this and let's add at the rate get mapping annotation and let's specify a url here slash employees okay so once we hit the url in a browser like localhost 8080 api slash v1 slash employees then this rest api will get called and this api returns a list of employees to the client all right let's go ahead and let's run the spring boot project and let us test this rest api open our spring boot main class right click and run as spring boot app Alright guys, our Spring Boot application is up and running on embedded Tomcat server on port 8080. And look at here, we haven't created create employee REST API in order to create a records in a database. We have directly created get all employees. So what we'll do, we'll insert some records in a employees table in a database. And we call this REST API and we'll retrieve, this API will retrieve all the employees from the table and it will return to the client. Okay let's go back to the mysql workbench and let's insert fav records now if we refresh the schemas and if you look at here employees management system database a employees table is created okay so this table is automatically created by hibernate and now right click and select roles so if you look at the table there are no records in a table so let's quickly insert few records one email id ramesh at the rate gmail.com first name ramesh last name for the and also is insert one more record tony at the rate gmail.com first name tony last name stark let's keep these two records and hit apply apply and finish all right let's execute this select statement again in order to make sure that the records are there in a table yeah we have two records in a table now let's go back to the browser and let's hit a rest api in a browser tab and we'll be able to get a a response as a JSON array of employees objects okay great all right guys open the browser go to the new tab and just type localhost 8080 slash api slash v1 slash employees and hit enter yeah here we go we got a JSON array a JSON array as a response from the rest api we can use postman uh, rest client to test our get all employees rest api so open a postman uh, client and in a enter request url you just type localhost 8080 slash api slash v1 slash employees and select http get method all right and hit send button and here you can see we got a json response we got an array of employee objects okay great
Let's create a React application. Let's begin by setting up our development environment for React. We need to have two things installed. Node and text editor of your choice. For Node, go to the official website of Node.js and you can download the latest release of Node.js and you can install on your machine. If you have already installed Node.js, then make sure that you have upgraded to the latest release of Node.js. For text editor, I recommend you to use VS Code IDE. Alright. To get started, I have created a folder called React Spring Boot Crude App. In this folder, we are going to create React application. Now, to create a new React application, we are going to make use of create react app command line tool. Go to the browser and just search for create a react app and hit enter and choose the second link. Create react app is a command line tool that we can use to quickly create a react application with no configuration. All right. What that means is you simply run few commands and the entire react project is created for you. Let's see how to do it. So look at here these are the commands we are going to use to quickly create and run react application. So go back in a VS code ID and open integrated terminal. and run the command npx create hyphen react hyphen app and followed by name of the project let's call project name as react frontend all right you can also refer this command from the official github uh, website so look at here you can refer these commands over here okay great once you enter the command hit enter so this will create a react application let's wait for a moment it will take few seconds to create and set up a react application once the command completes you can able to see a new folder is created here react frontend to run newly created a react application you first need to navigate to the project folder just type cd react hyphen frontend hit enter also you can refer the commands over here okay now just type the command npm start to start the react application So look at here the command open a browser with the url localhost 3000 and our react application is running on port 3000 so let me copy this url and let me open in a chrome browser just close this browser and open chrome browser in a new tab just enter the url localhost 3000 yeah here we go so we have successfully created a react application and we have started react application and now the react application is running on local development server on port 3000 now let's quickly change app.js file to some text like hello world and we'll see how the changes will get reflected on a page in a react application go back to the vsid expand react frontend folder expand src folder and go to the app.js file here what we'll do we'll simply remove this code and here just give h1 tag with some text hello world save the file so look at here the development server will automatically refresh the browser and you can able to see 
hell over text on a page all right guys we have successfully created our react application now we are good to go with our actual development before that let's quickly have a folder structure of our newly created react application in the react application at a root level you can see three folders and four files let's begin with package.json file so look at here package.json contains a dependencies and scripts required for the projects you can see here the react dependency is specified in package.json with its version okay and similarly react dom and react scripts and here are the few scripts to run the react application to build the react application and to test the react application all right so these are the dependencies and scripts that we configure in package.json and you can be able to see here readme file so it contains the commands and the necessary stuff required to create and run a react application let's take a look at the folder we have node underscore modules folder so inside this folder all the dependencies are installed so basically this folder will get created whenever you create a react app using create react app command line tool or when you run npm install command okay so look at here you can see a lot of javascript libraries installed in this under this folder and we have public folder within a public folder we have few files favicon so this is not specific to react and manifest.json so this is the file which is related to progressive progressive web app so we are not with this file is out of scope of this project so we have index.html file index.html file is the only file you are going to have in your application as we are building single page application so we have only one html file and all the uh, code will dynamically will update and inside this div so look at here this is the div with id equals to root so all the react components will dynamically get uh, updated inside this div tag okay so most of the time we are not going to change this file sometimes we might change the header but we definitely don't change a body section all right so this is very important file so as we are building single page application we should have only one html file and we will dynamically update the div tag here okay great now let's expand src folder under the src folder we can see app.js file so this is our root component so this is basically a react functional component and inside this component we we can see a jsx code so jsx is basically a javascript xml like code which is just an extension of javascript language syntax and jsx is basically uh, looks like a xml code that uh, react team has recommended to use in a react applications so jsx no, is not a necessity to create a react applications but uh, you know react team has recommended to use jsx because jsx makes a react code very simpler and elegant and neat so for this reason we can use a jsx in our application all right guys so app component is our root component and uh, so look at here this is index.js file so the control flow like whenever we deploy our application and we use localhost 3000 in a browser then first html index.html will get served and after that index.js file will get executed and inside index.js file we can see here react dom so and render method so we are passing app component to render method of react dom 
and this component will get rendered inside the DOM element which has ID root so look at here this ID we have specified in index.html so look at here this is the div with ID or root and inside this div the uh, react DOM will basically render f component all right all right guys I hope we understood the flow now let's integrate bootstrap css library in react application we are going to use bootstrap css library to style our web pages okay uh, bootstrap css library is basically a framework it is popular for developing responsive web applications and websites okay so there are a couple of ways to use a bootstrap and react application and uh, i'm going to show you two simplest ways to integrate bootstrap in react application so one is uh, we can use a uh, bootstrap cdn links directly and another is you can install bootstrap using the npm command we'll see both the ways okay so first we'll open integrated terminal so we can switch our terminals over here so on first integrated terminal or node uh, react application is running and in a second integrated terminal we are going to run the commands okay great so in order to get a cdn bootstrap link go to the browser and in a browser just type bootstrap cdn link and hit enter so we are going to use bootstrap 4 so let's also specify bootstrap 4 here and click on the first link so this is the official website of bootstrap and uh, look at here this is the cdn link that we can use click on copy button and go back to the visual studio code id and open index.html file go to the header section and in the header section just below the title tag paste it okay so once you add cdn bootstrap link you are good to use uh, you know uh, bootstrap css classes now let's see the second way so i will just remove this link second way is by using npm command just type npm bootstrap npm install bootstrap hyphen hyphen save so make sure that you have added hyphen hyphen save here so basically this will uh, add a entry in a package.json okay so let me open package.json so look at here a bootstrap library is not added in a package.json as soon as i run this command a new entry will add to the package.json hit enter let's wait for a second so this takes a this command takes a second to download and install bootstrap yeah here we go let's refresh it So notice here bootstrap library uh, with its version is added here in a package.json all right so once a bootstrap css library installed what we do we'll import a bootstrap css file in our react application so go to the index.js file and here just type import and then bootstrap slash disk slash css slash bootstrap dot min dot css okay now we have successfully installed and we have imported bootstrap css library in our react application now we are good to use react uh, we are good to use a bootstrap css classes in our react application all right 
we have created a react application and we have integrated bootstrap css library in our react application in this video let's quickly create a react component to display a list of users on our web page all right guys go to the source folder src folder and just within a src folder create a new folder called components okay under components folder let's create a file let's name it as list employee component so look at here the naming conventions it is in the component name should be in a camel case and the extension is jsx so you can also use js that is not a problem but we are going to write a jsx code inside this component so we can have a extension like jsx okay you can, you can probably see a lot of uh, you, you know react developers sometimes use a js extension or jss jsx extension there is no difference but whenever we use a jsx inside a component we typically use dot jsx extension all right hit enter now the important thing is i am going to use react snippets to quickly create a react component i highly recommend you guys to use a react snippets in visual store code id to quickly create react components and few react uh, you know other uh, like functional component or services etc so in order to you know install react snippets go to the browser and just type you know react snippets for vs code go to the react code snippets website and you can click on install so this will install react js code snippets in vs code i have already installed so i'm going to use react snippets to quickly create a react class component so typically there are two types of components in react one is stateless functional component and other is stateful class component and most of the time i'm going to use class component throughout this you know video tutorial series let's type the command rcc so this will create a class a react class component just hit enter so look at here the skeleton of react class component so this is very useful react snippet I highly recommend you guys to use react snippets uh, in a visual store code id to quickly create this kind of snippets all right so look at here inside this component we have constructor within a constructor we have state this is the state which is belongs to this component and this component extends a component component is from the react library and here inside a constructor we have a super and we pass props to the super class that is a react component okay and within a component we have a render method and inside a render method we have a return statement and inside a return we write a jsx code inside a return statement all right guys we are going to display list of employees on a web page for that what i will do i will simply initialize an array here employees inside a state and here inside a div we are going to write a jsx code all right just you can start you know typing code with me so that you will understand a lot of things let me quickly add h2 tag to show the page header so look at here this is the employees list so this is the header we display on a page and we should display this you know title at the center so look at here the class name so in react we use a lower camel case attributes to you know to point css class for example in uh, plain html we use class like this all right but in react we use the camel case like this class then name so n should be caps and then 
we specify CSS class name. All right, great. Let's create a table, HTML table with some CSS classes, Bootstrap CSS classes. So let's first create a div tag here, and then let's specify some classes like row. And inside that, we are going to create a table. Inside a table, let's apply CSS class to the table. So these are the bootstrap CSS classes that we just added to the table. So inside table, let's go ahead and let's add a table header. Create a table row. And inside that, let's add table header. So this is the employee first name. Let's copy this, paste it four times, and let's change accordingly. Employee last name, employee email ID, and this is actions. So under actions, you can see edit and delete button. All right, we have created table header. Now it's time to create a table body. Inside table body, basically we now we write a JavaScript code to dynamically display a table rows. Let's see how to do it. We have already added a employees array in a state. So basically we make a REST API call and we store a REST API call response into employees object and we trade over employees object and we display in a table. So for timing, we don't make a call in this video so in next video we, we write a code to make a call to the rest api and we store data into employees array and that will be again displayed on a table let's write a code here inside curly braces so we're going to dynamically add the rows right we have state inside state we have defined employees array we are going to use a map so this is a ES6 uh, feature that we are going to leverage and then we are going to iterate over employees so this is the employee and arrow and inside this we are going to define the row okay so for each row we should have a unique key so let's define that employee dot id and again inside a row let's have td element and let's populate employee first name employee last name copy this and here employee id okay in actions we define uh, you know uh, delete and update buttons whenever we implement delete and update functionalities Alright guys, now what we'll do, we'll copy this component and we'll go to the app.js file and we remove this code and we also remove app class name and just provide a bootstrap CSS class that is container. Inside this div tag, let's uh, import list employee component and make sure that list employee component is imported at the top if just save this file and go back to the browser and let us see the changes in a browser you can able to see the list okay 
so what we have done we have created a list employee component and we have added a JSX code to display a table in a web page okay in the next video we'll make a REST API call we get, will get our data from the REST API and we'll populate in a table great In previous video, we have created a list employee component to display a list of employees on a web page. Now, in this video, what we'll do, we'll make a REST API call and we'll populate a data on a web page. So, in order to make a call to the REST API in React application, we have to use third party HTTP library. For example, we are going to use Axios HTTP library in our video tutorial series, but you can use browser fetch API to make a REST API call. So there are plenty of HTTP library, uh, you know, are there uh, out there. But uh, uh, Axios HTTP library is popular and it provides a very uh, you know flexible APIs to work with uh, you know HTTP calls. So I am going to use Axios HTTP library to make a REST API call. So what we'll do, we'll install Axios library in our React application and we'll write a REST client code to call a REST API. Let's go ahead and let's add Axios HTTP library in our React application. Go to the integrated terminal and just type the command npm install Axios and then hyphen hyphen save so make sure that you have add hyphen hyphen save at the end so this will add our entry in package.json hit enter so this will take a couple second to install axios library in our react application all right now you can see the command completes and if you open package.json file and you can able to see a new entry added with axios and its version okay great now we have successfully installed axios library in our react application now we are going to create a separate service class which will invoke a rest api for that go to the src folder within a such folder let's create a one more folder let's call it as services and within a service folder let's create a file let's name it as employee service dot js so look at here the extension dot js we are not going to write any jsx code inside this file so we can ignore jsx here so just give extension dot js so inside this javascript file we are going to create a javascript class let's name it as employee service okay and in previous videos at the back end we have created a rest api and we have tested using postman rest client right so this is the url which will get a list of employees from the rest api so if you hit send button you can see here we got a list of employees as a array in a response okay okay go back to the vs code let's import axios library inside this javascript file import axios from axios and let's define a rest a rest and point url over here so look at here this is our base REST API URL localhost 8080 API slash v1 slash employees let's create a method get employees and this method returns a response of get method okay so axios basically provides a get method let's call get and here we pass a base URL okay 
so we are simply returning a response of get method and now what we'll do we'll simply export this class object export default new and the employee so this is the important notice here we are not going to export a class in fact we are going to export object of this class so we can directly use object of this class inside a component all right we have successfully uh, you know written a rest client code using axios to make a rest api call now what we'll do we'll use employee service uh, object in a component let's go back to the list employee component here and here just type component did mount method so look at here component did amount method is called immediately after a com component is mounted so this is the best place to call a rest api so whenever you want to make a ajax calls or rest api calls always use component did amount because this method will get immediately called after a component is mounted so inside this method we are going to use employee service dot get employee so this method returns promise so let's use then method okay and it has a response so here just set a response to the employees array so in order to set a data to the state of the component we are going to use set state method set state inside a curly and close braces just uh, use employees and response dot data already guys we have successfully you know uh, stored a response data into employees array now save the file and go back to the browser and let us see the data is populated on a page or not let's open our developer tools in chrome browser and let us see the network tab refresh and here go to the console and you can able to see here we got course policy issue so in order to avoid this issue what we'll do we'll add add cross annotation on top of employee controller in spring boot application go back to the spring boot project open employee controller and here what we'll do we'll add a annotation called cross origin annotation and it has origin attributes and save the controller and the spring boot project is restarted now let us see let's go to the browser and let's refresh the url and here we go we have successfully got a response of a rest api and the same response is populated on a page all right guys in this video we'll add header and footer to our react application let's go ahead and let's create a react component to add header and footer to our react application let's go back to vs code and go to the components folder within the components folder create a new file let's call it as header component dot jsx and let's use rcc react snippet command to quickly create react component go to the components folder create a new file let's call it as footer component dot jsx hit enter and let's use rcc to create a component all right go to the header component 
here basically we write a code to design a header part of our web page let's type header tag inside a header tag let's create a navigation tag and let's add a CSS classes to the navigation HTML element and then add a title of the header let's say employee management application okay great let's save the file and go to the footer component let's add some code to the footer let's say footer HTML element and let's add a CSS class like footer and just create a spam HTML element with content all rights resolved to uh, add Java guides. So this is my website. So I have specified over here. All right. So we have created header and footer. Now let's add some CSS to our app dot CSS class. All right. Now what we'll do? Once we create a footer and header, let's go to the app.js file. So inside app.js file, we are going to import these two components. So here, uh, create a div. And inside a div, let's create a, let's import a header component. Make sure that header component is imported at the top. And then let's copy this. And let's paste here let me make alignment okay after that let's import a footer component here so make sure that footer component is imported at the top so save all the files and one more important thing here is so look at here we have added dot jsx extension to the files right but you can also use a JS extension. For example, I just uh, remove JSX extension to JS. Okay. And uh, if you save all the files and if you go back to the browser, you will be able to see the component is detected, uh, will detect in a React application. Yeah, here it is. So look at here, we have successfully added a header and footer to our react application and this header and footer is going to apply all the react components because we have added these two components in app.js file all right guys we have successfully added header and footer to our react application in this video we are going to configure routing for our employee management application so far we have created list employee component and we have populated a list of employees on a page all right we have exposed list employee rest api and we have created a component in the react which will call a react which will call a rest api and a render a response of the rest api on our web page and going forward we will be creating a lot of react components so before that we have to create a routing for our application in this video we will create a routing for application step by step okay we are going to use a react router package to configure routing for our application let's go ahead and let's install react router using npm command go to the integrate terminal and go to the project go to the inside project and just type the command npm install and then react router dom hit enter so this will take a couple of seconds to install a package in node underscore modules folder let's wait for a moment all right guys we have successfully installed react router dom package in our project go to the app.js file so this is 
the this file contains app component and app component is our root component so we should configure routing inside this component okay so because if you look at index.js file we have given app app component as a root component to render inside a react dom dot render all right go back to app.js file and here inside app.js file we will configure routing all right now let's go ahead and let's import browser router route and switch elements from react router dom import from react router and then dom so let's go ahead and let's import browser router let's give alias to this as router and then let's also import a route element and also import switch element here we are going to use switch element from react router dom because this element will ensure that only one component will render at a, at the same time okay great now once we import browser router route and switch element from react router dom let's go ahead and let's use these these elements in the app component so notice here whenever we want to render we first go inside a browser router okay let's first create a router over here just close here after that let's create a div let's give a class name equals let's use bootstrap css class that is container and let's close this div uh, before route closing let me align this okay and then after div let's create a switch switch element here and just close switch after list component yeah here we go so just follow the step first comes router after that we have created a div and and then header component and after that switch inside a switch we configure routes okay great so look at here we have header and footer component uh, created outside a switch because header and footer applicable to all the components so we can keep header and footer components outside a switch element within a switch element let's go ahead and let's configure routes let's create a route element and route has attributes for example path so inside path we give a url that is slash so this is the home page url and once we enter a url something like localhost localhost colon 3000 slash then this corresponding component will get called route element has component attribute so here we can configure a component that is list employee component so whenever we enter this url in a browser this corresponding component will get rendered okay get let's go ahead and let's configure one more router let me copy this route and paste it here so whenever we enter a url in a browser something like this localhost colon 3000 slash employees then corresponding component will get rendered in a browser so for that we have configured this router all right guys we have successfully configured a routing in our employee management application now let's save this file and let's go back to the browser and let us test our routing in browser all right let me go to the browser here in a new tab just type localhost 
3000 slash and hit enter yeah here we go so this is a home page so we have configured a route for home page right so whenever we enter localhost colon 3000 slash then list employee component will get rendered and also we have configured a router for employees right so let's hit this link yeah here we go so whenever we enter a router routing like slash employees path the list employee component will get rendered in a page all right guys we have successfully implemented a routing in our project so look at here header and footer so there is a slight css changes we need to require so let's go back to the vs code and here you can see here we can just remove this div let me remove this line div and this div all right let's save the file and let's go back to the browser we'll be able to see the header and footer aligned in a proper format all right guys we have successfully configured routing in our employee management application and going forward whatever uh, components will create in react application will configure routes for them and will implement other functionality accordingly all right great let's create add employer rest api open employee controller and here just uh, let me write the comment create employee rest api all right just create a method first public and employee so this rest api returns a employee object as a json so let's keep employee as a return type and the name of the method is create employee and just pass employee object as a method argument okay and this method returns the employee object right so let's call employee repository dot save method so save method return a employee object so let's pass employee object as a method argument to the save method now we have created a method okay let's use annotations to make this method as a rest endpoint let's use at the rate post mapping annotation so this method will handle http post request hence we are going to use at the rate post mapping annotation and let's configure url over here slash employees and post request contains a json request body right and json request body we are going to directly map to the employee object so let's use at the rate for that let's use at the rate request body annotation that's it guys very simple rest api now what we'll do we'll start the tomcat server that is we will just run our spring boot project and we will test create employee rest api using postman rest client now look at here our spring boot application is up and running our embedded tomcat server on port 0880 now let's go back to the postman rest client and let us test the api so look at here the http method is post and this is the rest endpoint url localhost 8080 slash api slash v1 slash employees and in a header just type content type as application slash json and in the body select a raw and give a json request uh, you know uh, body like this first name tom last name cruz email id tom at the gmail gmail.com hit send button so look at here we got a successful response with http status 200 okay all right guys we have successfully stored a record into a database let's go ahead and let's verify open mysql workbench and just execute select query on employees table so look at here a new record is successfully inserted into a database all right 
now what we'll do we'll add one more record let's give a post name as Amir and last name as Khan and email as Amir at the red gmail.com and hit send button so look at here we got a response and let's verify a record in a database table here we go so look at here record is added to the database it's pretty simple all right great we have successfully created add employee rest api so look at here this is the page that we are going to design in next video in this video we will just create a component and we add a route to the component and we add a new button to the employees list page once we click on add but add employee button then we should able to navigate to this page all right in next video we will see how to design this add employee form and in further videos we will see how to submit the add employee form uh, to the rest api so we make a rest api call we send the form data to the rest api and rest api internally store a form data in a mysql database and let's go to the components folder within the components folder let's create a new file called create the employee component dot jsx all right guys we have created a new file within a file let's go ahead and let's create a component let's use react snippets to quickly create a react component i'm going to use rcc react snippet command this will create a react class component hit enter so look at here all right now what we'll do we'll configure a routing for this component go to the apps app.js file and look at here in previous video we have configured a router now let's go ahead and let's create a one more route for create employee component let me quickly copy this route and paste it here and whenever we hit the url like localhost colon 3000 slash add employee then add employee component will get rendered for example let's say add employee so this is our path and whenever we hit this path in a browser we are going to render create employee component all right got it it's pretty simple right let me delete this list comp list employee component element this is not required because we have already configured the routes delete this and save the file we'll add a button over here that is add employee button and once we click on add employee button that should navigate to the create employee component let's go back to the vs code id and let's add a button over here let's go to the list employee component and here let's create a button let's create a do class name and then just your bootstrap css class name that is a row inside a this div just create a button look at here i just added a add employee button here here you can see sum up the uh, you know bootstrap css classes for the button and this is the event handler so whenever i click on this button this event handler method will get called and this event handler method we need to bind inside a constructor so i'm not going to cover event handling in react so please spend few minutes to understand how the event handling works in the react all right let's bind this method in a constructor so this is basically uh, there are basically different ways to bind uh, event handlers in react but this is the recommended way to bind uh, event 
in a constructor and let's create add employee method now what we'll do whenever we click on add employee button then we should navigate to the create employee component right for that let's configure uh, a routing over here let's say this dot props dot history dot push and then slash add hyphen employee whenever we click on an employee button then this route will get called and according uh, corresponding to this route we have configured a component called create employee component open app.js file you can able to see here whenever we hit this url in browser then this component will get rendered right so this is what we have configured over here so you might be wondering what is this history and uh, how it works all right great let me quickly explain you we have configured a react router in app.js file right so react router basically maintains a history object and this history object has all the mappings of the routings okay and react router pass passes history object to each router as a props so we can access history object using props so react router basically uh, provides history object uh, for each route uh, through props and we can get history object using props and this history object makes us manually control the history of the browser okay i hope you got the idea how we can configure or how we can redirect to the respective components using history object and we basically get a history object from the props and we can just configure the url like this let me go to the create employee component and inside that let's me write some text over here or right, something like employee form and let's save this file and let, let's go back to the browser and just click on add employee button let me refresh first and click on add employee button Uh, it is not uh, redirecting to the add employee page right so let me see what is the issue let's go to the routing configuration so here basically we need to add a uh, extract exact attribute because if you don't specify exact then routing will try to uh, you know invoke the all the components so whenever you want to you know navigate to the a particular component and mention exact here okay exact so it means that you are re redirecting to the exact route okay now let's save this file let's go back to the browser and you, you will be able to see the employee form so we have successfully navigated to create employee component let's design uh, employee form let's go back to the vs code and let's go to the employee create employee component and here we are going to design a employee form let's delete this let's create a div and let's add a css like container within a div let's create a one more div and let's add a css like a row within a div let's add one more div and let's add some css so look at here the form so we should now you know align the form at the center of the page okay and we have to add a card here card means uh, the you know border to this form so to achieve this we are going to add these 
CSS bootstrap CSS classes okay great after that we need to add this text right this this uh, page title that is add employee for that let me add a s3 tag here so this should be a uh, text should be aligned at a center and after that let's add a called called body let's create a div okay and inside this view let's create a form and let's inside a form let's go ahead and let's create a input fields okay great so look at here we have first name last name and employee so these are the input fields we are going to create in a form let's create a view and then let's add a CSS class like form group and after that let's add a label let's say first name and then input field so look at here the input field we have added placeholder that is first name and name and then class this is the bootstrap css class and the value we have a state inside a component right so we have to create attributes here properties for this state like first name last name and email id so go to the state and let's create a first name and let's initialize empty and also create a last name that's a name property initialize to empty and let's go ahead and let's also create email id property and let's initialize to empty all right guys now these basically properties will help us to get the form data and this data will be available in a form submission all right got it so we have to add this property to the state and the input field uh, we get a data from the input field inside these properties and this properties data will be available while form submission so try to understand the flow so inside a state we create a fields or properties and these properties we use to store the input from data input field from data and these properties will available in a form submission all right guys so look at here at the very first time the first name is empty so you can able to see a empty uh, input text field and once we enter something in a input text field then this uh, event handler will get called let me quickly create this event handler here let me capture the event here all right so this is the event and uh, from the event we can get a value like event dot target dot value and we can assign this value to the first name so look at here the flow inside the state we have defined a properties called post name and it is empty and here inside input field we have a value and we have here uh, added a first name and at the very first time the first name is empty and as soon as we enter something in a text field then this you know event handler will get called and we have add uh, will extract a value from this input field from the event and we use set state method to add the value to the first name and now we can able to see the value of the first name inside a input text field so this is the flow okay got it now similarly uh, let's go ahead and let's create an input field for last name and email let me copy and paste here and let's change this accordingly last name and here placeholder as last name and this is the last name change last name handler 
and this is the last name all right great now let's create a event handler for change last name handler let me just copy this and paste here and just change from post name to last name all right guys so one more important thing is we need to bind this event handler in a constructor go to the constructor within constructor just type this and then let's use bind method to bind this event handler to the component bind and pass this reference similarly let's create let's also bind a handler method that is change post name handler method and they pass this reference alright guys now let's go back to the form and let's copy this and let's also add one more field called email address let's change placeholder from last name to email address and also label email address all right and also name from last name to email id let's change this handler method that is change event handler let me change this label let's say email id after that let's go ahead and let's implement this change email handler over here let me copy the existing method let's paste here and let's copy the name of the change uh, email handler over here and just change email id that's it guys now once we have created first name last name email id input fields now it's time to create a submit button submit and cancel button it's pretty simple go to the form and here let me add two buttons so look at here this is the button to save the employee data all right and this is the cancel button and here we have added a event handler so whenever uh, we click on save button then this event handler will this event handler will get called let's go ahead and let's bind this event handler in a constructor you can directly bind this event handler here also for example look at here for cancel method i have just added uh, you know a bind method here so you can use this approach or you can also uh, in a constructor you can also bind this event handler in a constructor so this is the recommended way and this is a recommended by a react team and if you you can see this approach in a react documentation as well bind and then pass this all right guys let me create a save employee method here and just call prevent to default after that so we have defined a property right inside a state so once we enter something in these fields then properties will get updated uh, the data using set property set state method here and now now the first name last name email id so this property has a data so let's get data from these properties while form submission so here uh, save employee method right so this method will get called whenever we uh, hit the save button or whenever we submit the form so let's go ahead and let's get the data from this property here inside a save, me save employee method let me quickly create a employee javascript object and let me add a data to the object for example look at here this is employee javascript object and in this first name i have you know uh, retrieved a first name from the state last name from the state email id from the state and i just you know uh, 
added console.log over here so that we can able to see the form data in a console all right guys we have almost completed add employee form and the event handle event handling for input fields and form submission all right now let's save the form and let's go back to the browser and let's see if there are any errors or so before that let me check uh, if anything missing over here so we have added uh, change first name handler and uh, we have you know we have just bind that uh, event handler in a constructor and similarly for change last name handler we have also uh, we have bind this event handler in a constructor and let me change the name over here okay and let me check if anything missing all right we are good uh, one more thing is this is cancel method right so we haven't created cancel method over here so let me create cancel method and then once we click on cancel button this should navigate to the employee list page right and let me just copy the routing url go to the list employee component and let me copy this all right so here let me change the path url like employees so whenever we click on cancel button this should navigate to the slash employee uh, you know url and so list employee component will get rendered on this url all right guys let me save the file and let me go back to the browser and let us see if there are any errors no errors all right let me just refresh yeah here we go we have successfully added add employee page to our employee management application let me hit cancel button yeah we are able to go to the, go to the employees list page all right now what we'll do we'll fill up the details and we'll able to see the data is available while form submission okay great enter first name as Ramesh last name as Fodatari email address as oops here we automatically get a last name uh, in our email field right so let me go back to the VS code and let me change yeah here basically it is email ID let's save the file and let's go back to the browser and let's, let's refresh and let's again enter first name Ramesh last name for the email address as Ramesh at the gmail.com hit save and let us see yeah here we go we have successfully got first name last name email id data from the state of the object and we have printed the employee form data on a console all right guys we have successfully created a form and we have successfully got the data of the form while form submission in next video we'll cre create the rest client which we'll call a rest api and we submit this form in a database we just call a rest api and we send this form data to the rest api and rest api will internally store the data in mysql database all right guys In previous video we have created add employee form and we have stored form data in first name last name and email id properties and we are, we are able to get the data from these properties while form submission okay so look at here i just entered first name last name email id and when i click on save button i can able to get of form data in save employee method okay now what we will do we will make a rest api call and we send a employee data to the rest api and rest api will store this data in a mysql database we have already created and exposed add employee rest api in one of the previous video so we are going to call create 
employee rest api and we will send this data to the rest api all right guys so in order to do that first we need to create a rest client using axios http library go to the employee service dot js file and we have already created a get employee method which will call all employee rest api okay now similarly let's go ahead and let's create one more method over here like create employee and just pass employee object as a method argument and then return agios dot post so we are going to call post method here because this is the form submission so once we submit the form we have to send form data to the rest api through post http method and then rest api will handle a form data at the server side and it will store the form data in a database all right let's pass a base url over here after that we need to pass a form data that is employee that's it next go to the create employee component okay so go to the save employee method inside this method we are going to call employee service and then call create employee and pass employee object so axios uh, post method returns promise so let's go ahead and let's call then method and then response and inside this then method what we'll do we'll navigate to the employees list page so once we submit a form data successfully then we should navigate to the employees list page right for that here what we'll do we'll just call this dot props dot history let's get a history object from the route by using props so we got a success response from the rest api we should navigate to the employees list page okay great let us save all the files create component create employee component as well as employee service and then let's go back to the browser and let us see how it works yeah here we go just refresh one more time and let's add data to the form first name as ramesh last name as further email id as ramesh at gmail.com hit save button yeah here we go so we have successfully added a new employee to the employees list all right guys what we have done we have created create employee method inside employee service so this will make a rest api call and inside a create employee component we have used employee service and its method called create employee and we just pass the employee object to this method and after the success response of the rest api we just navigated to the employees list page it's a pretty simple right great in next video we'll create few rest apis like get employee by id rest api and update employee rest api and then after that we'll uh, create a react components to consume the rest apis all right guys let's create get employee by id rest api get employee by id rest api okay just type a method public and this method returns the employee object to the client so let's give a return type as employee and let's give method name as get employee by id all right and uh, we are going to pass id as a method argument right long id let's annotate this method with at the rate get mapping annotation 
and let's configure the rest endpoint URL over here employees slash id okay so this is the path variable now we want to map or we want to store this id value into uh, you know the java variable so for that we are going to use at the rate path variable annotation to map this id with this variable so let's use at the rate path variable annotation now let's retrieve a employee object from the database for that we are going to use the employee repository let's create an employee object here and let's use the employee repository and we will call uh, find by id right find by id method and just pass id uh, id to the find by method so look at here find by id returns optional as a, a return type so here what we'll do we'll use at the uh, add dot or else throw method so if record not exist in database then we are going to throw resource not found exception for that let's use or else throw method over here and basically we need to pass a lambda expression to this method because this method internally uses uh, functional interfaces okay and we use lambda expression to implement a functional interface let's use lambda expression syntax here and just pass object of the custom exception that is resource not found exception a resource not found exception and just pass the custom message over here employee not exist with id and just pass the id over here let me break this statement okay great so what we have done we have we have called find by id method so this method basically returns optional uh, object as a return type and optional provides or else throw method so if record not exists in database then we just simply throw resource not found exception like this now let's return a employee object to the client so what we'll do we, are, we need to also return uh, http status right for that we need to use a response entity class let's use return type as response entity and uh, this is the generic class so let's type let's pass employee as a generic type and here let's return response entity and we are going to return a ok status that is 200 status so let's choose ok and just pass the employee object in a body that's it it's pretty simple right all right guys this is pretty simple uh, rest api that is uh, you know get employee by id rest api now let's go ahead and let's test this rest api for that what we will do i will start the application go to the spring boot application main class right click run as spring boot app now look at here spring boot application is up and running on embedded tomcat server on 4080 now let's go back to the postman rest client and let us test this rest api open a new tab and just type localhost 8080 slash api slash v1 slash employees and here we are going to retrieve a particular employee so let's go back to the database so i am going to get a employee ramesh with id 1 so let's pass id 1 as a path variable slash 1 and choose http get method over here and simply hit send button so this will retrieve a employee object with id 1 
if you want to retrieve employee with id 2 just pass id 2 over here and just hit send button so this will retrieve my employee with id 2 all right guys we have successfully created get employee by id rest api and we have tested uh, using postman rest client now let's create update employee rest api go to the employee controller within employee controller let me just write the comment here update employee rest api okay so just follow the steps public and response entity and just pass type as employee and let's give a method name as update employee okay uh, make this e as caps and we are going to pass id as a method argument along with that the object of the employee class so basically client sends updated employee object in a request body for that we are going to use employee object here now what we'll do we'll use uh, annotations over here so let's use put mapping annotation for update operation so this method will be basically handles a put request for that we're going to use at the rate put mapping annotation let's configure our rest endpoint url over here slash employees slash just fast path variable here that is id now let's map this path variable with a java variable by using at the rate path variable annotation and also we are going to directly map a request json object into a java object for that we are going to use at the rate request body annotation pretty simple right great so to update a employee first we need to retrieve uh, existing employee from the database for that what we will do we will reuse this code just copy this code so this will basically uh, you know retrieve a uh, employee by id if employee is not existing database then it simply throws resource not found exception so look at here uh, this is the duplicate local variable employee uh, here just pass this as um, let's rename this uh, object as employee details now what we'll do we'll update this retrieved employee object with a request employee object okay just change the first name employee details dot get first name similarly let's also change last name employee details dot get last name employee dot set email id and let's get a email id from the employee details object and set to the employee object now once we set all the information that we want to update to the employee object we simply save this employee object to the database let's go ahead and let's save this updated employee object to the database let's use save method and just pass the employee object as a method argument and here we store the updated employee object in a separate employee variable and we simply return this object to the client for that just use return the response entity dot ok so this is 200 status and in a body just type updated employee already right, that is pretty much so what we have done we have retrieved a employee from the database and we have added all the updated information to the employee object and we have stored that employee object into a database and we have just returned updated employee object to the client
pretty simple REST API. Now let's run the Spring Boot project and let's test this REST API using Postman REST client. Alright guys, Spring Boot application is running on Tomcat's server on port 8080. Let's go back to the Postman REST client. Go to the new tab and just type localhost 8080 slash api slash v1 slash employees and this is the update rest api so select put http method and go to the header and we are sending json as a request body right so for that let's use content type as application slash json and i can go back to the body in the body where you are sending a json right so let me copy the json object from the uh, post request and let me paste in a body and what we'll do is simply update a employee that is a remesh employee let me show you that go back to the mysql workbench so look at here this is the table it has four records we are going to update the employee with id1 okay that is a remesh employee so let's pass id here to the url as a path variable and i am going to update a first name from ramesh to ram and last name from patatari to something like jadav and email id from ramesh at the gmail.com to ram at the gmail.com so look at here first name is ramesh last name patatari email id ramesh at the gmail.com right so i am going to update these details with these details okay so once you configure all the details hit send button yeah here we go so look at here the response we got an updated record in a response and we have successfully updated first name last name and email address let's verify in a table so let's uh, let's query the select statement here so look at here a record first record is get successfully updated all right guys we have successfully created update rest api and we have also tested it using postman rest client In this video, let's head over to the React application and let's create update employee component and let's design update employee form and in next video, we'll make a REST API call to, to store updated employee form data into the database. Update employee page looks similar to add employee page. So it's good idea to reuse the existing component to perform both add and edit employee operations for example in previous video we have created a create employee component to add a new employee to the employee list right and update employee page also looks same as add employee page so what we can do is we can reuse this component to perform both add and update employee operations so there are basically two approaches either we can use a same component to perform add and update employee operations or we can create a separate update uh, you know react component to perform update employee operation yes this is a common requirement so i'm going to show you both the approach first up for in a first approach we'll create a separate update employee component to implement update employee functionality and then uh, once we complete this update employee functionality then i'm going to show you the second approach that is reusing the same component to perform both add and update employee functionality okay all right all right guys let's go ahead and let's create a new react component called update employee component for that go to the components folder within the components folder let's create a file called update employee component dot jsx all right within this file let's use a react snippet to create a react class component i'm going to use rcc react snippet command to create a react class component here we go so once we create update employee component 
then what we will do we will configure a route for this component so let's head over to app.js file and here let's go ahead and let's copy this route and paste and just change the route path here that is update in case of update we need to get a id right so for that look at here how it looks the route lo looks like this so this id should be dynamically get changed so we have to give a syntax to update a route like this all right the corresponding component is update employee component so whenever we hit the url something like this uh, localhost colon 3000 and then update employee slash one so whenever we hit the url like this then this component will get called and this id we retrieve like this okay so this colon id so this is the syntax to get the id here so this is kind of a path variable so this id should be dynamically get changed okay got it once we configure a route for update envoy component let's go ahead and let's add update button to the list employee component okay so look at here this is the employees list page right and here at actions column you can see we haven't added update and delete buttons yet so let's go ahead and let's add update button to the actions column let's go back to vs code id and go to the list employee component and this is the actions header header column and go to the table body and here we have to add update employee button let's go ahead and let's add it it's button in a button element let's add on click attribute and then within a curly braces let's add a event handler let's add a row function so whenever we want to pass id then make sure that we have to use arrow function and just call this dot let us say edit employee the handler method name and then here we're gonna pass employee dot id all right after that let's add some css to the button like this is the bootstrap css and and then let's add a name to the button like update and save it and let's go back to the browser and let us see how it looks yeah here we go it looks good right now once we click on update button you should navigate to the update employee component all right it means that whenever we click on update button so this will this should navigate to the update employee page let's go ahead and let's add on click event handler to navigate to the update employee page let's go back to the vs code id let's copy the method name and here below constructor just create a method define the method edit employee we should also be able to need to bind this method to the component let's go to the constructor and let's bind this method to the component using bind method and just pass this keyword all right so this method should have the method argument id so because we are passing id here all right after that so once we click on update button so this should navigate to the update employee page right and we also need to pass this id so we have already configured a route for this so look at here so we need to pass id to the route 
how to do it let me show you uh, go to the list employee component again and here just type this dot we are going to use history object again this dot props dot history and then push and here so look at here the symbol so this is the back stick I am going to use so you should make sure that you have added back stick here and then slash update employee slash dollar and then id all right so this is the syntax to pass id to the path that is the url all right got it so here this is the push method okay let's change it and this is the syntax to call update employee page so whenever user hit update button the user should be able to navigate to the update employee page and we should have to pass this id dynamically to you know update employee page so this is the syntax for the same now let's head over to update employee component so update employee page should looks like add employee page so let's go to the create employee component and let's copy all the code okay so that's why i have already mentioned like we can reuse this same component to add employee and update employee to keep it simple i'm going to use a separate component for updating an employee so let's copy this entire code up to this and go to the update employee component and let's go ahead and let's replace this code okay great the code is almost same as we have already i uh, you know understood in previous video while creating uh, you know add employee form in create employee component all right guys now what we'll do we'll make a rest api call to get a employee for updation so we just call employee by id rest api and we pass id employee id to the rest api and this rest api returns a employee object and that employee object we will populate in a form and uh, inside a form we can able to update the employee and once we hit save button then we can able to call the rest api and we pass all the employee updated data to the rest api and rest api internally store a form data in a database so here we need to make some changes so in order to understand this code please visit my previous video i have already explained this code step by step we have already you know uh, developed this code line by line now let's make some changes over here so instead of save employee let's go ahead and let's rename this from save employee to update employee okay and let's also refactor the code go to the constructor within the constructor we have here we have bind uh, event handler to the component right so let's change from save employee to update employee all right now what we'll do we'll call component did mount method and we'll make a rest api call so before that let's go to the employee service dot js file and here we need to create a method which will call our rest api let's create a method get employee by id and just pass employee id so this is the http get method so let's call agios dot get method and this then pass base url and then pass employee id 
Ah, oh, it's pretty simple, right? So this will return a employee. Now let's go back to the update employee component, and here after the constructor, we call component did mount method, and inside this method, we're gonna call service method. Okay, employee service dot get employee by ID. And one more important thing is we have to get an ID right we have to get an ID from the route so for that he lets declare ID here we can get ID from the props okay so look at here the props dot match dot params dot ID so by using this approach we can get ID from the route and this ID we are going to pass over here this dot state dot id all right then this method returns a promise so let's get let's call then method and inside then method we get a response and let arrow and inside then method let's add let's get a, a, a you know data from the response so this is a employee and let's say response dot data so let's get a data into a separate object now what we'll do we'll set a data to the state by using set state method and we have post name attribute let's get a data from the employee employee dot first name and then we have property last name okay what we have done we have retrieved a response from the uh, method and uh, we just set that response data to the state by using set state method now form should populate it with first name last name and email id so let's go ahead and let's change update employee method so whenever user update the employee form and hit save button then update employee method will get called and inside update, update employee method we capture the update employee form data and let's delete this and once we got uh, updated employee form data we just simply log to the console using console.log and in the next video We'll make a update employee REST API call and we'll send this updated employee from data to the REST, you know, REST API and REST API internally will store this data into a database. Let's save all the files. Let's go back to the browser and let's see how this functionality works. Alright guys, so look at here, update button is uh, there in a list, employee list page. So let's go ahead and let's click on update button yeah here, here we go so we also need to update this text right let's update this text go to the vs code id and let's change from add employee to update employee and save it and let's go back to browser yeah here we go all right we have successfully made a rest API call to get a employee object by id and we have populated that employee object in a form now user can able to update the employee let's go ahead and let's update i'm going to update post name from tom to john and last name from cruz to cena and also email id from tom at the red gmail.com to cena at the gmail.com and clear the console and just hit save button and yeah look at here we got a updated employee from data here all right we have successfully updated the employee and in next video we make a rest api call and we send this updated employee data through the rest api and internally rest api will throw you know put this data into a database all right guys i will see you in the next video
previous video we have added update button over here i click on update button so this makes a rest api call to get a employee object by id and that object will be populated in the form for editing all right in this video we will make a rest api call to send the updated employee form data and rest api internally store this updated employee data into mysql database all right guys let's head over to vs code id and let's write a code to make a rest api call to send the updated employee data in order to write a rest client code using axios library open employee service.js file within a js file go to the class and inside a class we are going to create a method called update employee and then we are going to pass the parameter called employee comma employee id within update employee method just we are going to return a promise object of axios put method just type return and then axios and then call put method so we are going to send a http put request for that we are going to use put method here and then base url followed by slash and then concatenation operator and then employee id comma employee object so look at here the order so first we pass a base url as a post argument and second argument is employee object to the method put all right so this base url should looks like this for example localhost 8080 api v1 slash employees slash one so this is the employee id that we are going to pass all right we have created a rest client using axios now we are going to use this method in a component let's go back to update employee component and go to the update employee method over here and look at here this is the employee object that we have prepared and this employee object has all the employee updated data the employee service and then call update employee method and then pass the employee object comma id so how, how we can get the id just type this dot state dot id okay great and axios returns a promise promise object so we can use then method here and inside then method we can use we can call a response object and then plat arrow arrow syntax once the employee is successfully updated then we should navigate to the employees list page right for that let's write the router here this dot props so from the props we can get history object and then call push method and here just pass the router path that is slash employees it's pretty simple right i have already explained you how the history object associated with the router that you can understand by visiting previous videos all right guys pretty much let's save the files and let's go back to the browser and let's see how it works go to the browser and just refresh and let's go ahead and let's update one of the employee so i'm going to update the employee called ramesh this one let's change from ramesh to ram and also the email id from ramesh to ram at the red gmail.com and hit save yeah here we go we have successfully updated a ramesh employee from ramesh to ram and email address also from ramesh at the red gmail.com to ram at the red gmail.com all right guys we have successfully made our rest api call and we have sent employee updated data through rest api and we have successfully completed update employee implementation in next video 
we will see how to reuse the same component to perform add and edit employee operations so now in this approach we have created a separate update employee component right and update, update employee component has almost same code as we have implemented in create employee component so it's common requirement to have a, a reuse the same component so ideally we should reuse the existing component right for that in the next video i'm going to show you how to reuse the same component to perform both add and edit employee operations all right guys i will see you in the next video in this video i want to show you how to reuse the existing react component to perform add and update employee operation in previous video we have created separate update employee component to perform update employee operation right so in this video i want to show you how to reuse a existing that is create employee component to perform add and update employee operation so this is uh, not a good idea to create a separate component and uh, copy the existing code all right so we have replicated a same code almost same code in update employee component from create employee component right so now what we can do is we can just perform add and update employee operation in a single component so let me show you how to do it and this is one of the common requirement to you know to implement add and update operation in a single page or in a single component okay let's go and let's see how to do it just follow the steps go to the app.js file and inside the dot app.js file we have configured a routing so in case of update operation the route looks like this we have to pass slash colon id in order to get uh, id of the particular employee so first of all let me comment out this line of code because we are not going to use update employee component we are going to use create employee component to perform add and update employee operations here create employee component should need a uh, employee id in order to perform update employee operation for that let's go ahead and let's copy this code this id here and let's add it so now look at here this is how the path looks like to perform add and uh, update operation now the important thing is we need to have a flag to distinguish whether we are performing add operation or update operation so we have to maintain a flag let's say we, we maintain a minus one let's say so whenever we pass minus one here it means that this is the request for add employee operation and let's say if we pass any positive number one two three four so on then we can consider it as a it the request is for update operation so because employee id is always a positive number if you go to the database a database will automatically generate uh, id for each employee right in a database table so the id is always gonna positive we can have a minus one uh, as a flag or a value to distinguish between add and update operation otherwise you can also use underscore id so you can use this value to distinguish between add and update employee okay so whatever the flag you you can use but make sure that the flag should not be a positive number because employee id is always a positive number and which we use to perform update operation all right all right so configure route like this so this is the first step and second step is go to the update employee component so this code we have understood in previous videos and to perform update operation we should have a id right so we can get id from the route so look at here we have added id property to the state object and we have retrieved id from the route by using this dot props dot match dot params and the id all right so let me just copy this code and go to the create employee component and just paste inside a state object okay since so this is the second step step two 
so let me write a comment here also this is the step one okay now once we got id then based on the id we can write the logic if id is minus one then the request is for add employee and if the id is any positive number then we can say that it is the request is for update operation all right great now in case of update operation we should have a employee object and that employee object will populate in a form for editing so in order to do that we have already written a code in a employee, update employee component right so here look at here this is the component did mount method so inside that we have made a rest api call so inside the employee service we have written get employee by id method which will internally call a rest api by using axios dot get method so this is the request for uh, getting a employee object by id all right guys let me quickly copy this and go to the create employee component and just below constructor paste it so this is the step 3 okay so this is the step 3 just get a employee object by id okay now the fourth step is once we got id based on the id we can decide whether the request is for add or update employee right so let's go ahead and let's add a condition here inside component did mount method this is a step four if id is equals equal minus one this dot state dot id equal to equal to minus one then we don't fetch a employee object by id we simply return it okay in else condition we simply move this code all right great if the id is minus one then we don't do anything we simply return in a else condition we should get a employee object by id because in a else condition uh, always if the number if the id is positive then the control always comes inside a else condition and this is for update employee operation all right guys now in four step we got an employee object in case of update employee and then that employee is populated in the form now let's say employee edit the form and hit save button then this event handler will get called okay and inside this save employee method we need to decide whether the form is for add employee or update employee for that let's go ahead and just add the condition here let me quickly copy this condition this is the step 5 okay if the id is min equal to equal to minus 1 then we simply call create employee method and we pass the employee object so this is for add employee operation and in else condition we call a method called update employee method and we pass employee object and id for example go to the employee uh, update employee component and here inside update employee method we have already written the logic let me just copy this code and go to the else condition and paste it here so look at here if id is equal to equal to minus one then we call create employee method and we pass employee object to it so this will internally call a uh, add employee rest api and it will send the employee data to the rest api and rest api internally save the add employee form data and in case of else condition we call update employee method so this internally call update employee rest api and it will pass a employee object this is the updated employee information and the id all right and REST API will internally update employee information in the database. Now let's save all the files and let's go back to the browser and let's see how it works. In a browser just refresh the URL and 
this is the add employee button so once we click on add employee button it should navigate to the add employee page right so go ahead and click on add employee button so look at here it won't work because we have used single route to perform add and update operations right we have to provide here slash minus one and we should be able to get add employee page all right so let's change the add employee uh, you know event handler code go to the vs code and go to the list employee component and here we have a add employee button and this is the add employee event handler so once we click on add employee button then add employee event handler will get called and here basically we need to provide slash minus one okay if you save the file and go back to the browser and once you click on add employee button you should able to navigate to the add employee page all right guys great now let us test update employee functionality so if you click on update button it won't work because we are using update hyphen employee route here okay and we have commented out this route in app.js file let me show you go to the app.js file and look at here this is the route we have already commented and we are using add hyphen employee path for add and update operation so let's go to the list employee component and go to the update button and once we click on update button edit employee event handler will get called and this is update hyphen employee so let's go ahead and let's change it from update employee to add employee save it and let's go back to the browser I refresh the link so let's go ahead and let's click on update button yeah here we go we have successfully navigate to the update employee page but still we need some changes over here this is the update employee page still we can see here add employee text okay so let's go ahead and let's change this title let's go back to the vs code and let's go to the create employee component and let me just copy this id and here we need to add the condition okay so what we'll do we'll simply create a method over here like get title something like this and here we simply write the condition if id equal to equal to minus one then we simply return that you know the page title like add employee in else condition we simply return update employee and let's get this employee title let's call this employee title here so this is the jsx so we can write a javascript code inside it write the curly braces and just call this method all right let's save the file and let's go back to the browser oops uh there is something some error over here let's see what is the error uh, line number 73 go to the vs code go to the line number 73 yes yeah, so here return keyword is missing let's save the file and let's go back to the browser yeah here we go all right we have successfully added a condition to update the text over here all right guys now what we'll do we'll update the employee so i'm going to update this remesh employee click on update button and let's say let's change from post name post name from remesh to ram and email id from remesh to ram at the gmail.com and hit save yeah here we go post name and employee id is changed all right we have successfully updated an employee all right guys we have successfully performed add and update employee in a single component and uh, this is one of the you know uh, important requirement so whenever uh, you implement code operation in your project always try to 
reuse the existing component don't uh, you know create a separate component like we have created a update employee component and we have almost duplicated all the code which is already there in a create employee component this is not a good practice all right so always try to reuse the existing code don't duplicate code in your project all right guys again you can refactor something like uh, this is the save employee method but this method does two things one is for add employee another is update employee so you can rename this method like save or update employee let me quickly refactor save or update and let's refactor this name in a required places go to the constructor and here also just rename it and save it and that is pretty much let's say if you don't want to use minus one what you can do is you can just go to the list employee component and here you have add employee button right so on click up add employee button add employee event handler will get called and go to the add employee event handler and here we have added minus one so let's replace from minus one to underscore add okay and let me show you where the changes required so where you, where where you have added minus one just go ahead and add the string underscore add and so look at here this is the operator that we used to uh, you know uh, just check whether these two strings are equal or not go to this condition and just replace here okay great let's save the files let's go back to the browser and refresh the url and click on add employee so look at here the route underscore add so in case of add employee you should be able to see like this so we got update employee right so let me quickly uh, here we have missed one more condition let me just change it all right great yeah here we go so look at here this route add employee slash underscore add okay so if request comes like this then add employee page will get populated and in case of update the route is looks like this so this should be a id and it should be a positive number in case of update already that is pretty much about how to reuse the existing component to perform add and update operations i hope you got some idea so i believe that you utilize this idea in your projects let's develop delete employee rest api go to the employee controller within employee controller we are going to develop delete employee rest api delete employee rest api all right just follow the steps just create a method first public so we are going to return a deleted employee with status uh, message right for that just type just return a map as a response just give key as string and value as boolean and let's give method name as delete employee and let's pass id as method argument long id and let's use at the rate delete mapping annotation so this method will handle or delete HTTP request for that we are going to use add the delete mapping annotation and let's go ahead and let's configure the rest endpoint URL employees slash ID as a path variable and now we are going to map this ID with the Java variable right that is a long type for that we are going to use add the rate path variable annotation it's pretty simple so in order to delete the employee first we need to get a existing employee with ID right so let me reuse this code so first we'll retrieve a employee with the id 
if employee with this particular id is not exist in database then we simply throw the resource not found exception and it's pretty simple again we just simply pass the employee object to the delete method so here we're going to use the employee repository and we're going to call a delete method and we pass a employee object to the delete method so this will return this will uh, delete a particular employee and look at here the return type of delete method it is a wide okay now what we'll do we'll simply create a map object to simply return uh, like a message uh, deleted as a true uh, key as a string and value as boolean so we need to notify to the client uh, something like the delete uh, record is deleted successfully right for that we are going to just return deleted as true or false okay uh, just give reference as response and this is a cosa hash map and response dot put so let's put our entry here so we're gonna say key as deleted a response as uh, the value as true okay and return response entity dot okay and just in a body just pass a response so again uh, we have to specify response entity as a re uh, return type here all right that is pretty much what we have done let me stop the server we have retrieved a employee with id particular id from the database if record is not exist then we simply throw the resource not found exception and we have called a delete method of employee repository and we pass the employee object to the delete method this will delete a you know employee and the delete method does not return anything so we simply create a map with a entry as deleted true and we simply return that map to the client it's pretty simple rest api now let's start our spring boot project and uh, let us test delete employee rest api using postman rest client all right guys our application is up and running on embedded tomcat server on port 8080 now we'll delete a particular employee let me show you uh, here in our mysql workbench so look at here we have four records in a table so we are going to delete a record one uh, uh the record with id1 okay we are going to delete this particular record go back to the postman rest client and go to the new tab here and just type localhost slash 8080 slash api slash v1 slash employees and we are going to call a delete rest api for that we are going to choose a delete http method here and we are going to delete a record with id1 so let's pass one here as a path variable and hit send button so look at here the status 200 and record is successfully deleted and we got a deleted true as a response let's verify it in a database so let me quickly run this query select query and look at here a particular record is successfully deleted from the table let's delete one more record so we are going to delete a record with id 2 so let's go back to the postman rest client and just pass 2 here and uh, hit send button yeah here we go we got a success response let's verify let's execute select statement here we go the record is deleted successfully all right that is pretty much about delete employee rest api we have successfully developed delete employee rest api and uh, we have tested it using postman rest client In previous video we have completed update employee feature and uh, in previous video I have also created delete employee rest API. In this video let's head over to react application and let's implement delete employee functionality. So ideally what we are going to do is we are going to add a button over here in the actions column uh, just beside update button 
and once we click on delete button the corresponding employee should get deleted and internally it makes a rest api call to delete the employee from the database all right let's go ahead and let's implement delete employee functionality first we will add a button here okay let's go to the vs id and if you see this is the table and this is the actions column and we have already added a update employee button so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this button and just paste it here and let's change from edit to delete employee so this is the on click property of button element and this is the i know uh, arrow function and here i'm going to change the css class name like i'm going to say button danger and also change button label let's say delete that's it and let's define a delete employee event handler all right let's bind this event handler to the component in a constructor this dot delete employee equals to this dot delete employee and then bind and then pass this keyword and let's go ahead and let's define this method here and just pass id because this id we are passing here employee dot id right great now here we will make a rest api call we just write the code here to make a rest api call i am going to make a delete employee rest api call from here inside this method so before that let's save the file and let's go back to the browser and you can able to see here a delete button is added in actions column okay so let's add some inline style to just give here margin left go to the vs code id and in a button delete button here i will just add an inline style so look at here how we can add the inline style so this is a style equals to curly braces and this is the object and this is the key and this is the value so look at here the property this is the attribute in object so this should be in a camel camel case so we define at you know attributes in a react like this okay in a camel case all right let's save the file and let's go back to the browser here you can able to see there is a little bit margin between these two buttons now what we'll do we'll add a, a code to make a rest api call let's go to the employee service and here we're going to write the method to make a rest api call let's say delete employee and then pass the employee id this is the delete http request so let's call up geos dot delete method and then pass base url after that let's concatenate this with slash and then employee id that's it and let's call this method from the component let's go back to the list component list employee component and here we need to call this method employee service dot delete employee and then pass id and then you can call then method a response and arrow syntax after that once we delete the employee what we need to do is we need to remove this particular deleted employee from the employees list so what i will do i will just remove uh, or i just filter this deleted employee from the employees array i don't you know make a all employees rest api call i simply filter a deleted employee from the employees array so this employees array already has all the employees so let me just write the code over here 
I am just going to filter out this particular employee from the employees array. So we have an employees array already, it has all the employees data and we are going to filter out the deleted employee from the employees array. We are not going to make a REST API call, we are going to reduce a REST API call that is a remote call from the client application so that we can make some kind of performance improvement. Now let's save the file and let's go back to the browser and let's see how it works. Let's refresh uh, the URL and let's hit delete button. Yeah, so look at here the user is successfully deleted, the employee is successfully deleted and I'm going to delete one more employee that is Amir. Yeah, the Amir employee is deleted. Again, let me delete one more employee that is demo. Here we go. So demo employee is also deleted. Let me delete one more employee that is Thom123. Yeah, the employee got successfully deleted. Alright guys, we have successfully implemented delete employee functionality in our employee management application. Alright guys, so far we have implemented crude functionality in our employee management application that is employees list functionality, add employee functionality, update employee functionality and delete employee functionality. Now I would like to add one more functionality to our employee management application that is view employee details functionality. So basically uh, in real time projects we have uh, employee object with lots of data right. So in our project to keep it simple I have just added first name last name and email id but in real time project we might have a more number of fields in an employee object and if you look at the table here we are just showing first name last name and email id okay and sometime we want to see all the details of this particular employee okay and it is not possible to show all the details of this particular employee in a table okay and if user want to see all the details of particular employee then typically we provide a button over here that is view button and once user click on view button then user will able to see all the details of that particular employee all right so this is the feature that we are going to develop okay let's go ahead and let's create a react component to add this functionality let's implement this functionality step by step you can just follow the steps that i am going to implement here right now go to the visual studio code id and the first step is we are going to create a new component called view employee component okay go to the components folder within the components folder we are going to create a file called view employee component click on new file and just give a name to the file as view employee component and provide .jsx JSX extension now we have created a file within a file we are going to create a react class component and we are going to use a react snippet to quickly create a react class component just type the command rcc so in order to create a react class component using react snippets plugin you have to first install react snippet plugin in your vs code id i already shown you how to install react snippets plugin in your vs code id in one of the previous video please go through the previous videos all right guys once you type rcc and hit enter this will create a skeleton or a snippet for react class component all right so this is the step one and in step two we are going to provide a routing for this component let's go ahead and let's configure a route for this component go to the app.js file and here let's configure a route for our newly created react component so i am going to just copy the existing route and paste here and just give a path to the route let's say view hyphen employee slash colon id so this is going to be our url for 
you know a view employee page and let's create a let's provide a component for this path that is view employee component so make sure that view employee component is imported at the top okay great save the file so this is the step two okay i hope you guys are following the steps now the third step is we are going to add a new button okay so basically we are going to add a button over here that is a view button once we click on a view button we should be able to navigate to the view employee page all right and this is the list employee component right so let's head over to the list employee component and let's add a new button over here called view button go to the list employee component and go to the table inside a list you know list employee component so this is the table inside table we have actions column within actions column we have two buttons over here update and delete now let's go ahead and let's add one more button let me simply copy the existing button let's copy this delete button and paste here and look at here this is the on click property of uh, you know button element and this is the arrow function and let's change our event handler method name that is from delete employee to view employee and let's change the bootstrap css class let's say info and we also change the button label let's do a view all right so this is the important part so here just we are uh, you know providing arrow function and we are just passing id here to the view employee event handler all right guys and here we are just providing inline style that is margin left 10 pixel and let's go ahead and let's uh, define this view employee for uh, event handler copy the method name and here i am gonna define the view handler that is view employee and just pass the id okay so once we click on view button then view employee event handler will get fired within a view employee event handler we're gonna configure a route so it will navigate to the view employee page let's go ahead and let's write the code here this dot props dot history so i have already explained in one of the previous video how the history object is associated with the route so you can just watch the previous videos in order to understand how the history object is associated with the route and how it maintains the history of the browser and then type push method and then brushes and here this is important so here you have to use backstick so sometime uh, you might use a single code right so don't use single code you should use backstick symbol and within a backstick just provide a path over here that is view employee slash and then dollar and within a curly braces type id so this is the syntax to pass id to the route this is the third step all right so let me recap the steps in first step we have created view employee component and we have configured a route for view employee component in app.js file this is the second step in third step we have added a view button in list employee component here and once we click on view employee button then view employee event handler will get fired and we will successfully able to navigate to the view employee page so this is the third step in a fourth step we are going to design our view employee page and we will populate employee data on view employee page okay go to the render method inside render method we have a return statement and here are the braces within braces we have a do 
and within a div we just gonna type some uh, heading over here like let's say as to tag and then I'm just going to write some text here let's say view employee page so just um, going we are going to make sure that we are successfully able to navigate to the view employee page or not for that I'm just going to give the header like this alright guys let's save all the files and let's go back to the browser and let's see how it works so here we have got a view button so once I click on view button yeah I can able to navigate to the view employee page alright guys we have successfully uh, you know uh, created a view employee component and we have configured route for the view employee component and we have provided a button for the view employee component and once I click on view button I can able to successfully navigate to the view employee page now in the next video I am going to design a view employee page and I will populate uh, employee data on a view employee page in previous video we have created view employee component and we have configured a route for view employee component and we have added view button to the employees list page once we click on view button we are able to navigate to the view employee page all right now what we'll do we'll retrieve a employee by this id and we'll populate that employee on a view employee page all right let's head over to the vs code id and let's write the code to you know populate employee data on the view employee page go to the view employee component and within a view employee component we have a constructor within the constructor we have a state object so instead state object just create the property called id okay and we want to retrieve this id from the url right okay so let me uh, show you how to get this id from the url we can get the id from the route so we have props props has a match and then params so from the params we can get the id okay so th this is the syntax to get id from the route and again we add a employee object to the state of the component okay and then call component did mount method here so we are going to use component did mount method uh, in order to make a rest api call so component did mount method is the best place to you know make a rest api call or make ajax calls because this method is called immediately after a component is mounted all right and if you look at the employee service.js file within this js file we have already have a method called get employee by id so this method we have implemented in one of the previous video and we are going to call this method to get a employee object by id and this method internally makes a rest api call so look at it's axios dot get, get method so this is a this makes a synchronous uh, call and it returns promise object so let's go ahead and let's call this method inside our component did mount method or right, just type employee service and let call get employee by id method and just pass the id to this method state dot id and then this method returns promise object so that we can call then method to handle the response and this is this will get a response and then arrow syntax and then just uh, you know extract the employee data from the response and we are going to call this dot set state method in order to set a response data to the employee object response and then data so this should be in a curly braces all right guys so state object has employee property right 
so we are going to just you know uh, assign the response data to the employee property using set state method pretty simple so once we got a employee data and uh, we need to show this employee data on a web page right so for that we are going to write a JSX code here let's go ahead and let's design the web page go to the div within a div create a one more div and give uh, some bootstrap CSS classes like card body so we are going to uh, provide a border to the you know page so let's go ahead and let's use card bootstrap CSS class and then some grid CSS classes let's say six column and then we are going to display our web page at the center let's go ahead and let's use offset okay and then we are going to display a page title so let's use s3 element for that uh, the page title can be a view the employee details something like this and we are going to display this page title at the center for that let's use bootstrap css class text center okay and after that let's create a div and let's provide a css bootstrap css classes like card body and within a div let's create a one more div okay and give again a bootstrap css class like row so we are going to show each employee uh, you know a field in each row for that we are going to create a div with bootstrap css class row here and within this row we are going to just uh, display a employee first name mm, for that let's use a label here a label and this should be employee first name and then create one more div and use curly braces to access the employee object fields and let's say employee dot first name and save the file let's first see how the employee first name uh, looks on a web page and then accordingly we'll display other fields let's save the file and let's go back to the browser so we'll get the employee object from the state so here we need to give this dot state dot employee dot post name so we need to access the employee object by using this dot state right all right so let's save the file and let's go back to the browser and we will be able to see the ram here so once i click on view i can able to see a uh, employee first name that is ram okay let's display other fields so let me simply copy this row and paste here and let's change it accordingly this is employee last name And this is employee last name and this is email id and here uh, we provide uh, some bricks brick tag here all right let's save the file and let's go back to the browser and let's see how it looks yeah here we go it looks pretty right so here we are just populated first name last name and email id so once we click on view button we can able to see employee first name last name and email id okay and you can show all the employee details on this view employee details page so in our project we have only these three fields but uh, in real time project we might have a uh, uh, you know a few more fields and uh, that you can show uh, on this web page all right guys we have successfully implemented view employee functionality all right great 
and in next video we will have a end to end demo of this employee management application that we have created so far. We have completed our full stack application using react.js and spring boot. Now let's quickly have a end to end demo of our full stack application that is employee management application and finally we will see the source code of this project on my github profile. Alright so let's begin by adding a new employee to the employee list. Let's go ahead and let's click on add employee button and let's go ahead and let's add a new employee. First name Ramesh last name for the array and email id as Ramesh at the gmail.com and hit save button. So we have added a single employee to the employees list. Let's go ahead and let's add few more employees. Let's say John Cena and email id as john at the rate gmail.com yeah here we go so let's go ahead and let's add one more employee that is tom cruise and email id as tom at the rate gmail.com and let's go ahead and let's add one more employee called admin last name as admin and email id as you know uh, ram at the rate gmail.com all right guys so we have added four employees to the employees list now let's go ahead and let's see the update functionality so i'm going to update one of the employee so i'm going to update rms employee click on update button and i'm going to update the first name from ramesh to prabhas and i'm going to update email id that is prabhas at the red gmail.com and hit save button yeah here we go the update functionality is working as expected now we're gonna delete few employees so i'm going to delete tom employee so let's go ahead and let's click on add uh, delete button correspond to this employee yeah here we go so let's go ahead and let's delete one more employee i'm going to delete john cena employee yeah so delete functionality is also working as expected now let's view the employee details so i'm gonna view the admin employee details so just click on view button yeah here we go okay great so these are the you know five functionalities that we have implemented in our full stack application that is employee management application